any second now. It'll show up on Twitch. Like right now. Okay, hi, we're live. Hello, are we live? Did you hit the button? Did you hit the button to go live? Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, it's a little funny that for some reason the stream like on my end on my little like preview showed up as being in 160p <laughs> Whoa. i'm sure it's fine it looks like it's normal now hi everyone we're live honey i forgot could you hand me the kitty uh oh yeah the the kitty to hold your phone thank you okay now let's announce that the stream is live so that we can play picking them picking them picking them picking them picking them and by the way a very small kitty is in a basket right now oh how are the volume levels by the way i did a little bit of fiddling on my end uh, the microphone is now louder, so I turned it down a little bit uh, on OBS. And I can move a little closer once we actually get started. I'm just swiveling right now so I can also post the stream and mm -hmm. also look at what it's like. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you for the resub. Finally, you can catch picking them. Picking them. Finally, it's time for picking them. This copied. Hi! Thanks for the resub. Uh, I just have to announce my stream. It's so important to do this, is the thing. Yeah, the people need to know that the stream is happening so they can come and watch the stream. Thank you, Strawberry, for that resub. Much appreciated. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Just, just going through the motions and then I can actually talk to my chat again. Was scaled to a 24 month time scale, that'd be really goddamn funny. <laughs> that'd be a very different video game. At that point, it's just an early Harvest Moon game. <laughs> that's that's just Stardew Valley. <laughs> but with like ship parts instead of corn, I guess. Olimar, you have 24 months to fulfill Grandpa's quest and escape the death planet. Olimar, you have 24 months to picking them from your fallow fields. Is fallow good in the context of farming? I can never remember. It sounds like something I'm not allowed to say on Twitch, I don't think. What do you mean? Hi. What What? What did she mean by this? <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, what do you mean? Oh, like phallus. Oh, like peanuts. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> I do. I love you. You're my wife. You're my wife. You're my wife. Okay, I have to post on Tumblr. Hey, I know that website. I've heard of it. I've heard of a swing blur. Uh, let's see. Live now. Picking them! I, I am so eternally thankful. I've forgotten the name of the original poster already, but I am so eternally thankful for the person that posted picking them uh, on Tumblr. What a good fucking image. What a good fucking image. Okay, I think I've shared the stream uh, in all of- Don't worry, Zelda. The Triforce of Wisdom promises the captain safe return. Hi everyone. Huh? Yeah. I welcome my stream. Um, let's say thank you to everyone who thanked it. Um, thank you, Prototype777, for the 31 month resub. Thank you, Lentil the Llama, for the 28 months. Uh, thank you, Strawberry, for the 8 month resub. Uh, thank you, Solanum Core, for the 24 month resub. Uh, thank you, Noda999, for the 21 months and message of picking them. Burst Axe with the 41 months and message of extremely fucked up. They let us pick men, but not pick women. I don't know. I picked my women pretty good uh, in both senses of the word. <laughs> She's talking about me, chat. It's a gay joke and a transgender joke. Do you, do you like it? Clap your hands if you liked it. And if you didn't, um, cry, I guess. Clap louder. Uh, thank you, Stormy Buckets, for the 17 month resub. Thank you. Who the fuck is Puzzle Gaming Nerd? Who the fuck is that hussy? Who's this hussy? <laughs> Thank you, honey, for the resub. You're welcome. <laughs> Love you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, thank you, Simple Tan, for the 39 months. Uh, thank you, Cam Woodstock, with the 27 months. Thank you, Gameslayer13, for the 40 months. And we're all caught up. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so, um... You get Lightning Strike for that brand new sub. Six months in advance, huh? That's very generous of you. Much appreciated. Those are, like, cheaper right now, I think, because of September or whatever. So, uh, if, if you, if you want to support the stream and you want to go through it subscriber ways, uh, upgrading to, like, a tier 2 or a tier 3 or, like, getting yourself a couple months in advance of subscription, um, some of the, some of the best ways to go about it, considering the whole partner plus thing. But, uh, hey, however you want to support the stream is always very greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. You mentioned picking them came from an original post. Do you have a link to it? You can just scroll down my Tumblr a bit. It's there somewhere. <laughs> I'm in the middle of doing a stream. I'm not going to go brooding for it like a truffle hog. I'll reblog it later after stream if you want to look at it then. <laughs> picking them. Picking them. It's, it's very good. Misshart, you are a hero. Hero <laughs> of picking them. Thanks, boss. Um, so this is realistically probably going to be uh, my last stream in September just because like I'm going back home uh, Saturday and so realistically I'm gonna want to spend as much of this week as possible doing lifetime uh, but also we wanted to finish Pikmin so we're doing it tonight mm -hmm. uh, so I hope you enjoy the final stream of September there's no streams happening in September after this one not a not a single one uh, take the rest of September off boys it's uh you, you done a good one um, there isn't a whole lot of September left. Yeah, that's what I'm fucking saying. I came here like, yeah, I'll spend the entire month of September out here, like at my wife's place and it's going to be great. And it's like, what the fuck do you mean? This month feels so short. That's illegal. They need to give us eight more months of September. That or they, well, that's, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> How'd that work? Eight more months of September. I don't know how I can say it any clearer. <laughs> September is one month. And they need eight more months of it. But it's, <laughs> but it's one month. Eight more months of September. You can't just have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, 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 September. That, that fucks with the, the farmers. The farmers. The, the, the schedule. Listen, the farmers can keep their calendar and we'll keep the one that keeps my wife here for eight The more seasons. <laughs> Honey, the thing that keeps me here for eight more months is... I get my millions and someone lets me move to the States immediately. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Tart, for the 40 month resub. And that's wonderful. <laughs> Fucking speaking of. This is a hell of a segue. Fucking speaking of Lex Luthor. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Big One Five. Uh, I never gave you a fucking VIP. I wanted to and I forgot to, like, m fucking months ago, I'm realizing. Uh, for being a hero of picking them. Anyways, um, so, so Starfield, right? <laughs> so, so, so Starfield, right? <laughs> Which is a hell of a segue, um, but word on the street, been listening to, uh, friends talk about playing Starfield. Um, thank you, Block Spiders, for that 39 month resub. What happened with Starfield? I mean, it came out and it's a video game. Um, and I guess this is. I suppose if you want to. Um, I haven't really wanted to because it's a Bethesda game. I know what it's going to be. I know what to expect. It's it's going to disappoint me in so many unfathomable ways. Um, and I hate that this is the one thing I heard that made me want to check it out. Uh, Gur and Mira were talking about it just like in our, in our Hanging Out Discord. Um, so one, I have heard nothing about this because I guess they didn't talk about any like pre-release stuff. I guess this is a spoiler. Sorry if you care about Starfield spoilers. Um, Starfield has powers. Starfield, you can get powers like you can get fucking dragon shouts in um, in Skyrim, apparently. Uh, and it sounds like they're like more boring than the shouts were in Skyrim. <laughs> because like... The, the, the scaling on the shouts in Skyrim was kind of fucking weird because it's a Bethesda game and scaling kind of was weird in those. The ad's about to play, by the way. Um, just letting you know now. We're about to get an advertisement. Um, the shouts were already boring. I feel like conceptually they were okay. 
sometimes. Not all of them were winners, but some of them were at least, like, a little more interesting than others. Um, and it sounds like the ones in Starfield are even more boring and even less effective, which... Uh, <laughs> but, but, but... But. Thank you, Pivot Bash, for the 40 months, by the way. Very, very generous of you. Much appreciated. Thanks for sticking around so long, y'all, with all these big, these big old months-long subs. I do appreciate that. But. But. The way you get any of your powers was described to me as playing Superman 64. And that was literally the one thing that made me want to play Starfield, is the fact that I can play shitty, no good, worse, worse than dirt Superman 64, but done by a AAA studio. <laughs> it's like, cause, cause you know how in Skyrim, a lot of the- To save the- I have to pin that fucking message simple, Dan, that's really good. Um... It's not letting me pin it. Can I pin it? Thank you. <laughs> if you want to save the galaxy, Superman, solve my- Starfield man, solve my maze. What would it take to get me to stream Superman 64? Um... I'm not gonna say anything because one of my friends is already doing a subathon, so I imagine the community is a little strapped for cash. <laughs> Quite frankly. And I'll leave it at that and wait till, uh, maybe a couple of months. <laughs> Smiling so sweetly. <laughs> Stay tuned, hard. Uh, but I'll I'll say this much: never say never, or whatever. Anyways, um, so you know how in Skyrim, like you you go into dungeons and stuff, right? You go into dungeons, and like the quality of the dungeons is hit or miss, leaning largely towards miss. You go into Q shape, and then you come on out. Um, would I give Ochi a scrummy bone? I mean, eventually. I don't I don't have that game yet. I'm still playing Pikmin One. Uh, stop distracting me from my fucking Superman story! Stop! You guys have to stop being interesting to talk to! Not even kidding! Um, so... So, so you know how you do, like, dungeons in, in Skyrim, right? And then, like, sometimes it'll be like, yeah, here's a- Here's a Skyrim word wall, and you get a shout for your dragon shout. You can use your dragon power. Um... And, like, e each of the, di the dungeons, even though the quality is kind of whatever, and they all kind of blend together because the level design is not so great for the most part, like, they're still different dungeons, right? So Starfield's <laughs> dungeons with the powers that you get are like, okay, go to one of the random proc gen planets. It sucks because it's a random proc gen planet. Go into a dome. All the domes are always the exact same and they're a single room. And then it will spawn like a bunch of like lights or rings or something. Uh, and you have to like jetpack fly your way into all of them to get your power. And then once you leave, a dude appears and is like, You got a power? I will kill you! Um, but because it's a Bethesda game where the scaling sucks and is bad, um, apparently he becomes like, you, you sneeze at him and he dies, <laughs> eventually at a certain point in the game. <laughs> so anyway, it's, you, it, it literally is just you go into a dome and you have to play Superman 64 for a bit. <laughs> and then you get a power that does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Mirak shows up? Wait, so... When... <laughs> this doesn't sound amazing? Right, and that's why it sounds incredible to me. I need to play AAA Superman 64, but like... I'll be real, I don't want to pay money for that, and I can't be bothered to fucking pirate it, because the rest of the game I don't give much of a shit about. So like... <laughs> Anyways, when, um... When my friends were describing this to me, I had assumed that it was like a different guy each time appears to attack you. But like the way some people in chat are talking about it, is it like the same guy? Is it the same guy every time that appears and is like, I hate you. I, oh, we gonna kill you. Felt so much fatigue after you got on a planet. Yeah, it seems like out of every Bethesda game, it is the one that is the most like that, because for some reason, every game they make and release, they think like, oh, I, I say they, realistically, I mean whoever's in charge thinks like, oh, so what we need to do then is make it bigger, right? Increase the scale and make it bigger and wider and larger and like, have so much more space for you to explore and it's like so many more systems piled on top of each other that don't have enough attention they need to be interesting systems, so they're all just kind of there. <sighs> They already made a fuck huge game with the Elder Scrolls 2. And that game is like I don't know if I'd call it good, but it's at least interesting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
Are you hearing this right, Midfield? I mean, I'm led to believe it's a Bethesda game, like any other Bethesda game, so like... You can take from that what you will. <laughs> the, the one thing I have to say on the subject, which, take it with a grain of salt, because uh -huh. my opinion is, has heard Holly talk about it, which she is talking about it based on other friends of hers talking about it, is she described it to me, and I said to her, Honey, this sounds kind of like the space stage in Spore. And she said, no, it's not like that because you don't spend a lot of time in space in Starfield. And I made the face of that woman in the meme doing the math. Right, because like, all the time you spend in space in Starfield is like, it's a room you go to when you fast travel, right? It's a room you go to when you do fast travel, right? That, that's what space is in Starfield? Like, I saw people being like, oh no, we have we have better Starfield already. It's called No Man's Sky, or it's called Outer Wilds, and it's like, no, 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 no. You fundamentally misunderstand. Those are trying to be very different sorts of video games about space. <laughs> it's... They, like, almost had me for a second in some of the preview stuff they were putting out when they were talking about how, like, yeah, we have, like, interesting economy stuff and we have, like, a bunch of interesting perks that are, like, related to, uh, like, social stuff and doing science stuff and doing cooking and things like that. And I was like, oh, huh, yeah, that kind of sounds interesting to me until I remembered it was a Bethesda game. And so none of those are going to matter because the core of the game is going to be, hey, man, uh, can you go and shoot 30 dudes? with guns for us? Thanks, man. Here's why the imperialism is good. Let's go shoot more dudes with guns. It's, it's, man. Man. From what you've heard, Better Starfield is actually the Outer Worlds. I have heard some things about the Outer Worlds. <laughs> I still don't know if I'm ever going to play that any day. New Vegas, though? New Vegas is not a Bethesda game. Bethesda, like, published New Vegas. They did not make it. They went, hey, here's the engine. And here's, like, marketing money and stuff. They didn't, they didn't do it. <laughs> ah. So Sonic Adventure, huh? Sonic Adventure. We've, we, uh... We watched a lot of Sonic Adventure this weekend. Uh-huh. I'm sure... Uh, all y'all have heard, since we are all, like, in the same circle stream-wise, uh, Wayne's been doing his, his big ol' Sabathon thing. There's, uh, it's, it's, it's been fun to, to hang out for that and to just, like, hang out and watch with my wife when I wasn't up to, like, you know, getting on call or nothing. Um, Wayne has a whole lot of, uh, things he has put together that he hasn't even gotten around to showing yet. <laughs> Thank you, June.gov for the four month resub, much appreciated. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for people to see what uh, he has in store. Has Trog solved the Troglum? I'm led to believe yes. Um, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how much I'm allowed to say given it's not my project, but uh, the thing that was causing issues was very fucking stupid and uh, <laughs> made him mad. Pardon? Tech problems usually are. Yeah, but like, this is especially kind of a stupid thing that was causing the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all, again, I am even more an outsider. All I know is that what I heard being described on the stream made me think, oh my god, these are like me level tech problems. No one else should have to face those. Uh huh. Is Wayne okay? I mean, the dude's been doing multiple close to 12 hour streams, like multiple days in a row. Uh, after, like, you know, not streaming very much. And even if you're streaming very much, I imagine that's fucking exhausting. So, like, yeah, he's he's good. He's been yelling a lot, so his throat is hoarse. <laughs> and he did eat a Sonic chili dog. Yeah, that, that causes a he did he, he did also eat Sonic, and that did, like... That, that did harm him bodily. Um, and he did throw himself bodily across a room several times. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh... I had really good chili dogs, though. Um, I got my wife chili dogs! We, we literally just went to, like, a little uh, hole-in-the-wall corner of a street place nearby uh, that we've been, like, joking about for months because we saw, like, hot dogs in the window with a very funny sign and they have a very charming, like, 90s-looking website. 
And so we went there and I was like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have two chili dogs. I'm gonna get some fries. Um, and that shit was fucking good. Like, I had chili dogs before. Uh, they're all right. I've had, um, Michigan dogs, which I'm led to believe are supposed to be chili dogs, but where I live, Michigan dog means uh, you get a hot dog with mustard and some spaghetti sauce on it, basically. Uh, and, like, those are okay. Sometimes I'll just make fucking spaghetti sauce and put it on a hot dog at home, and that's pretty good. Uh, don't knock it till you try it, but if you try it and you knock it, I won't be mad. Uh, <laughs> it's It's gotta be, like, um, like a thin, kind of meaty uh, spaghetti sauce for it to work. You're from Michigan, what the fuck is that? Michigan dog in multiple places is like a type of chili dog. Kind of a bolognese, but not really. Uh, from, from what they serve in my area, which I'm led to believe is not the standard Michigan dog. <laughs> Don't know where they ever got that name? No clue. All I know is I've seen several places call dogs Michigan dogs. And it does sound like Michigan J Frog, which makes me smile. Michigan um, J Dog. Anyways, point being, I got uh, some chili dogs and uh, that shit, that was wrapped up tight in the little, in the little, the little paper, and that shit was smeared all over the paper, like, brown smear, like, mmm, <laughs> the diarrhea machine, uh, <laughs> took one bite, man, that shit was good. I'm so glad. Every, every time I get Holly food nearby, I'm so worried it's finally going to be the one that's just, like, dog shit bad, and she's like, honey, I love you, this is bad, I go away forever, and then a plane appears outside my window and my wife gets on it and I never see her again. I don't know why you, I mean, I know why you worry about that because you have an anxiety disorder. Yeah! But I don't know why you worry about that because I have only had bad food here once. Okay, twice. But the one once from a place that we went to and it was, they had dog shit eel. The eel was not good. It was like... It was really bad. Either. The texture was disgusting, and like it oh was like. Oh God, that was our anniversary too. Why did you come back here? Because I love you. I love you too. <laughs> what do you mean? Why? You're my fucking partner. I, I'm literally in love with you. Yay. <laughs> the eel was dog though. It was real bad. The eel was real bad. So I'm not going to get eel from that place ever again. Every other place has been a banger. It's, it's bad. But I'm not gonna fucking dox myself. But the place <laughs> where I live. Uh -huh. It's just, every single restaurant I've been to is a banger. Even the one that gave me food poisoning, because the food <laughs> is still a banger until it poisoned me. I forgot there was a place that poisoned you! <laughs> that's that's literally like how the fucking hot chocolate you made me that we're pretty sure is what got me when I first got here mm -hmm. uh, was still delicious, and so I didn't notice the taste of off milk. <laughs> <laughs> I was interviewing for like a, um, a like contract thing, internship, whatever the fuck. I was interviewing and they like took me out to lunch because they were very sweet and so I had like a great free lunch and like was eating it the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And then that was also when, I can actually talk about this now, that was also when I was putting up the Welcome Home exhibit uh -huh. and had like a million things to do to get that shit up on time and like was still literally building a phone with my bare hands. Uh -huh. And I had to do that while poisoned. <laughs> Godspeed. You've had eel on sushi and it was good. No, no, no. Here's the thing. When eel is good, when like sushi grade eel is good, when you get that shit in like a sushi roll or like a rice bowl, when that shit's good, it is fucking killer. That is literally why I ordered it because good eel is fucking phenomenal. This literally was like, um... You know, you know how, like, even people that do like fish will sometimes talk about how it has, like, a very strong fishy taste sometimes? Uh, in, like, a, in, like, a negative way? It was entirely that taste, but also the taste of grease and the texture of grease, uh, and, like, weird flabby skin that was also on it. It, 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 it was slop. It was goo. Um, and the sauce they used wasn't good. Um... <laughs> It was, it was foul. It was foul. It was not good. It was real bad. It was, it was, it was no good. But the reason I got it is because I've had some fucking life-changing eel before, so I wanted to eat it. I wanted to eat good eel. We hoped so badly. And, like, the place we got it from is otherwise a very good place. Mm-hmm. Like, everything else we had from there was, like, mid at best, at worst. Yeah, we got some, like, other sushi from that place, and it was good. Yeah. 
Quebecois stomach lining is steel, take some serious bad to hurt. Okay, maybe true. That might be true. <laughs> that might have an effect on some things. <sighs> so anyway, Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic Adventure. It's 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 been so wild watching um my my basically my only experiences with Sonic Adventure are like I I was there when Puzz was streaming it. That was a good time. Uh, I've I've been here when Wayne was streaming it, um, and like I've seen some people speedrun it, and I I I still gotta play it. I, I, I one of my subathon goals was to go through most of the Sonic games, um, and I still need to get around to that. And I need to get around to starting that. Um, and I won't commit to saying when because I don't know when yet. I gotta get home from my trip and figure out what's going on, when's it happening, things like that. Um, but. Man, I kind of, I kind of got the bug seeing uh, <laughs> seeing Wayne go through it again. Thank you, Birdlimes, for the thirty-six month resub. The men picking, picking them. them. What are my honest thoughts on the Sonic series? I've played three of the video games. They sure were video games that I played. Uh, <laughs> Which one specifically again? I know Sonic Colors is one of them. I've played Sonic Colors. I like Sonic Colors quite a bit. I've played Sonic 1. It's certainly the first game in the franchise. Yep, that's fair. Uh, I, I like the bits of it that I like, though. Um, I've played some of Sonic Generations. It plays like Sonic Colors, so I like it. <laughs> Holly Chow stream? Oh, don't you, Just you wait. Just you wait. I don't know how in-depth the Chow stuff is in these games. Very. It is entirely possible I lose months just doing Chow stuff. It is entirely possible. We'll see. Um, have I played any other Sonic games? I've played Sonic 2, by which I mean I've played three levels of Sonic 2 and could never get past the third world of Sonic 2. Um, Did you play Sonic CD or just get scared by it? I got scared by Sonic CD. Okay. And like got addicted to like the animations and the music and stuff. Because they're good. But I've never played it myself. Uh, I'm I'm led to believe it's interesting and kind of weird. Yeah, it's a weird one. And I've played two levels of Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic 3 or Sonic 3 and Knuckles. That's about how much most people play. Liked the way that handled compared to the other 2D Genesis Sonics. Um never really played terribly much of it. Really, really liked the music. And... I think I played a little bit of fucking Sonic Battle? <laughs> the Game Boy Advance fighting game? Awesome. <laughs> I haven't I haven't really played a lot of Sonics. Um, I was just never super, super into it as a youngin. I was, I was more of a Mario gal. I was more of a Yoshi gal. Yoshi yeah. can jump and flutter in the sky and it's really cool. Um, my wife is making Yoshi sounds at me. Thank you. I, do you care about me? I do. Nice. Why are you green and a dinosaur and licking everything? <laughs> That's not an answer, but it's an answer. <laughs> um, Yoshi is badass, you're right. So badass, I love him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, he loves to eat fruit just like me, so... That's pretty cool. Real recognizing real. What else did we talk about before we get started? Uh, we watched the Gumby movie again. Well, by which I mean I watched the Gumby movie again uh, and forced my friends to watch the Gumby movie with me because it was my birthday. What a screaming nightmare. I love you, honey. What a screaming nightmare. Maybe we should watch a good movie the next time we do a movie night. We could do that. We could. We could. We could also watch We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. We could. We could. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, because it was, like, around my birthday, there was a thing that, uh, my friend Frankie and I, uh, Friendly Frankenstein, shout out to Frankie, love him, uh, for months we've been threatening our friends, like, hey, what if we do a double feature movie night where we watch the Gumby movie and also, like, the Felix the Cat movie from the late 80s, like, all back to back, like, one after the other, um, because they're both, man, they're, they're, they're both some fucking movies, huh? They're both some, like really, really good examples of really, really bad animation. Would I recommend the experience of forcing friends to watch the Gumby movie to torment them? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, unequivocally. 
unequivocally. If you if you want to have a fun time with friends, uh, and then have them go like, man, I don't feel like a human anymore afterwards. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Um, both of these are such great movies about like nothing is happening. Nothing is happening, and yet the screen is full of sound and color and motion, and nothing is happening. None of it amounts to anything. Nothing is here on the screen. It's awesome. It's awesome. I, I, I think it was Bugs. Maybe it wasn't Bugs. Maybe it was someone else talking about finding someone talking about, like, every time one of their friends, like, trying LSD for the first time, they tell them to watch the Gumby movie or something. I, I, I gotta ask whoever it was that said that where they got that story from, because I want to read more about that. <laughs> it was, that it was, feels cruel. It, it was like, a, I want to say it was like a Reddit post or something that they, they found and were talking about, but like, man... People are straight up doing evil with the Gumby movie, and that's awesome. I, what I have to say, I have many things to say about this double feature, but the thing I will tell you all is that after the double feature, I had a very minor breakdown. I'm oh, yeah. fine, though. And then I went to bed because I was really, really tired. The breakdown was unrelated to Gumby. Yeah. It just kind of <laughs> happened around it. You know how it is. I don't think is. Gumby helped. <laughs> No. But I had a very minor breakdown. I'm fine. I went to bed. I was very tired. That was probably why I had the breakdown. Uh-huh. So I went to bed and just, like, fucking crashed while while my wife was kind of um, finishing stuff up on the pewter and, like, getting, getting some work done. Then I fucking... What apparently happened, I forgot about it until, like, several minutes after Holly reminded me the next day. Uh-huh. Is... Apparently, Holly, like, you know, she, she finished up her work, she turned off the light, she got ready for bed, she, she came and laid down next to me, gave me a little kiss, and I sat bolt upright, terror in my eyes, and said, where am I? No, no, you sat bolt upright and went, huh! and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and then you went, where am I? How did I get here? And I was like, are you, are you joking? No. <laughs> you... You went to bed, hon. What? You you went to bed like an hour or so ago. What? I don't remember that. <laughs> and then I just fucking went back to sleep. And then she went back to sleep. <laughs> you Literally, you were the fucking Bionicle roleplay post. It's like, emerges from a portal. Where am I? That was you. <laughs> And then, like, she woke up the next day and had literally no memory of this. I think what I vaguely remember was not as extreme as that. I remember, like, kind of snapping awake when Holly went to bed and going, What? Did I fall asleep? How long have I been asleep? And Holly saying, I don't know, honey. And then I fell back asleep. I don't remember screaming and asking, where am I? <laughs> you were frantic? You were in a panic. <laughs> I was like, okay. My wife is freaking out. It's causing me to freak out. I need to stop freaking out so that I can comfort you and stop you from freaking out. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my god. Is everything okay? Did I do something to my poor wife? No, Gumby did something to me. Gumby did something to you. And then, the other thing I'll say is this was a separate waking up later. Uh-huh. I woke up probably like three, four in the morning, just kind of like half awake. It's dark, my wife is asleep. I turn over and I think I see fucking Felix the cat smiling at me and oh my experience God. true fear. What it was was my rip off Shadow the Hedgehog backpack. It was your fucking shadow plushie that you moved to the desk when I was doing Sonic Adventure with Wayne. <laughs> so. And in my half asleep state, I went, oh God, no one's gonna believe me. I had to take a picture. So I took a picture and I looked at it the next day and it's just a black screen and I had to blow it out like 300% just to see him. Uh-huh. It's <laughs> it's like that one night when you were trying to take a cute picture of me and the cat and it was just nothing. Yeah, that that also, this was like weeks ago at this point. I woke up in the night and Holly was like fast asleep and Kiki was curled up at her legs and I was like, this is so sweet. I'm gonna take a picture so I can show her in the morning so I don't have to wake her up. And I did. And then the next day, we're like walking to the elevator to take a walk. And I'm like, oh, honey, I need to show you. Look at this. And I just show her a black screen. Uh huh. <laughs> so I wasn't done talking about the Gumby movie. <laughs> Please talk about the Gumby movie. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> it's okay. We were both doing the interrupting. You don't have to apologize. Um. So. The, the Gumby movie is kind of difficult to explain as, like, 
a sequence of events. You you kind of have to see it to believe it, and even then you're not really going to believe it uh, until you see it. Um, don't think I'll ever truly be done talking about the Gumby movie. Here's the thing. Literally, me and Frankie have so many fucking thoughts about the Gumby movie that we have straight up joked in complete seriousness about doing a fucking post-mortem, a round <laughs> table. Whether that's like a thing that we stream or just, hey, we need to get in a Discord call and fucking talk about this. We're going to lose our minds. Um, so, the, the Gumby movie is trying to be like a reboot of Gumby and like, you know, making reference to like the old Gumby things while also introducing new Gumby things. And like, there's, there's a dog, it's a new dog, even though there's been so many like noteworthy dogs in Gumby canon before. Different dog. They make a new dog, his name is Lowbelly because he's like a, a, a dachshund and he's riding on like a skateboard. Um, it sounds like an unbearable burden to all who view it. Nah, nah, you can bear the weight. Nah, dude, the amulet totally isn't cursed. Just trust me, pick it up. Um, so Gumby is in a band with some new people that he met uh, that are all literally named based on like the belts that they wear. Like there's fat buckle, there's thin buckle, and there's no buckle. And they all have disgusting feet and toes. Um, and Pokey is jealous because they're in a band and he wasn't invited. And so he doesn't get to spend as much time with his friend anymore. And like, this is set up right at the start and you're like, oh, this is gonna be like a long running like plot thread, right? And like any other plot thread in Gumby the movie, they resolve it like immediately because you can't have like drama or things like, you know, causing conflict. You have to deal with that immediately so we can introduce the next problem to solve immediately. Uh, so it's immediately just, oh, hey Pokey, I'm sorry you're sad. Uh, you can eat food with me and you can dance in the band. And he's like, okay. All right. Um, yeah, the movie came out in '95 because they were trying to re they were trying to bring Gumby back for the modern audience. And surely the kids of the '90s will love Gumby in rock band with his skateboard. No one wanted Gumby. Not even the people that liked Gumby wanted Gumby. Anyways, um, and so they're they're putting together their band to put on their concert, and they're doing this inside of a book because that's one of the conceits of Gumby is that he can go inside of like toys and books and stuff and explore the worlds there. Um, and they're in a book about farmers, and the, the farmers are all distraught because they're gonna lose all their houses because of loans that they took. Uh, and one of the dinosaurs is like, Well, you just shouldn't take loans. Loans are bad. Um, and so Gumby is like, Okay, well, we need to put on a benefit concert to help them out. And so they put on a concert to raise money, and the dog is so touched or so scared, I'm not sure, by the music, that he starts crying pearls, like real ass pearls, like pearls that you can sell. And so the blockheads, which are recurring Gumby characters that are like mischievous little scamps, are straight up like super villains in this. And they're like, all right, we're gonna steal the dog and we're going to make him cry so that we can get infinite money forever. Um, and then we'll all be good. Um, and so a lot of things happen. Uh, Gumby signs a contract to be on MTV, uh, but doesn't read the contract, but it's fine actually, because the dude who did it is nice, so don't worry about it, smile. Always sign a contract without reading it. Um, there are some robot versions of the band, they have to get them. The robot's like, really like exploding in like really cartoonishly gory, not even cartoonishly gory ways, just like kind of weirdly real feeling gory ways. At one point, they're so... Okay, I gotta go back a second. No, honey, if we do this, we're never gonna start the <laughs> fucking stream. The dog melts on screen, but it's okay because he's a robot. The dog melts and explodes, but it's a robot version of the dog, so it's fine. Um, so they have to rescue the dog, but the members of the band get kidnapped, so they have to rescue the band, but they make an evil Gumby robot that's kidnapping people, so they have to stop the Gumby robot, so they do that, and they rescue some of the people that were kidnapped. The band and, dies, by the way, and then they, they're okay. Right, then they find the band, and the band is dead. They literally were melted, they turned into fucking puddles of clay gore, and it's like, oh, sh how long is this movie? An hour and a half. And so they're like, well, we have to save them. Don't worry, Gumby, I'm the scientist that I have the machine that can fix them. Uh-oh, it's not working. Don't worry, it's working. And by the way, the Gumby is back, the Gumby robot. Frankie and Bugs told us there was a horrible clay fusion they have to go to the hospital for. Right, it's a gag at the start of the movie and it goes on for agonizingly long. Agonizingly long at the start of the movie. That's the first 10 minutes of the movie. I skipped it because it has literally no plot bearing, which you can arguably say about any of the plot, but this bit especially. 
Um, anyways, the Gumby robot is back, and he's fighting back, and they're like, well, we have to stop the Gumby robot, so they stop and kill the Gumby robot, they go to King Arthur World, there's a Star Wars reference, they blast him with a fucking fire hose, uh, and then the other robots come out, but the floor is wet, so they die, and um, then it's like, alright, no more problems, and we put the blockheads in jail. Um, is this just the first ten minutes? No, we are almost at the end of the movie now. Um, we put the blockheads in jail, and now it's time to put on, uh, our benefit con- No, we did the benefit concert. It's time for us to record our music video, because we signed the contract to do a music video with the music video guy. We're gonna be stars, it's gonna be great! Um, and the entire music video is about one of the, like, new teenage girl Gumby characters they introduced to be a love interest, talking about how much she loves Gumby and wants to fuck Gumby, and it's great that Gumby is so weird mystery guy, and I just hope that he can look at me and see the same hunger in my eyes that I see in his. Uh, take me away, Gumby. Ravage me, Gumby. Do things to me, Gumby. <laughs> So that goes on for like a whole Pound minute. the soft clay of my body into a brand new sculpture, Gumby. Bake me in the kiln of your love, Gumby. Um, and then they make a lot of money. And also they make a lot of money because they have a dog that can make infinite money with his pearls. And so you think, okay, so the moral of the story then is they have the infinite money and they're going to use all of that to help out the farmers, right? Because they had the dinosaur guy at the beginning talk about how loans are bad and you shouldn't do them. So what they do at the end of the movies, they open up a new loan company so that they can start making the loans, start making the loan money off of the farmers with a low interest rate of 3.5%, even though they have a dog that can make infinite money they still need more because that's the solution is more capitalism right and then gumby goes back to space because he's from space oh yeah then he and pokey fuse into a fucking monolith and go back to the moon and that's the gumby movie it ends with a different music video <laughs> I, I looked it up later. I forgot to tell you this. Apparently, the end credits music video, the one that the credits run over, right. is literally just scenes from the old Gumby TV show. That doesn't surprise me. That does not surprise me. <laughs> Which but is it... why none of it has anything to do with anything else in the movie. And I doesn't include any of the new characters. I suppose that makes sense. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and originally they wanted, I th like, hearsay is they wanted Michael Jackson to originally do, like, some of the music and maybe the ending music for the movie, and his response was more or less just like, no. So they got some other musical contributor that had worked with Gumby before. Uh, it really does just feel like, okay, so Art Clokey, who invented Gumby, wants to make a Gumby movie. What are we doing? Well, he's the Gumby boss. Let's just let him work his magic. Let's let him do whatever he wants without any editing or oversight or anything like that. And it was just, hey, here's my like 50 to 100 different story ideas, all one after another, that don't really link together in any sort of way. Do, do you like it? Do you want more Gumby? No. <laughs> no one wants more Gumby. <laughs> No one ever wants. To this day, literally, whoever ends up with the Gumby license is like, all right, we've got the Gumby license. What do we do with it? We need to figure out how we can monetize Gumby, get people interested in Gumby again. Do you, do you, literally, do you want to know what the most recent attempt at getting people interested in Gumby was a couple of years ago? I've literally talked about this on stream before, but I can't blame you if no one remembers because it's fucking Gumby. <laughs> <laughs> you sand for the sand. Anyways, their big idea was to make Gumby NFTs, which they never did because there was no interest. <laughs> it wasn't even Gumby NFTs. It was saying they would make Gumby NFTs and nothing happened. <laughs> Do you want to play Pikmin, honey? That's right, we are here to play Pikmin, huh? Should Picking we touch them. upon Felix the Cat first, or should we just go right into Pikmin? So Felix the Cat, the movie. <laughs> That's a different nightmare. I have less to say about that, because I know less about that movie than, like, you know, friend of the stream Frankie does. Uh, you, he's, he's talked about it at length. Literally, I've been shouting them out constantly. I'm gonna do it again. Uh, <laughs> go fucking watch. Uh, I have to spell the stream right. Go... Go watch Bugs and Frankie streams. Go watch their VODs. Uh, not only are they wonderful, incredible people that do wonderful streams, 
But also, Frankie fucking loves talking about the Felix the Cat movie. Which, and again, is a nightmare. In the same way that I love talking about the Gumby movie. <laughs> so like, hey, go watch their stuff. It's good. And also, you will hear him talk about it. Um, <laughs> if you are interested in uh, the other Pikmin games, they've played 2 and 3 and 4. Uh, we'll stream 2 and 3 and 4 eventually when we have the time for it. But uh, they have done all those and they got real good VODs about it. Uh, if you are interested in Kingdom Hearts, they've been going through basically the entire franchise and are literally covering the Deader Than Dirt mobile game in, like, excruciating detail, which is very impressive and has required a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so go check them out. They are literally fucking doing games preservation right now. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, they're cool. Give them a look. Uh, I love them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been very glad to be in this time zone where I can actually watch their streams a little bit because uh, <laughs> they are on the late shift for Pacific time. <laughs> so I don't normally get to watch them super much when I'm home. Uh, but it's fun to peer through the VODs and stuff. I think that's about everything I wanted to say before we get started. I almost reflexively hit the stop streaming button. <laughs> well, goodbye. <laughs> I almost reflexively ended the stream, which would have been really goddamn funny. We but... walked in, we talked to you about the Gumby movie and some good food that we had, and then we leave. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hey, if you're new, it's wonderful to see you here. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming on back. Uh, review the rules, follow the rules. The streams are intended for mature audiences. Uh, no spoilers, no backseating. If you're wondering, hey, what's backseating? It means telling me how to run my stream or how to play the video game. Uh, if I need or want hints or advice, I will ask for it. Other than that, uh, trying to figure stuff out is part of the fun. So, you know, sit back, enjoy the ride. If you're so bothered by the way I'm playing the video game, simply play it yourself. Smile. You fucking play it then if you're so goddamn smart. <laughs> um, be good to each other. Be good to me. Be good to yourself. Uh, try to stay relatively on topic. If you want to talk about things unrelated to the stream... Hey, you can always go in the Discord and chat with folks there, or you can, like, send me an ask on Tumblr or something. Um, what else, what else, what else? If you want to support the stream financially, which is always greatly appreciated, you can subscribe to the channel. It's a reoccurring monthly fee that gets you some fun little emotes. Uh, you can give out, give subs to other folks in the community. Uh, you can tip directly through Streamlabs and PayPal. Um... The privilege of not having to play the video game <laughs> comes with the responsibility of having to not play the video game. Exactly. That is maybe one of the funniest ways someone's ever worded that. Thank you, Frums. <laughs> Odd diddums, you missed a bit of chatting. Oh, it was a lot of chatting. It was like 30 to 40 minutes of chatting, frankly. I, I was feeling talky today. We had a lot to catch up on. We had a case of the Mondays. We do have a case of the Mondays. We haven't streamed a lot in the past month, so it's been a lot of chatting front-loaded at the start of these. <laughs> um, is that all the talking stuff? Yeah, you can support the channel financially if you want, if you have the means. It's up to you. No obligation, no pressure. Never feel like you gotta. Uh, but this is, you know, my job. And I'm able to say that because of the very generous support of viewers like you. So uh, thank you all for helping to keep the lights on, as it were, uh, over the years and Always remember these streams would never be what they are uh, without the very generous support of viewers like you. Or just coming in and hanging out. That's support too. So thank you all a very much. Picking them. 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 Where the fuck is Dolphin? It's over here. Who tipped me? Did you know? In an interview with Shigeru Miyamoto in issue number 49 of Nintendo Dream, Miyamoto said that Pikmin are called Pikmin. Because you saw men eating pickles. Wrong! 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 False information! Guards! Seize them! I'm hungry. Uh, we're actually literally going to go into some supplementary reading at the end of stream, once we finish the game, um, <laughs> related to some of the development history of Pikmin, and also some, like, stuff in Pikmin that we didn't get to see, which I think will be a fun time. But, uh, thanks for the tip. <laughs> thanks for lying to me. <laughs> thanks for paying to lie. But uh, I, I thought it would be fun to pull up some supplementary material since I had literally found some uh, since we started streaming this game. And I was like, oh, that could be fun to cover. Mm -hmm. uh, anyhow. You love lying? Hey, me too. I get it. <laughs> Let's boot up the damn video game. Let's show the damn video game on stream. Uh, do you want to show on... 
There we go. It's Pikmin. Post your fucking Pikmin in chat. Post your fucking Pikmin in chat. Post him. And now I have to screen share with my partner so yeah, she can see it. The funny thing is, I thought you were already screen sharing because I heard the perfect clarity. You heard it through my, my through my, my headphones? And then nothing else. None of the music, none of the anything. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Oh, I love this little intro video. Look at him pick up the capsule. I used to think the pellets were meant to be... Actually, maybe they are meant to be like little bottle caps kind of thing, because they certainly look like bottle caps with little ridged edges. They, they look less and less like bottle caps in like the later games, which is interesting. It's it's neat to sort of look at how um, things visually change as the games like evolve and go on. Like something I've noticed when I was watching Bugs and Frankie play 4, that like the patterning on the bulb orb is like different. Like not in the sense of like where the, the the spots are or nothing, but the sense of like it feels like on some of the bulb orbs, the, like the red the red butt part is like receded, which is interesting. Neat to think about. Reminds you of those molded sugar things that are in cake sometimes, huh? Interesting. I never heard of no one describe it that way before. Picking them. Picking them. Picking them. Picking them. Picking them. Picking them. We have 20 out of 30 parts. I thought we had more parts. That's why I earlier was like, oh, it's going to take us a real short time to finish, huh? No. I was wrong. Yes. We I have all but one part to get in the distant spring, and then we have the final area. Let's do our best. I love doing my best. Let's do our best. Yeah! They make fun little, like, um... You know what it reminds me of, honestly? Mm -hmm. Um... You know those sort of, like, bamboo fixtures that you have sometimes in gardens where, like, you yeah, put the water in them and the they go, like, scare. clunk? Yeah! They do sound like a deer scare. It kind of... It, it, it feels very, like, wooden. It feels very yeah. analog. It's cool! Mm-hmm. It, it, it feels very, like, woods and ceramics and stuff. A lot of water here, so I'm taking a bunch of these. Let's see. Let's check the map. We have multiple parts to try and get in multiple places. Mm -hmm. At least we fucked up that one guy. I remember that now. We did. We fucked up a couple of bad guys. A couple of bad damn guys. We cleared out a little space for ourselves. That's good. Picking them. Big bridge down. We got the big bridge down that gave us exactly one thing, but we got it. And now we never have to fucking do it again. Uh-huh. That sure is nice. All right, boys, let's go through here. Boys, boys, boys around the bend. Well, they're going in the damn water. Whatever. I was more concerned with the ones who decided they wanted to be on the other side of the block. Let's see if we can't... Hmm, we might have to go around this to find the way in. Hmm. Is there a ramp that I can get to, or is this just, like, get some yellows to, to bring her on down? Let's see. Well, some dudes have definitely split off from the party, but they'll, they'll, they'll get back together. They'll figure it out, them boys. Hey, boys. Okay. You all just kind of crammed yourselves into a corner and decided you were abandoned, huh? Yeah. Ah, bridge here. Okay, I see. I see yous, guys. All right. The rest of yous. It's bridge time. All right. Get this bridge ready. You guys straight up don't know where to go, so I'm taking you here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Skulls. Start slapping. Slap that ass. Slap that fat jiggly ass. Slap that fat nasty thing. I should not be throwing them in the near the head quite so much. Some of you poor buggers is getting to the eating zone. Come on back. Boy, 
boys, the butt, the butt, the butt boys. Jump on his butt, boys. We're almost done here. Oh, some of the fools will just lay down and wait, huh? Yeah, they did just kind of sit right there, poor things. It's fine, we got him, we got him. Let's fuck this thing. Only a couple gone, and then we can certainly get more. Here's a part. I've found my massage machine. Put this right down in the lower back and area and let it get to work. I can't wait until I get it installed again, as my lower lumbar region's been paining me ever since the crash. Oh, sweet relief. How many do we need? 30. I don't think I have 30 free. Hey man, what are you doing here still? Your best is what you're doing. Yo, thank you, Socks! 37 months. How's the airport? How's the airport? Is it cool? Alright, bridge is done. Bridge boys? Oh, bridge boys! Oh, bridge boys! So here's what we're gonna do. Alright, you guys are on? Now. Bridge boys? Operation Frog Legs begins. Ooh! Uh -oh. Operation Frog Legs made a mistake. Operation Frog Legs go, uh, not so good actually, I think. It's fine, it's fine. I got the, I got the tech. I gotta call these guys off earlier. Hey man, you wanna you wanna gum it? You wanna you wanna you wanna jump? You wanna jump? You wanna jump at us? Yeah, you do. Hey, 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 hey. Ooh, okay. Hmm, I didn't get you fast enough. So let's. Okay. Let's get you all away. This is not going quite as planned. But we're almost clear. I have I have somehow gotten it to this kind of stop. Okay, and we get a capsule too, so like all right. Let's bring these home. Let's bring these home. Yeah, go ahead, boys. Get more boys back. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's get some reds. Who wants to do manual labor? Come on out, boys. Hey, man, just loafing? No problem. You guys got it handled? You love to see it. Cool, cool, cool. Let's get all of you back. Um, let's get this sorted. Uh, picking them. I guess I maybe could have let him rest so that I could let him get flowers, but uh, eh. Right now what I want more than anything is to just take these guys with me to uh, Grab the uh, corpses and stuff that are here to replenish the blues. We need bodies more than anything right now. Yay! You know what? Not bad timing. I'm getting apart already. Mm-hmm. Not even halfway through. Something nice about these old games is being able to see things where the devs really improved on intuitive design to smooth out creative AI and stuff. It's fun. Yeah, but mm -hmm. also I think it's fun to see how like some of the rough edges like influence the design and like the mood of it. Like, yeah, it's. 
at, there are some times when it feels like I am just kind of fighting against how the game controls. And like some of that is the game being the way it is. Some of that is me being like rusty and not remembering how it plays and misremembering how some stuff plays because I'm used to like later entries. But like, I don't know. Also, it like it, it, it it's like in the sense of like, you know, part of the challenge and part of the, the fun of like Monster Hunter is like figuring out the controls and stuff. That's part of like the oppressive feeling of like Pikmin, you know, is it's like you're you're in this weird world and you don't know everything is. You don't know how things work. It's 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 fun. It's cool. Yeah. I've been walking so much lately. I've really been looking forward to using this. I have now recovered 21 out of 30 parts. If I can find just eight more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. Come along, boys. Let's get... Oh, this thing. Let's carry this thing. Bring it on home, boys. And we got these grubs. Are these grubs? Alright. And... Whoop. Wrong button. Who is still out there? There's one just over here. Hey, man. I'm so lonely. Okay. Come on back, bud. And we've got... Uh... Is there still just one there? Oh, no. You're, you're just falling behind. Okay. Right, come on over. Come on over here. Thanks. Okay, we got a ding-a-ding-ding-ding. -ding. Come on, boys. Alright. Let's regroup. Let's check the map. Wrong button, but let's check the map. There's certainly this area over here without too, too much in the way of water that we can check out. And we've got, like, some Pikmin that went up this little shortcut that we made. And that seems to want us to have red ones. So maybe we put some blues away and get some reds? Seems like a plan. Well, let's try that. Alright, buds. Go to bed. Yeah, Tim Tam. It's a... It's a tiny game. And I feel like Pikmin 1 especially has a really interesting sense of, like, scale, where it feels especially- Oh my god! I thought that corpse was alive for a second and I got really scared. Oh my god, that happens to me all the time with those things. Uh-huh. Where, like, Pikmin 1 feels especially, like, kind of zoomed out and small scale, almost. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's a cannon beetle. Okay, Ooh, I see. you! I know you. Hey, bro, I seen you. Um... We've got our tiny crack over here. Uh, that just brings them up there. That isn't quite- Hmm. Never mind. Maybe we don't go there quite yet. Let's... Oh, do you have to take down that bomb rock, maybe? Yeah, but I don't know where bomb rocks are at the moment. So that's gonna be part of the part of the puzzle, is figuring out where those are. There those are! Okay. Ah, in the usual place. The skull. You know how it is with skulls. Okay. How do you think that skull became a skull? Pardon? How do you think that skull became a skull? Naturally occurring skull? Bombs! Okay. Go on in. We gotta get yellows out. You guys go in too. Uh. Although, maybe there's some, like... No, I'm gonna put him in for now. Just maybe... The, you, you, you ideally want to try and focus on multiple things at once, but I'm still trying to figure out the damn map right now, so... Mm -hmm. And this is, like, a big map with a lot of hazards. Uh-huh. Alright. Come on out. You guys go on in. We'll still- we'll probably still need another day or two to, like, get the lay of the land, as it were, but... Yeah, and just, like, open up enough things to actually go and collect items. Yeah, that too. Alright, boys. We've got, like, four of them. Okay. That's not gonna be enough to take down this, I think. Because it's, like, six, I want to say, right? Six for the big ones or six for the regular? It's six. Okay. 
And we got like fire hazards and stuff up there, and these go down, um, like after a day, so I don't have to worry too, too much about building them up. Okay, are there more skulls and bombs around here that I missed? Let's check across the bridge? No, I don't think there is across the bridge, which is too bad. Okay, and there's something over there. <coughs> Whoop. There's like this one over here. I guess I can bring some, there's certainly one up there that it looks like I can maybe get to with my blue guys. So I'll go take some of them with me. Uh, thank you, Gracious Victory, for that 40 month reset, much appreciated. It does seem kind of like the play right now is scouting with the blues. Yep. Uh, and we got, we're we're doing at least one part a day and we got a couple of days of wiggle room, which is okay. Um, ideally once I, you know, figure some more stuff out and get some more things uh, opened up. Then um, be able to bang out a couple in a day sort of thing. Seems like a lot of time gotta be just like open some open these pits up, boss. Yep. Oh no. That fucking thing is back. Now. Okay. I'm basically in hell. Get him, boys! Get him, boys! There we go. There we go. All right, not a problem today. Yeah, that's right. It was a problem the last time because he was swooping in while there were other bigger threats around. Can you guys quit fucking sucking and get over here? This is not a fucking and sucking dude, game, boys. Dude, dude, I called your ass. We're losing daylight. Stay together. <laughs> today is not a day for fucking and sucking. No, 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 not today. Especially not if we got frogs to worry about. You guys want to open up this geyser? What is playing the danger music at me? I wonder. There's certainly frogs here, but we can like, we can avoid them. We can avoid them. We can... We can avoid them! Boys, you are stomping directly underneath the frog and just like, hanging out. There we go. That's the play. Your ass is ass, and I'm the grass man punk. Sure. All right. Get some more on the gate. Let's maybe call a couple here. Okay. Press to use on there. Press to use on here. The way is clear, no one's hurting them. We're opening up this pathway. There's that single frog. Um, I'm gonna wanna open this gate as well. Yeah, it looks like the parts behind there. So maybe we focus on this one? That one's gonna go past the two. Yeah. We are running out of time though, so maybe we just get a bit done on this and then tomorrow that's our priority. nighttime version of this song is eerier than I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these guys have a bit of a way to go to bring that back, so I might want to meet back up with them sooner than later, actually. Maybe we all just go back now? Oh, and they don't know where to go. Okay. Oh my god, yeah, they're trying to bring him through the, the, the bridge down. Okay, we're going home. You, you, you did your best, boys. You carried that corpse as far as it would go. Here's a corpse you can carry. You get to have this one. This damn bad bug. Okay. And is there anyone else loose on the map? No, we're all good. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Frums, for that reset. Much appreciated. And our blue numbers are already back up, so I'm happy with that. Okay. You guys go back in. And I think... I can't check the map no more. <laughs> oh well. I think we're not losing any just to being lost. I think. 
I think. I hope. <laughs> I have three little guys. Three beautiful baby boys going to bed. Did I kill Smokey Prog? I don't know what that is, Smile. Is Smokey Prog? No homo, we're smoking prog. Oh no, one guy didn't make it. Aww. Oh. Sorry, bud, I thought I got you. Oh. 18 days since impact. When I see the Pikmin engaged in fierce battle with the other creatures of this world, I often grow uneasy wondering why they never attack me. Could it be that they actually view me as a parental figure? A strange, disturbing thought. Blue numbers have gone down a little bit, but they've stabilized, <laughs> and we can get more. We also had, like, a huge supply of blues specifically for here. <laughs> uh-huh. We've seen this coming. Didn't think that counted as backseating? It's not. <laughs> I simply do not know what that is, Smile. <laughs> I second J. Smokey Prog sounds like a good name for a band. <sighs> Smoky Prog is what they play in those cigar lounges. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my getting an idea. I love when you get ideas. Yay! Okay. Let's get thirty. Let's set him off. On their wild adventure. Was it this way? I think it was this way. Yeah, there's water over here. here, here. Okay, if you guys want to plucking the grass, whatever, get that over with. Get that over and done so you can suck on it. There we go. Start sucking them. Get your power up. Become strong, become brave. Alright, my dogs are done barking. No, no, come on. Boys? Come on now. Stay with the group. Stick with the prod. Proud of the prod. Ooh, we gotta do a break soon, because we spent so long at the start just chatting. <laughs> no, 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 we're not here. Second frog has not spotted us. And will continue not to spot us. I hope. If I see the numbers go down, <laughs> then... Something's up, but they're 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 staying steady. They're forty-seven. So let's get our yellows. There weren't a lot of bombs. So let's just get a couple out. Let's go visit our friend the skull. Oh, the numbers are going down. All right, hang on. Hold up. Was there a second frog incident? There was a second frog incident. Oh, boys, my. boys, boys! Move! Boys, I'm starting to see why you went extinct. Boys! Okay, well. We're coming back with more. I thought it would be fine. I thought the enemy would be unloaded because it wasn't on screen. I am misremembering speedrun tech. Okay. So here's what we'll do. So we'll blow that up. So that's open. We will remember the tragedy of the Blue Boys! Uh, and we'll picking them. I didn't blew my boys up! The frog did! Listen, it's very sad that it happened. I regret what happened. That's on them for not running away. <laughs> they literally just got smashed and went, oh shit. 
Well, we better keep hitting this gate. We, we gotta we gotta stick at this gate. It's what the boss wanted. I do gotta go on break though. <laughs> so we're gonna switch over to here. Get up, have a stretch. Uh, get yourself a drink, maybe a snack. I'm just gonna be running ads for a couple of minutes. We'll be back real soon. See you. Puzz is just grabbing herself a quick coffee. I was petting the cat. You're so happy that you stood up. Yeah, we said, oh, we're gonna go on a break now, and we stood up, and then Kiki ran over going, Aah! Aah! and she was so excited, and I said, hi, little Kiki, and she rolled over on her side so sweetly for me and had nice purrs. Her maximum chinchuckies. Mm-hmm. She has become addicted to me, like, scratching her, like, on her chin and cheeks, which makes me happy, because cats like it when I do that. Yeah? She's running around the kitchen all funny-like now. She's, uh, she's in a playful mood. She's in a playful mood. <laughs> Silly killy. You got home from work today and your dog instantly flopped on her back and said belly rubs now. Awesome. How'd you teach your dog to say that? You can teach dogs to speak. You know, sit, speak, uh, roll dead, play over. I never had a dog, so I guess I wouldn't know. Uh, jump up and down and clap your hands. Give them hands. Their, their, their parents? Nice. Genetics? That tracks. I, I, I don't know how to answer that. Evolution? 
So it all started a million years ago when all life was first created by a big egg in the sky. So, so it all started a thousand years ago when um, animals emerged from the hole. And by animals, I mean cells. Kiki is gonna miss Holly so much. She might a little bit. Uh, she, she's probably gonna be fine. Last time I left, she was fine. But also this time, she does recognize me more, so... She might be a little confused for a bit, but also, like... Puzz is, like, her favorite person in the whole wide world, so I think she'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> she picked me herself. Uh-huh. Two hundred years ago, a bunch of rocks collided really fast, and it caused tigers to come out. And tigers were the first form of extant life. Yeah, everyone knows that. Yeah. That's how it all started. It's at least a couple of paleo guys in the chat. They know. It's funny that you say cats are pretty chill, given that Kiki has immediately just like jumped on top of her scratching post and like attacking it furiously. She was like ass out upside down attacking the scratching post so furiously. Uh-huh. <laughs> she likes she likes to stand on her perch. I think today she realized the top of the fridge is like a physical space. And so she might get ideas. I don't think she's gonna jump to it. Don't go there. Yeah. But she is like looking at it like, oh shit, has that always been there? Yeah. She she is eyeing it curiously, but I don't think she can like make that jump anyways. Oh, she could make that jump, but I don't think she could like do anything but kind of scrabble and knock things over. Yeah, I don't think she wants to make that exactly. jump more specifically. She Hi funny Kiki. She was an outdoor girl for a long time mm -hmm. so she like i saw her when i was first like befriending her she would like just run to a tree and like rocket up the entire tree in like two seconds she could jump up and onto anything in this apartment she wants she just doesn't care yeah that seems right she, okay. she's a very well-behaved cat but it's because she chooses to be mm -hmm. if you guys want to get on your suck mode Get your slurping on. Yeah, Kiki don't care. All right, we gotta go. Come along now. We have a frog to get revenge on. This man killed your brothers. Make him pay. Ooh, ouch. I thought I was clear of that. You know what? I'm gonna call a mulligan on today, actually. We can do this better. I've decided. I've decided. I figured, okay, I I lost some boys at the start to a tactical misplay. I can live with that, but like, that's just kind of like, nah, let's get a redo on that one specifically. <laughs> So here's what we're gonna do, is picking them. Picking them. Picking them. Picking them. <laughs> now, now that we're sitting down again, the cat has realized, Oh, it's time to calm down now. Okay, I sit so nicely on my perch. Yay! She loves her perch. She does. She's a sweet little cat. Mm -hmm. Come on, boys, catch up. It's time for a date with destiny. And a frog. No longer will we give that frog the benefit of the doubt. The frog must go. I'm getting better at, like, identifying the visual tales on the frog. Oh, oh, uh-oh! Wasn't fast enough that time. Okay, come on. I got greedy there. There we go, now. Die. Okay. 
Now. The gate. Open. Now. Beat this shit to death in peace. Let's go get uh, more bomb guys. By which I mean some bomb guys at all. Literally any bomb guys. Literally any number of bomb guys. Let's get bombing. Let's go golfing. Now I did say one guy was just like somewhere. There? How the fuck? Hey man. Oh, right, because there was a, a flower guy that died. Ah. And so you got sprouted there. Hey man. Come along. It's wonderful to meet you. Welcome to the world. Welcome to the world. Don't worry about the frogs. Worry a little bit about the frogs. Maybe worry a lot about the frogs. A healthy amount of worry about the frogs is good. All right. Let's go get our bombs. All right. We need like two here. No. Ugh. Okay. One. I'm gonna do this slowly because I'm worried about the other ones. There we go. Was there not another wall? Uh, there was the like breakable one. You could you could ease that out a little with the bombs. Right. And there was the other one like around the other way. Mm -hmm. But this seems I don't know. This feels priority to me. To be honest. Yep. Might as well start bombing this one. Okay, that one's open. We'll get you on that. What? What? Boys! Why were you still with me? Get out! Oh! I'm mad about that. I'm mad about that. I literally thought they were out of my party. Yeah, I thought you had them all. You. Ugh. Fucking whatever, man. I'll take the loss. That's frustrating. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. Thank you, Cripes. Yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> good timing, buddy. For the 37 month resub. Oh, we're picking. <laughs> we're gonna be picking a few men today. It's my zirconium rotor. This is made from rust-proof zirconium, which is particularly suited to making spaceship parts. I had to pay a lot extra to have this installed. And I suspect the mechanic overcharged me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Healing Mind, for the 25 months. All right. We need more. Let's get more. Hey, here's what we're gonna do is you're gonna come with me and stay away from the damn water. You are going back in your hole. Yes, you are. You're going home. Is zirconium a metal for Hokitadins? It's it's a real metal. Okay, you're going in. Good, good, good. He is get... some guy's dad character. He has two kids. Okay. What's special about red and yellow Pikmin? Red Pikmin do more damage or are immune to fire. Yellow Pikmin can pick up bomb rocks. And... Uh, uh, you can throw them higher. And you can throw them higher, right. Okay. Some of you buggers... Get this. Get these. Take these home. Get some more blue guys again. There we go. Okay. Guess you come help your brothers. Why are you going this way? This is this is danger way. This is this is danger way. Why go this way? We love danger zone. We found another part. At last. My pilot seat! Once I get this installed, my cockpit will finally be back in order. Soon, my ship will be starting to look more and more like the dolphin of old. Ah, oh, the memories. Where, where did this five capsule come from? Oh, did they drag it with them? They must have. They must have. Damn grub. Okay, don't you hurt my boys. You're all going the right way, so keep on going. Thank you, Inverted Arrow. 
for uh, the gift sub that went out to Rainbow Fission. Thank you very much. Real generous of you. All right, you were on Suck Addiction, and so you were just sucking on, slurping on that thing. Let's get some more blues. Come on out. Off we go. You boys keep on trucking, keep on bringing that in. Good job, boys. Proud of you, boys? I'm gonna keep these boys away so they can actually stay with me, because I want them to stay with me. Thank you, Wesley. For the 30 on month resub. Picking them! Picking them! Okay, you guys keep on slapping that. The frog is fully in the family, I don't suppose. Little bit. It's good. Okay. Alright. We've all got this stuff. There's more bomb rocks over there if we can unlock that area, so. We do need those. You guys wanna you wanna get this? There we go. That's one part in! Yeah, we're probably gonna get two parts today. Do -do 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 -do. I hope so. It looks like we will. Science part two? Yeah! Made of rust-proof zirconium. It is as shiny as new. Despite being left out in this planet's harsh elements. Twenty-two out of thirty. Seven more parts for an upgrade. Okay. They're going this way for some reason. Okay, you guys wanna... You guys wanna go bug mode? You guys wanna go bug mode, please? Please attack the damn bug! I, I, I know about the pilot seat game I'm trying to throw, Fickman! I'm a little stressed out that they keep trying to go this way. <laughs> Frankly. What is over this way? That's like the fucking weird ass long way. No, no, no. You guys break this damn door. Break this damn door so we can get all our stuff home. Please? Hey man, do you wanna? I can do it. No, can no, do it. no, 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 man. You, uh, there we go. Oh. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna Split you up, color-wise. All blue guys. Come along. Begin carrying. Why are you still going this way? Okay, no, they're going that way. Okay. You, you're you also going that way. Good, 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 good. They good. just take a long-ass terrifying loop down it. Yeah! It's scaring the shit out of me, frankly. All right, you guys grab all that. Move along now. Okay. And let's scout out a little bit while we're here. So we've got a bridge that we want to knock down. So we should start bringing some guys for that. We want to bring some yellows for that, I reckon. We got another wall that don't need bombs. Yeah. There's some scary guys. There's some fire. Yep. Okay. We got a bunch of blues still here. So let's put them away. Good job not dying, boys. Great work, boys. Proud of you, boys. We're getting two parts today, and we're gonna make some progress in some other bits. Yeah. Look at that, only halfway through the day. Not bad. Yeah, we're doing good today. Yo, thank you, Pyra, for the 23 month resub. Um, I'm, 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 I'm feeling the Dandori, I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm feeling it. Let's bring uh, 20, and then we'll get some reds. Go with that. Because I see some fire hazards around here that I want to be careful of, so. Mm -hmm. Oh lord, there are some fire hazards. Oh, there's plenty of hazards, I tell you. Alright, all yous coming on out here. Let's, uh... Wait, wait for your brother to pass. Salute! <laughs> That's, the screen went black and I got scared for a second. Me too! <laughs> Picturing this in the cockpit, images of me lifting off into space begin fill to fill in my taxed brain. It fills me with inspiration once again. Twenty-three out of thirty, not bad, not bad. Okay, one single yellow guy is going behind to help out with that. Sure, whatever. Do you wanna? There we go. Huh? She got scared. 
scared of the oven, I think. Why? Because it's a little bit reflective. Uh-huh. All right. Sucking that nectar out. Give her a slurp, boys. All right. Yellows? They are not paying attention. Okay, I gotta throw them to the side of it, I guess. Let's, uh... Separate. Okay, good. The reds can go on that. Can you... Please? There. There we go. That'll get him on that. Okay. You all do that. You guys go on breaking this down again. You guys go help out with this. Some more. Help your brothers. Help your brothers. Uh, thank you, Rats Off to you for that brand new sub. Good name. Appreciate yeah. the resub. Rats Off to you indeed. Sun's coming on down, so let's uh put these boys to bed. Probably want to get some more reds just because uh. I see fire around there specifically, so. Off to bed, you guys go. I guess we can put these yellows away as well. You can take it. Yeah, yeah. Bring them on out. It's finally time. Boys. For the red boys to party again. It's been a while since we really did much with them. Yeah, there's been too many water hazards. Mm -hmm. And they love to fall off of bridges for fun. They do, and I hate it! It's their favorite activity. It is their favorite activity. Today is Monday, which means Red Pikmin get to fall off a Graham Cracker bridge. It is their favorite activity. Oh shit, it is Monday. It is Monday, yeah. Oh, I'm just saying that as a joke. <laughs> Honey, I never know what day it is, you know that. It's Monday. It's Monday. And don't get to slick a graham cracker. Favorite activity. Kill, kill. Hey, slapping on that shit, slapping on that shit. Alright. You guys can bring that on back if you wanna. Uh, you're going a scary way. You're going a real scary way. Okay. It's all fine. It's all fine. Nothing bad happened. Nothing bad is going on. Let's make sure I've got all my boys. I think I do here. All right. Slap the butthole. You remember the deal? Hmm. This is a uh, risky bisky here. But I can see how much damage I can do. Quite a bit. There are gonna be some losses given how late I'm doing this. But I mean, hey, it's progress. We are maybe losing a couple, unfortunately. Great progress has been made today. Uh huh. All right, we're all safe. <laughs> Didn't realize this enemy was from the first game. I think this enemy specifically, like, I, I think Bugs was talking about this. How like. 
this enemy only kind of appears in this one for the longest time, and like things related to it show up in other ones. And so then it like finally showed up again in four, and so everyone was like freaking out about it. Or something like that. Maybe I'm misremembering. That sounds right to me. We? None of them were missing. My god. We had some deaths, but. Nineteen days since impact. I wonder if I shall ever be able to escape from this world. How much suffering must I endure before I can finally see my family back home again? <sighs> Still, when my heart grows too heavy, I take comfort in my efforts. I will get home, or I will expire trying. This is such a cute little picture. I am addicted to Olimar's damn dog. <laughs> It, it it explains a lot about why when he's like going out classifying like bulb orbs and stuff he's like oh that's a damn grub dog because it looks like his dog <laughs> that's what dogs look like <laughs> yeah you know dogs them bipedal things with the ears and the stock eyes yeah yeah dogs we've all seen them <laughs> they got two legs and an arthropod carapace we know them also it it it, it is very sweet that he's out here like man I'm trying my damnedest to get home, and he's just thinking about his family. Sometimes his family is his Pikmin. Sometimes his family is the folks back home. Olimar is more serious than you really thought? Dude, like, everyone is like, oh yeah, he's like the nerd scientist guy. No, he's a fucking trucker who loves his- who, like, thinks about his family and how much he misses them and doesn't want to die all the time. It's great. And also he likes doing a little bit of xenobiology on the side. You know, you gotta have something- you gotta have an audio- <laughs> You gotta have a hobby. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, we sprouted 27 and only lost 14. The numbers are going up. I love when numbers go up. Honestly, me too. That's why I play idle games. <laughs> <laughs> Smile. All right. Sad they didn't give Ochi and Moss eye stocks. I mean, it could have been cute. It could have been cool, but those are like different types of dogs, ain't they? Yeah. Picking them. Picking them, by the way. Literally picking them so I can put them away. I want maximum red boys. Okay. I, I go to bed. I remember reading. Literally wait. Hang on. Sorry. Okay. Wait for them to go in. Nice. 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 We're nice. Back, nice. Baby. Nice. We're nice. So nice. Back. nice. 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 You, you you describe him as a hobbyist biologist, Frankie, and, like, that's categorically true, but also it's like saying, oh, yeah, you know, it's like finding a dude in a bar who's like, yeah, you know, uh, I'm into mathematics as, like, a hobby, and dude just straight up has, like, the solution to a hypothesis that has been stumping people for years, just written on a fucking bar napkin. <laughs> like, technically true. He doesn't do it for money. This is for fun. He's just very, very good at it for fun. Uh-huh. Alright, boys. Begin the slurping. Yay! Yay! Everyone in, everyone in! Yay! Everyone pass the damn door, please! I'm trying to navigate you suckers past all the fucking water here! File in, file in, file in! All right. I think it undid all the damage, but eh. almost certainly. We did a ton of damage to this thing really quickly, so like, I'm not fussed. The fact that we got like two ghosts of the way down after the fucking sunset bell means uh, we should be fine. Yep. Not that worried. Was much fewer Pikmin. Not worried. Hey boys. All right. Turn turn around. Turn turn around. Please please turn around. You bitch! <laughs> he, he knows what happens if he does! What? What were you What are you shooting? Is there like one Pikmin on the other side? Okay. I'm just gonna do this and hope for the best. Come on. 
There we go. Tactics. You are literally wasting my time. You rude bitch. Come along now. My boys. That dude just stood there and didn't get shot. That was great. <laughs> the bravest Pikmin we've ever had. Get him, boys. All right, easy. I've discovered the bow spirit. With this piece installed, my ship should regain some of its sleek shape. Alright. Where are you suckers taking this? Hopefully down a normal person way. It seems to be down a normal person way, but... You want us to take this through the river, yeah, boss? Oh, I could have just sent all my reds up here and, like, avoided... Having to worry about the water. I see, I see. You were brave though. Okay. They're going they're they're going a normal person way. Thank God. They're just taking the biggest possible U-turn about it. Yes, they are. Hmm. Okay, let's do something daring here. All right, bud. All right, bud. All right, man. Oh, got a mouthful of them. Hey, do you guys want to get off the mouth, though? Maybe get on the butthole? Get on the mouthhole? Yeah? Yeah, boss? No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, well... These brave little fools have decided to do, uh, Pikmin things. So perhaps this is a comeback with a warrant situation. Let's do that. Let's go get more. Let's go get some of your brothers. Uh-huh. Everything is going fine here. Help your brothers, help your brothers. You survived, help your brothers. Let's get you goons out here, all right. All you guys are doing A-OK. -okay. And hey, you gave the onion a corpse to refill your fallen brothers. We sure did. Picking them. Okay, so I'm gonna send the boys in to start clearing that area out. Wondering if I should maybe go back to Blue Pikmin there, though. Just because there, there is water hazards around there. On the one hand, the red boys are gonna hit things much harder. On the other hand, they love drowning. They literally love drowning, and I'm bad at getting them to not drown. They literally are addicted to it. The so-called face of the dolphin. In point of fact, I designed it. Aw, cute! Aww. He made a custom part for his boat! Aw, he made the funny cap! This dude loves his truck. He loves his truck so much! This dude loves his truck. It's so cute. Okay, are there any uh, left on the map? No, okay. We've got parts up there near the water. We've got one part over there. Which we should probably bring some yellows for to start bombing it open, just for the sake of easy, easier access. So let's get some yellows out. We can't have the all of our truck nuts conversation every stream. We cannot. Yes, Olimar might have truck. Well, probably not truck nuts. I don't think he's the sort to have nuts, but he would have embellishments. Truck, tr truck nuts is probably something that like his kid would get him as a gift. Like, hey dad, I know you like your truck. I thought you'd like this. Ha <laughs> ha. And he would put it on because he loves his children. Well, my son did a nice thing for me, so. Okay. Yeah, you guys can you guys can suck. You're actually <laughs> being good, not following your bomb brothers. Okay. Maybe the suck distraction is good this time, actually. Okay. No, no, no. Just you. Just you, you brave bastard. Okay. Let's bring along... Let's bring some more, just so we have, like, a fighting force. Mm -hmm. But I'm... There's more bombs over there, so let's... I, 
I changed my mind. Uh, Cause we have a lot of these uh, ball bears to take care of. I think they're ball bears. All right, come on out. Let's get you on the bridge. All aboard. All aboard. Everyone on board. There we go. We're just going to be careful taking the yellows through the, uh, the wall of fire. Yeah, yeah. It'll be all right. I think. I hope. I bet. They, they do love lighting themselves on fire. Listen, they sure do, but... But... Stick to the wall. Just stick to the wall. Boys. Just stick to the wall. Boys. Okay. Noted. Next time, don't take the yellows through here. <laughs> Little bit of trouble for what it's worth. Begin Operation Bull Bear! Begin Operation Bear Explode! Jump in his mouth, boys? No! There we go. He's like falling over, stumbling on himself now. We got him! Alright. Pick up the remains. More. We have a tiny fighting force now. Hmm. And a lot of bears. Let's see. And a lot of bears. We're gonna have to clear some of this out. So let's get on bear removal duty. There's also that fucking fucking and sucking hog over there. Ooh, biting me, biting me. We got one. Get the little ones, get the little ones. This is a little bit of a suicide mission. I'm sorry, guys. I made a mistake. I probably shouldn't have led them here like this, but I sure did. Quick, quick, quick! Grab the corpse! Run! Well, I'm gonna grab groceries really fast. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we did a grocery order. Okay. Alright, well the Pikmin are safe and they got away. That's what matters most. Hey man, you want me? You want me? You want me? See ya! Alright. Did the numbers just go down over there? I didn't notice. Oh no, I think it's the number went up because we got more from the corpses. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Let's go replenish. This is Pikmin 1? Yeah, it's what the stream is on the category. <laughs> you can You can look at that, you know? The information about what the video game is, is in fact on your screen. This is Time Splitters 2? I hope not. That'd be fucked. The textures do look crisp in the difference in the distance, don't they? Hmm. Yeah? Hi. 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 And let's get some of our yellows with us. More. 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 
I get funny stuff for Rita. Well, that's uh, much appreciated. Okay, you guys want to fucking dig at this, whatever. Get you some nectar, might as well. Rest of yous, come on over. Actually, wait, no, you guys already have flowers. Get some of yous on the sucking duty. Drink that up, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get you powered. Thank you, Tracks the Trash Wizard. Much appreciated. Okay, let's get you split off into colors. You guys go up here. Up to the bridge. Alright, you guys. We did those bombs already today. You guys are going up, right? You guys... Going up? Are, are, you, are you going up? Thank you? Thank you? I don't know why they did that. That was weird. Just hanging out. Just hanging out. I saw another skull around here somewhere. Whereabouts was it? Here. Okay. Ah, okay. Well, not worth it right now. We know where they are, though. And we did good on parts today. We got rid of some bears, we got a part, and we cleared out bears. Tomorrow we will get more progress. Everything will be awesome. I think tomorrow we should be able to open up the, uh, the damn bad door. Mm -hmm. 94? Did- Some of them just got erased from the world. What? Where did they go? <laughs> okay, well, Pikmin one moment. <laughs> yeah, weren't we talking last time about how sometimes they just fall through the world and then they disappear? Pikmin one moment. <laughs> Literally all of them were here with me. All of them were in the same area. There was no enemies here. Pikmin one moment. <laughs> 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 Fucking whatever. Sacrifice to the gods. I'm not trying to do a deathless run. <laughs> for better or for worse. They went to see Mamuda. <laughs> oh, Mamuda, my friend. It's good to see famous Mamuda. Oh, famous Muda. They just got old and passed away, yeah. <laughs> you hate to see it, it's truly sad. This game might have some crunch to it. Nah, what makes you say that? Nah, this game's smooth as silk, smooth as butter. No problems in Pikmin 1. 20 days since impact. The creatures of this planet breathe a deadly poisonous gas, oxygen. At present, my spacesuit can filter the oxygen out. But if the batteries for my life support system should fail, I shudder to think about it. All right, six parts remaining. We have 10 days. We are making decent time, but we do gotta hustle a little. We do not, in fact, want Olimar to die in space. Generally, I don't want anyone to die in space. That's true. <laughs> Thank That's you. Especially Olimar. Yo, Bulborbs with the five month resub, let's go. Let's fucking go. Dude, a Bulbarbs real life chat. dragon is in my chat, hanging out. That's awesome. What does Olimar breathe? I don't know if it's actually ever specified. It's just oxygen is poisonous to him. Oxygen is highly corrosive in general. Mm -hmm. It is a miracle that we are able to live on an oxygen rich planet. Uh huh. It's quite awesome. Ooh, and all those guys are respawn too. Or the little ones have at least, which is not the worst. I guess the the like the big old ball bears like. Ooh, I should have brought more boys. Punch, 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 punch! Help him out! Help him out! There we go. Okay, well. Go and replenish. We'll have to get more. We'll have to get more. All right, more guys coming on in. It's 
Internal combustion engines do in fact breathe oxygen. It's true. Famously doing this. Okay. All you fuckers and suckers out here, let's go. And the number is going up. You love to see it. Okay, well, you guys can do that. There's there's yeah, certainly grass thank there. Thank you, actually. That's a great thing you've done. You guys uh, keep on trucking, okay? Why are you not putting your bomb down? There we go. I'm one of these days I'm going to hit the right button. Okay. I love how cubical this map is. It's so fucking weird. Yeah. It it feels like very inorganic compared to like most of the other maps we've been to. Okay. Let's you know what? Let's put the yellow ones away for now. Focus entirely on uh, Murder Squadron. Come on back. Go for a nap. And let's get the red boys. <laughs> we need to ramp up oxygen production. We need giant insects and arthropods again. That's a bold vision. That's a bold vision. You're out here, you're at Congress, you're asking them to consider hyper oxygen at Earth plan. It won't be cool to see giant bugs again. It won't work, but it would be cool. Exactly. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Thank you for the tip. I don't trust like that. <laughs> I've been tricked before and God willing, I will not be tricked again, but thank you for the tip. I've never been tricked before, by the way. I've never been tricked before. Not in my life. Hit that like button if you've never been tricked. Hit that tip button if you've never been tricked. Straight up never been tricked. Trickmen. Tricking them. Hit that subscribe button if you've never been tricked. Dude, if you've never been tricked in your entire life, subscribe to my channel. Stop! You guys are literally flower mode already! What sips? Cut it out! Sipping them. There we go. All right, ball bear dead. Ooh. Didn't go half bad. Part four. The swarm. Get in there. We have so many of them. All right. You suckers get over here. Why don't you? Okay. The little ones are down. Let's get the last little one down. Yo, I think you started for the raid. Uh, shit's happening. Picking them! Picking them! I'm out here punching these bears. You know how it is. Picking them. Okay. Down you fucking go. Down, down you go! I'm punching you! All right. Ball bear down. Oh, there's just one little guy trying to move that big guy. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. You are a fool for this. Can you guys, can you guys? Can you, can you guys? Thank you. Get out of there, man. Get, get out of there, man! Come on, boys. All right. We need to go get bomb rocks. And then we're off to the races. And then we have this whole other area open to us. I can just take the shortcut home. I can go that way. Hey, we had a couple stragglers, too. Hey, hey! <laughs> yeah, they love to get stuck on the walls. Uh, come on down. All right. You guys go away. How's everyone enjoying the thrill of the hunt? Oh, I feel fucking alive, I do. <laughs> Picking them. Picking them. That's too many. Let's get like... 10. Off we go. 
I don't need a ton of them, ton of them. Just need enough for some bombs. Yep. I need some bombs. You want it? It's yours, my friend. And like, just ten of them is really easy to get across here. That's nothing. Look at them, they're so small. Yeah! Walking them. Walking them. Oh yeah, and there's this whole fucking swampland ass. Uh-huh. We got water dump- we got water dumple central. <laughs> hey, you too. There are so many bombs in here too, so like... I think- I think we'll be okay. This might be it. This might be the run. I think we'll be alright. Let's open her up. Dear god, I thought that one was still alive and I got scared. Uh-huh! Okay, so... And having this shortcut open will make getting back here so much faster. Okay, it's open. Um... And we have, like, ramps and stuff up here that we can navigate, but... Let's... Oh, wait, no. Why am I going the long way? I literally just unlocked the short way. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's put all these away. Let's get some more yellows and blues. Because we still have tons of reds. Well, let's replenish the yellows and blues numbers. While well, you guys go back in. Do you think Olimar would be obsessed with watching nature documentaries? Man's out here writing them, frankly. Oh, we have a ton of blues. Never mind. Let's get some yellows and reds then, number-wise. Come on out. Let's replenish our yellows. Grab these bulbers. All right, boys, time to carry a bear. You boys remember how to carry bears, right? One for you. All right. Carry him home. Let's get some blues and go for an explore. Time to go swimming. Wee! 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 Yay! Wee! Yahoo! Wee! Wee! All right. Come on and catch up, boys. Why are you getting in the tiny hole there? Oh. Stay out of the tiny hole. Avoid the tiny hole. Oh. Alright, let's go in this tiny hole instead. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. What's in there? That's a bridge. Okay. That's a way out. Okay, you guys can go on suck duty if you want. Let's send some up here. Bunch of yous are gonna fall. That's fine. That's probably fine. Let's see. Yeah, because there's this one up here. Let's see. That looks like it might be a yellow guy's. Ooh, yeah, that's a yellow guy's one. All right, let's... Well, let's bring them all in here and they can open up the way out. Oh, camera. Let's see. Can't... can't... Oh, the camera does not like this specific area. Get him on the bridge, get him on the bridge. We'll come back with yellows and probably be able to do it today. Yeah, the yellows are replenishing themselves as we speak. Please get on the please get on the bridge. It's so hard to see in this damn asshole. And the zoom in doesn't help in this area. Are you, are you guys on? Are you guys on? Please? Please. There we go. Okay. Now I have to find my- there we go. My damn asshole. Alright. Let's explore... some other bits. We can almost come back for that tomorrow. We know where it is. Yeah. There are other things over here. There's a lot over here. Yeah, let's- let's- let's scout a bit. We got the nasty suck and blow hog. Sorry, we're suck and blow. Maybe I simply stay away from you. There's this bit up here. But I think what it wants us to do is get. Hmm. 
because I don't think I can... Yeah, this is a puzzle. This is a puzzle and I know the answer. Actually, no, let's get these damn dumples clear. Oh, water dumples. All right, grab the goods. Bully this hog. Fuck this hog for real. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It's not even summer blow. Like, it's- it- Every time we've encountered one of these, it's like, this is the first time I've actually seen it attack in this run, which is a little funny. And it's only because it is halfway dead. Uh-huh. Like, the hardest part has been chasing it down to get the initial hits in. Okay, well... He will not be bothering us any longer. This is the main thing. As long as we can, you know, get the coup de gras here. There we go. And he blows away! Good job, boys. Oh! Hey, you know what? Yeah, I'll take some pellets. The one. Let's get the blue one at least. Let's go. Let's go. Probably there's one guy by the yellow flower. Yeah, I see. Okay, I wasn't sure. I got scared. Mm hmm. It's okay. It's, uh, oh, right, that guy. Let me nab him. Let me nab him. I see what you mean now by, by the yellow flower. I don't think we got any parts today, but we have the, the way cleared for like two or three, so yeah. I feel good about that. I know what to do tomorrow. I don't think we're gonna get this in time, so let's just go. No! Boys! Come the fuck on. It Dude. It's not sucking hour. L literally hurry up! You bitch! Stay with dad, stay with dad. Come along now. Go to bed. Go to bed. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. At the very least, if we have any losses, they will be minimal. <laughs> and they will not be because of our negligence. <laughs> Even as adult, these time limit style games make you anxious. I get that, but the, the time limit in Pikmin 1 is relatively generous and also is part of the fun IMO. Uh, if you don't like the time limit, the other games are so much more generous in that regard. You could simply play the others if you're interested. We are losing at least one. Poor oh, bugger, okay. where were you? Where the fuck were you? I don't know. 21 days since impact. Sheer grub. Today, I've learned something new about these creatures' behavioral patterns. They are very vexing bugs. They chew apart the bridges that the Pikmin build. All the effort the poor Pikmin went to. I must watch for these pests. Damn, I did not know. Yes, did I. They tore down bridges. All right. No parts today. Nine days remaining. Six parts remaining. We know two. We know two, and we have a general location for a third. We got this. We also got to get up and have a stretch. It's break Jesus time again. Jesus Christ, is it a break time already? Yeah, usually a day is like 30 or so minutes, so that makes sense. Damn. Uh, get up, have yourself a stretch, maybe get a drink or a snack. I'm just gonna be running ads for like three minutes, so uh, get away from your computer or phone for a bit. We'll see you real soon.
Um, sweet little baby Kiki is curled up in her little basket, asleep, comfy. Um, and normally when she's like that, when I walk by, she'll like jerk her head up like, oh shit, someone's coming, what the? And then realize, oh, it's just you, okay, and go back to bed. This time she didn't even flinch at all. She just, o- she just opened up her eyes a little bit and went back to sleep. And then Holly knelt down to give her a little pat on the head and she didn't even stir, she didn't even flinch, she just went, oh. She just closed her little eyes! Animal! She loves both her mamas very much. She does. It's sweet. I'm glad that she likes me. I'm glad that she's become more more and more comfortable around me as time goes on. Alright, let's pull the chat back up so I can see it. And then let's get back to it. Ding, 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 ding! Time to get them parts. Time to picking them. Picking them. Ooh, and we got a bunch growing too. Nice. Yeah, we're in surprisingly good shape. Yeah, we're doing all right. Also, I see that one piece all the way over there. Hang on. I getting idea. Did we pick any? Oh, we picked a lot. We're picking them. We're picking them. We're fucking picking them. Let's get... a bunch out. Go over this away. Nope, come on up. Boys and begging ya. Okay, no, that is a uh, comeback with yellow ones. Okay. It's gonna be a very careful comeback with yellow ones. Yeah. Let's, uh... Okay, you guys are scared, so whatever. You can stay scared. You can die scared about it. They're just babies and they go, ah, ah! Let's try something. And if it goes bad... We can always come, we can always restart the day. It's early enough that we won't have lost too much. Uh-huh. Boys, boys, hey, hey. boys, begging you. Ah, it's already happening. Boys. I guess I could always do this. Let me, let me, okay. Today is a test run. Let's see what we need. We need 20. All right. Yeah. It might genuinely, it's going to be time consuming. It might genuinely be safest just to bring yellows in very small batches. You know what? That's a good idea. Let's do them 10 at a time. That's the wrong area. Well, hang on. We'll, we'll continue. And then... <laughs> No, no, no. Wrong area. We're just gonna go say hi to Mamuda for a day. No, no, no. Is the Distant Spring the only area that gets reused in two? No, a bunch of them get reused in two, if I remember right. I think so, yeah. Like, a, a bunch of them are, like, the same area from one, but, like, recontextualized in some way or another. Okay. Back here we go. The Distant Spring. The distant spingers. Now, hang on a sec. I'm almost. I'm also seeing. Um. Could I get them up there? Yes, but then I wouldn't be able to get up there. Okay, whatever. We're, we're burning daylight. But it was worth a peek. Picking them. That's fun. That's fun. All right. Hmm. 
Careful now, careful now, careful now, boys. Alright? More? They're calling me the genius of Pikmin. They're calling me the genius of Pikmin! We'll come back with two. We'll come back with three. I'm sad. Oh, I thought I could get him through. Frankly, I expected that to go worse. Ah, I suppose. The boys, they love jumping into the water. What do yellow Pikmin do again? They're very light, and they can pick up bomb rocks. Uh, in the other games, they also have electric powers, but not in this one. They hadn't invented electricity yet, you need to understand. They really hadn't. Okay. Here they come. What? What? Boys! Boys, why? Oh my god. Boys, why the fuck would you do that? There was a pathway. Boys, you could have just stepped in the opposite direction. Boys! <laughs> Boys! <laughs> May we never forget these brave 20 Pikmin. <laughs> Why did they do that? No! Boys. There's there's a 20 pellet. We can get more. We can get more. But my god, I... Oh. Precept 1. Complete the mission. Precept 2. Protect the captain. <laughs> Why do they love swimming? Boys. This robotic marvel can fix just about anything in the ship that's broken. Well, that's good, because I get terribly bored fixing little glitches. Oh, can I- can I throw them? No. Oh, boys. That's tragic. Boys. Oh my god. Oh, they bravely cleared a path for their blue brethren. They sure fucking did. They stupidly cleared a path for their blue brethren. These poor brave bastards chose this. They had several other choices, and yet... They had so many other choices. There we go. Alright. Bring it on home. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. We need oh. to get some more yellows. We need, to, we, need, we need to move on. We need to keep going. That can't have been the intended solution, and yet... It, it worked, but at what cost? <laughs> Why would it let us do that? Because it's Pikmin. Because it's Pikmin. Okay, so. Let's see if 20 is enough. They're calling me the genius of Pikmin. They're still calling me the genius of Pikmin <laughs> in spite of this. Listen, the fault was not on you there. The fault was on those 20 beautiful, brave boys just jumping into the river. They did do that. All right, part retrieved. <sighs> do -do 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 -do. Repair type bolt. This looks like an ordinary bolt, but it's actually a repair robot. All right, 25 out of 30. And I think we can probably get two more today. Frankly. Yeah. At minimum, we can get one. Ideally, we can get two. I have a good feeling. So it's 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 up here, right? Yeah, it was at the, at the top of the big... Check the... Yeah, it's up there, up there. Okay, so let's... Okay, and then we gotta get up there. So let's go and get up there. Every, like, moment I hear the fucking panic battle music play, I get, like, so scared. Mm -hmm. That just one second of it, like, oh, fuck, what's going on? What now? Okay, well, some of them fell. I found my UV lamp! The only problem with this handheld light is that it can be too bright at times. 
I have to remember to wear my sun visor whenever I look into it. That's scary. Okay. Can I go a higher up level? Yes, I can. What, why did she all scatter? Why did it buffer an input there? Okay. Okay. At least I think I can go a higher up level there. Hang on. Is Olimar a plant? No, he's a dad. Dads are kind of like plants, but don't get too confused. Wait, so no. How do I... Okay. Sure. That can't be it. And yet... How the hell else would I do this? There's no other ramps that I can really see. Is this actually the solution? Is there- a hey, chat, does anyone remember this one? <laughs> is this just how you do it, or is there, like, something I'm missing? Oh, there's, oh, there's like, a little maze there. Hang on. Maybe? This maze is like a maze. If you're too close to the wall, they won't go as high. Okay. So you have to okay. back a little bit. Okay. Everyone hates getting this part. Yeah, I have- I'm having, like, vague memories. Okay, this is gonna suck a little. But we got it. Or we get it. I shouldn't have failed there. Wait, no, I needed to, so get them up there. Yeah, some of them fell down. Hang on. Uh, camera? Camera? Build the bridge. Build build the bridge. And then take the bridge. Use the damn bridge. Please. Begging you. Okay, so just don't be right up against the wall. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. That... Eh, pick me one moment, you know? also says, Don't put this here to test Olimar before assuming him to heaven as the manager. I see. There we go. No. That's ten. Okay, that's all we need. Why did it buffer an input? <laughs> okay. It loves doing that on that slope. Specifically just on that area. Okay, build the bridge. And then for part three, I'm going to need to get uh, blue guys and do a puzzle with them. Okay. On the bridge. They're all on the bridge. Good, good, good. Up we go. Uppy daisy. It's, it's also a little unfortunate that you can't really see how many you need till it's down, but like, it's a small part, so I kind of guess like, okay, it's small. I've got... You fell back in the damn hole. Man, put you away. Put you guys away. Put this shit away, man. Let's let's get this part fucking sorted and get these yellows back in back in their box, and then we can go into the swamp with the blue guys. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Da -da 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 -da. I feel like Could I have zoomed out the camera to see? I think I'm max zoomed out right now, and even then, like, I've had issues before where, um, things that are way high up or way close, even when I zoom out, I still can't see them, so. Mm -hmm. This hand- Oh, right, there's a top-down view, isn't there? I forgot. I always forget it's a thing. You can press the Z button for that. This handy light is great for tanning, but it doesn't seem to have any relation to the dolphin's fight capabilities. I doubt that it will affect my escape from this planet. Perhaps there are other parts like this as well. Shit, did I really need all of this? Ah, oh, fuck, I ate, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. Boys, you are so good at dying, please go home. Okay. Go to bed. Let's go here. We're out here. Oh no, I wasn't zoomed out all the way. Okay, I thought I was. Not all the way. Yeah, whatever. Nope, nope. You are all flowers already. Well, no. Most of you are, but you know what I mean.
Do you guys want to? I'm trying not to whistle the ones that are already up there. Mm -hmm. Boys. Hey, man. Let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about it. You're killing your father, you know, boys. <laughs> hey, man, let's talk about it. All of ours dying, boys. <laughs> hey, man, we're losing daylight here. Let's talk about it. Is this easier from the other side? I feel like probably not, but worth a try. I swear to God. I am the world's saddest woman in all of America. Okay. And now, picking them. I hope I only needed 20. I suppose. We did get two today, so... Damn, I must be a genius! Double demon fang! Alright, now. Stop immediately. I found my Kronos reactor! Using strange new technology, this machine is able to warp the space-time continuum and turn it into energy. I am constantly amazed at how many mysteries are locked inside the parts of my ship. Alright, boys. N no, no. Boys. You're, you're, you're going too high. What are you- Boys, I am fucking begging you. They probably want you to go in, like, top-down mode for this bit. There we go. Nope, even then, okay. You guys wanna- you guys wanna go in my machine as well, please? Thank you. Okay. Picking them. They do love to be chucked into this thing. It's, um... We'll, we'll, we'll get to it later, but they do very much imply, like, yeah, the candy pop bulbs are... a type of Pikmin in themselves. Which is interesting. There's gonna be a lot we learn about Pikmin biology. Uh-huh. Are you- there we go. All 20 of them. All right. Check the map. Check the map. Okay, so we got that one. There's one up there. Whoop. There's one up there. Right, there's one guy still missing. Let's try and rescue him. There's one all the way over there that we need a bunch of blues for, it looks like. There's a happy face! Yay! Smiling! Damn, it's been a productive day. Let's rescue the one guy in the tube. Am I going the right way? Yes. Rescuing him, rescuing him, rescuing him, saving him, picking him, picking them. Is this remaster or original? It's original. This is the GameCube original. I'm emulating it. Where? Oh, you're not even there. You're somewhere else. Where'd you go, bud? Where the fuck are you? Are you over here? There you are. All right. Hi, Dad. I went in the hole. I hope you had fun in the hole, bud. Okay. That might be a problem. All right. That might be a problem. Let's get you home and go rescue the part boys. Mm -hmm. We might have to do this again. I don't remember if the parts progress, like, 
resets. Does anyone in chat remember? Does the part stay where it is, or does it get put back to its spawn location? Wait, let's. This is a daring idea, and I can also recover if it doesn't work. But they should stay. Okay. Good enough. However, escort mission. Ten more boys. Help your brothers. Worst comes to worst, we just call them all back, and then we're okay. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay. We got them all. We're going home. Whoo! What a day. Not bad. We got two. We have one very close. And we know the locations of the last two. Yeah, we have two more here. So we're making good time. And then it's just up to the final goddamn area. How far am I? I think I am at 26 now. We'll find out in a minute. We sure will. We still got like a fair couple of days as far as I remember. All right, no one left behind tonight. You love to see it. Twenty. Oh, we have fucking eight days. We're making good time. All right. Twenty-two days since impact. If I can find just four more parts, the dolphin will be fully rebuilt. But time has grown short. I must not flag in my search. Even if I cannot recover every piece, I will not give up. Surely some of these parts aren't absolutely necessary. I can almost see my smiling family. We're so close. We're so close. Never forget the brave 20 yellows that secured us that part. Never forget what they did for us. And the three other brave yellows who decided to go for a swim along the way. Well, those ones were less brave and more um, really, really wanting to work out. You know how it is, sometimes you really want to go for a swim. Mm -hmm. They they were lost in battle, but it was a battle of willpower. <laughs> and God help us, they lost. Uh-huh. Yo, thank you DDM999 for the six months in advance resub. Yo! The fact that the pilot seat is mandatory is pretty damn funny, yeah. Listen, I cannot speak at this moment. My beautiful, darling, patient wife Hi. has swapped chairs for me because I cannot stand to sit in, like, a hardback chair for longer than a couple minutes. Uh-huh. God bless you, honey. Okay, off we go. Let's see. Map. So we've got... That one all the way over there. That's gonna be a trek with a bunch of blues. I'm not sure how to get that one, but let's get a cursory number of blue guys for defense. There we go. Yo! Hell yeah! Glad to hear you've been enjoying the VODs! Thanks for tuning in! All of our scoliosis ending! A fate worse than death, one would argue. You are the bitch of my life! Bastard! Bastard! Die forever! I hate that you're back. I hate that you're back. Okay, you're moving. Whatever. All boys attack! Kill! 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 All boys attack! Oh, right, the part. Yeah, you did it, you did it, you did it, yay! This reactor changes permutations in the space-time continuum into pure energy. Uh, basically, it's like a big rubber band. All right, two more parts to increase our goodies. All right, all boys regroup.
Hey man, hey man. There we go. Kill, kill, slap him, kill. slap him, slap him, slapping him Saturday. Let's go. Saturday. All right. You guys can take this back, sure. Yeah, Let's take the rest of you back that mission. The rest of us back that ass in a circle. Okay, what's over here? We've got the tadpoles, which are whatever. Okay, we've got that bit up there. Can I toss them to that side? I hope. Kinda have to. All right. C camera, 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 work with me, thank you. There we go. Whoop. Come on now. There we go. Fifteen. Do you want do you wanna do you want do you wanna grab on, bud? Hey man. Okay, there we go. We're good. Took him a sec. No, 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 no. Hi, honey. Sometimes I wish the range on this was smaller. <laughs> So, man, <laughs> I keep forgetting this thing is like a fucking hammer and I keep treating it like a scalpel. <laughs> Let's do that again. One more time. Let's do that again. Mm -hmm. She like kind of sat her head off when I started shouting no and then just went, oh, okay, that's not for me. And then her head back down. <laughs> Kitty. All right, boys, bring it on home. Rest of you, we know where the other one lives. I hear that damn bug. All right, round two, round two. You son of a bitch. You want to go again, motherfucker? I know where you live and it's here. Ah, oh, there's sheer grubs here too, man, come on. Get these nasty ass bugs out of here. I kind of want to restart the day already, man. <laughs> oh, also my controller just disconnected. Great, thanks. Thanks. Oh, brother. Please work, please work. Better joy. Do you want to reconnect? There we go. Okay. Once again. Once again. One more time. Picking them. <laughs> day, day three of endless day 22 begins. <laughs> Olimar's never ending time loop nightmare. I'm taking 50 of them this time. I'm taking more. Picking them. Picking them. No, no love and hate here. Only we, love. We, we don't got love and hate on this stream, but the idea of a love and hate meter for any stream is really funny. <laughs> I literally kept thinking that the love and hate meter were like parts of the game, even though I know they're not. I kept just like seeing them near game elements and I was like, is that? <laughs> why, are they, why are they tracking how much you love and hate the things that you're getting? And I remembered. No, that's silly. All right, smacking them. All boys regroup. All boys regroup. Punch the living shit. Punch the living shit. There we go. We win. Quit lounging. <laughs> you guys take her on home. Okay. 
The rest of you, 20. Let's go back. We only need 15. We only need 15. All right, the part. Yay! Da -da 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 -da. Would love to play a game with a love and hate meter? That's probably a thing. That's almost absolutely a thing. Rubber band, by the way. Dating Sims. That's not really a love and hate meter. That's kind of just a thing go up. Come on, come on, boys. Come on, boys. Baldur's Gate 3, good answer. <laughs> Ugh, oh, you bitches! You disgusting bitches! What? Uh. Boys! Begging you! Honey, a little quieter, please. Sorry. Okay, we try again. It's early in the day, whatever. Also, like, the Baldur's Gate thing isn't a love and hate meter, it's you have reputation, which is it goes up or down. That's one thing. Idea, huh? Not really. Okay, there we go. 16, whatever. Going on home. We need to take a squadron of boys and head out to the final area. One more guy. We got one more bit to get. Plenty of the day to do it. And plenty of it! You crack an egg on it! Add in some salted anchovies! You crack an egg on it! Earn 100 free Pikmin! Raw Pikmin! And plenty of them! Kojima would make a guy called Love Hate Man. That's true. That much is that true. That one's true. That, that one's right. That one's indisputable. We've got Hot Coldman. We've got Hungerful Man. We've got Buttfuckman. Play all the hits. It's interesting how, um, in this game, I feel like red Pikmins are the ones you want to try and load up on if you're, like, going into, like, you know, a lot of fighting. Uh, and then yellow Pikmin are kind of just, like, they have utility for some areas and some puzzles. And then I feel like a lot of the time if you're exploring, you just kind of want blues. Yeah, because you never know when you're going to run into some water. I mean, a lot of times you know you're going to water, wa bleh, run into water is the thing. Yeah, like, yellow Pikmin in this game, like, I'm scared to touch them. I feel like they're going to die at a moment's notice. They are. They're going to use a bomb. Okay. So. It is this way. Hmm. Do I want to wait until the others have brought the part? Nah, I think I'll just be brave. I'll just be brave and go. You're so brave. It looks like we're getting a lot of things respawning, which is gonna be- Yeah, we gotta take out the frogs. For one thing. Hey man, you wanna come over? Hey man, you wanna come over? You wanna play with my sons today? I'm ready for you this time, you son of a bitch. You know your game, you know your oh, goddamn. Okay, he didn't do his tell that time. Sure. Okay. Could have been worse. Could have been much worse. We've seen it be worse. <laughs> Could have been worse, true. Pick it up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. All right, suck on that shit. Celebratory sips. Mmm, yummy, yummy, mmm, yummy. Sure, I'll get some more flowers. Thank you, BV728, for that reset. Much appreciated. So, wrong button. Map. We gotta go this way, right? This way. Those are taking stuff back home. A really weird route. But, like, sure. Whatever floats your boat, man. Alright, part's in. Do 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 Number two Ionium Jet. 
The ads for these jets boast that with excellent mileage that's easy on your family budget, this jet will keep your wife smiling and propel you to a happy home life. One more part. I'm actually gonna do something safe and go back and get more Pikmin. We have so much fucking time. Yeah, yeah, we're not even halfway through the day and we got one This fucking thing is back, okay. Yeah, that's literally what I noticed before the frogs and I said, ooh, things are respawning. I, like, don't even need to go that way, so it's whatever. Yeah, this guy means nothing to us. Kinda, yeah. He's just kind of a fucking hog hanging out. Maybe I have to take you out. All boys assault begin. Yeah, this is pretty much a non-threat with how much I have loaded out here. All right, and also they made it back. Let's get a bunch of pellets. Let's load them up. Why not? What if one million pellets directly next to your home? What if we just got a bunch of blues? What if we just got a bunch of blues? Actually, what if it was fine? What if it was fine? In you go, in you go. All right. All men, move out. We're going this way. Basically, as far into the water as you can go. Yep. We will maybe have some frog encounters along the way. We are prepared. We are brave. We are strong. I am brave. I am not scared or terrified. Sure, get some nectar. Why not? Boys. Slurping on that shit that makes Pikmin strong. Awesome. Okay. Two really good messages, one right after the other in the chat. Rosa Ross is saying, I want to be Competo to a Pikmin. And then two messages later, Boyd with, I want to be a Pikmin to a Competo. Yay! Okay, we got a nasty hog here. And some water dumples. I think it might be in the hog, yeah. Okay, well, dumples down. This is like such a non-threat, even if it's like, you know, a bit annoying. More dumples, okay, you're a threat. It's time for dumple strats, it's time for dumple strats. Take him down, boys. Yeah, it exploded. Give us our shit. Hey, there we go! I've found my interstellar radio! Not only does it emit a constant SOS signal, it also broadcasts voices from space that will brighten up my moments of boredom. The dolphin, while comfortable, becomes... Quite a lonely place in the depths of the night. All right. Boys regroup. Beautiful work, boys. Bring them on in. All boys unaccounted for, let's get together. Damn, you boys spread on out. They sure dang did. I mean, I guess you were getting fucking back in blow, but... There we go. Alright. Bring them on in. We're losing Pikmin. Dumples. Fucking dumples. We didn't lose enough to, like, not be able to keep bringing it in, but we lost some. To dumples. I was just dumples. I was really scared they ran into a frog. Same. Charge him. Charge him. That's the power of dumples. I think now there is a frog incident happening. Oh god. But like the part's closer, so this is this is work withable. Yeah. Ooh, you got plenty of time. Yeah. Let's see. Actually, no. I don't think there was a frog incident. I think it's just the ones we lost to the Dumples. It was just Dumples incident. It was just the Dumple incident. Which, hey, it happens. See, there you go! 
I think maybe we were too late to encounter the egg that gives you 100 free Pikmin. I think maybe it despawns after a certain point in this one. Damn, for real? Yeah, there's, um... I guess I should look that up really quick. Um, okay. Egg that gives you 100 free Pikmin despawns after days 15 or so. Okay, yeah. So there's... Uh, if if you're playing this game and you're like, hey, I'm hot shit, I think I'm, I can play it better than Holly. Uh, first of all, you probably can. Respect. You're not also trying to juggle like a chat room and stuff while I'm, I'm trying to entertain people while you're playing. So you can probably do it. Uh, number two, if you get to this level, in that one bit near that hog that gave us the radio, there, like in that little like stone circle area, there's an egg. You can find an egg there. If you let the egg hatch, it gives you an item that gives you 100 free Pikmin. Try it out at home. I was just going to break the egg as a show of defiance because I don't I don't need 100 more Pikmin. I'm good. But like, there's there's an egg there. It can give you 100 free Pikmin if you let it hatch. Interstellar radio. This part will send out a daily SOS signal. I have so little time remaining, though, that I have no option but to continue my search rather than waiting for a rescue party. Having to collect every part is a bit overwhelming. But I get the impression not all parts are needed to fly the ship. I have recovered 29 out of 30 parts, increasing the dolphin's capabilities. My search can now cover a wider area. It's so nice of them to just give to just give it to you like that. Yeah, it's really cool. It's like a nice little reward for like getting through an otherwise pretty oppressive and cruel game like pretty fast like that. It's just hey, good work, kid. Here's some free stuff for you. The remainder of the day is dedicated to increasing the numbers. What if number go up? Luckily we killed a lot of guys. We sure did. Here come Dumples. Here come Dumples. Do 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 do. Here come the Dumples. Do 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 do. <laughs> Thank you, Unofficially Jam, for the 40-month resub. Yeah, it's such a shame that we don't get the awesome egg, but it is what it is. I literally didn't remember if it had, like, a despawning condition or not, so I was like, oh shit, are we not gonna see it? Hey, you boys can have some suck. You earned that suck. You've, you've earned it. After everything we've been through in this damn map, you've earned that much. It's time-based? Yeah, I know. We were literally just talking about it a couple of seconds ago. <laughs> we were just saying that, I know. Alright, in you go. You know, we've got a couple of now. Hey, you know, we're restocking a little bit. It's alright. It okay. This is an all boys go to bed alert. All boys, go to bed. Thank you everyone for continuing to answer the question that was answered several minutes ago. What question? About when the egg despawns. We, we, we already know. This was answered. Alright, go to bed. Begin going to bed. Is there another guy in the starting area besides Mamuda? Yes. So, um, we'll get to that when we do our post-game talk about it. So, the dude that appears... Did it despawn or leave? I think it hatched and left. Frankly. Someone else bit the thing. Someone else got 100 free Pikmin. Yeah. So, so, someone else ate the thing that's worth 100 free Pikmin. And now it's whatever they are. Um, so, in the starting area... Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna start fucking timing people out because we fucking get it. Like, we've, we've talked about this, y'all. You don't have to keep talking about the same thing. Time out. We literally joked about haha, people keep fucking saying it, and people kept fucking saying it! No, I literally told them to stop saying it! <laughs> you don't have to make the same joke that 30,000 other people have made 30,000 times. Anyways, um. I checked the map. There's one guy. Let's go get our one guy. We got time to rescue one guy. Uh huh. He's literally just cooling. So, in the starting area, there's, um. I think it's like, depending if it's like an even day or an odd day, you can either see Mamuda or Gulix. And Gulix is like a whole ass fight that you have to do to get past it. Mamuda's just kind of coolin'. Mamuda's just chillin'. Famous Mamuda, just relaxing. Famous Mamuda. Who? 
Who, where? What? Buddy. Okay. A daring rescue mission begins. We must rescue our single guy. I'm not letting, after the day we've had, I'm not losing him. I'm not losing him. Literally so long as we get to him before sundown, he's fine. Not this time, you sick son of a bitch. Look at this like foggy pool in the distance. Yeah, that's cool. I, I do really like the little bits of like stuff you can see. Uh, what was that stretch you just did? That was scary, are you good? That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, you will not become another Randall. There's like a lot of neat little bits of like geometry that you can look at and get a peek of that you kind of struggle a little bit to like really take in because the game does have, you know, a, a time limit. <laughs> as soon as I say that, the countdown comes. Um, but like this level especially I always thought was really interesting just because like it's full of skulls. And also there's just like a lot of like really unnatural geometry. Yeah. I didn't know there were bombs here. Oh god, stay close, my son. It's cool, it's cool. We're good, we're good. I love you, my boy. No harm will ever come to you. I mean, there's weird symbols in the ground on, like, every map. Which is also cool, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, this one especially I've always been, like, captivated with since I was a young and just, like, all the cool shapes in it. I've never actually run this final level myself because I've never beaten the game myself, so this will be a first for me. But I've seen other folks do it. Interesting. There's, um, speed tech you can do where you just drop a bunch of bombs in the final boss's mouth. I'm probably not going to do it, <laughs> but it's, that's that's what the, the task does, which is always funny it's to me. It's cool that you can do it. Just eat a lot of bombs alert. 23 days since impact. At last. But a single part remains. Since I've recovered 29 of the missing parts, the dolphin's power is near capacity. In the forest depths below, I see a region where the final part must lie. Clearly, this is my final trial. My life support fails in seven days. Courage! Love that Mamuda has the same markings as the onions. Oh yeah, he kind of does, doesn't he? Yeah, on his, on his little arms. Mamuda's- a, a lot about Mamuda in general just isn't explained. They're, they're just kind of there and they're cool. They're- I won't say anything about what's the There's one fucked up thing about Mamuda in Pikmin 4 that I'm excited for us to get to. Well, that's exciting. That's fun. Um, I also like that they're basically non-lethal. Like, they'll- when your Pikmin come and, like, get them, if you ever decide to fight them for whatever reason, like, Mamuda just slams them into the ground and they're just rooted there. They're just, they're just chilling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's land in the final trial. This is the Dandori ass level. The fun Mamuda thing from 4 is hinted at in this game, too. Is it, um, hang on, I'll wait for the landing. Cool flowers here. So, the fucked up thing that you're talking about, is it the fact that Mamuda is maybe somehow related to Smokey Prog? Yes. I knew that. Okay. It's fucked. That yeah. Me. It's, it's like mentioned in other games, as far as I remember. Okay. So, the final trial is uh, a big long way leading to a boss fight. And so it's a matter of, like, juggling multiple things to get multiple things done. The music is really cool. I don't remember what the speedrun tactic is, but you have to, like, use all of your different Pikmin types to do all sorts of different things. Like, you gotta get these bridges open. No, 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 no. Off that. Off that. Come on. On this. The final trials, you have to get the Pikmin to do the Pikmin things on purpose. Right. Which, hey, it's Pikmin 1. Have fun. All right, all boys on bridge alert. Let's get more because there's a bridge on the other side. Yeah, this this music is uh, jolly and also gets the fucking heart pumping in a scary way. <laughs> okay, all boys on side two. Let's get another bridge built, boys.
Hey, hey, man. Come on, come on. Help you promise, help you promise. We got, we got, we got a schedule to stick to here. There we go, on that damn bridge. Um, let's get some red ones and go across that fire path and see what's up. Cause there's a damn fire path and I don't remember what's across it. Pikmin music often gets a little weird and it's kind of fun. Yeah. Okay. So there's a side path that we can chuck things onto or chuck things out of. Let's see. What does this do for us? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, they're there. I put them there. We can go check on them in a bit. Let's look around some more. Bridge is almost done. We've got this upper ways bit that goes here. Let's take it up. There are... Okay, so we gotta find... We gotta go there, chuck some yellows up, and then chuck them up here so we can get them down to there to blow that up. One bridge is done. Let's get some yellows. A red flower? No, there's like multiple flowers here, so you can rebalance your, uh... Yeah, so how, like, how many you have. Uh-huh. Makes sense, makes sense. That's fun, that's fun. You guys wanna maybe get a little bit away from the... from the beach there? You're scaring me a little, scaring me a little, scaring your boss a little. You boys love doing this, is the thing. They really do, it's a problem. Okay. One bridge is done. Oh, bridge is done. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can I... No. Right, but if I throw them, then they drop the bomb, don't they? Is that why there's that path back there? No, they don't. Okay, that's right. I forgot we learned that before. It's only yeah. if it's like an actual bombable spot. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Oh! It's the oh, whistling that does whistle. it. Uh. We gotta restart because those things are gone. Thank you, Dreamhurst, for converting your sub to a tier one sub. Much appreciated. Let's do that again. I always- I literally always forget. You can't fucking whistle them. I literally always goddamn for- I'm gonna continue forgetting. It's a good thing this is probably the final stream of the game because I would keep forgetting if this <laughs> was oh, a play bombs. again another week. Oh, the bombs. They took that out in the remaster? Huh. I'm always curious, like, what bits they change in between the different ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out you go. Off you trot. So? Okay. That's 30. You guys get on the damn bridge. You also get on the damn bridge, if you don't mind. Thank you. All right. What does converting a prime sub to a tier one do? Uh, it means you're paying real money for it instead of uh, not paying money for it, kind of thing. And you can use your prime sub on something else, I think. In in a weirdly generous showing by like Twitch. Prime subs are basically the same thing as just a normal tier one for like basically all uh, metrics. Like they're very weird about what kinds of subs do and don't count for the partner plus thing. But um, fucking prime subs count for it just fine. Okay. All bomb boys. Ready? Uh, 
Don't whistle, don't whistle. Don't whistle. C come, come along, come along. All right. Bridge is almost ready. Oh my god, oh my god, no! No, what are you- I- I don't know what I did that made them do that. I genuinely don't know what I did that made them- I guess I moved a little bit too forward. I probably shouldn't be using the overhead for that. I'm not fucking used to it. I gotta go on break anyways. <laughs> we are going to take a brief break. Oh, that's a funny way to go for a break, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Boys, don't touch that stuff. They're literally going to touch that stuff. All right, I'm getting up. I'm having a stretch. I'm refilling drink and stuff. Do the same for yourself. Maybe get yourself a, a snack or something. It's, uh, we've been here for a couple hours. And, uh, we'll be here for a couple hours more. Because we're going to finish up this game and do some reading. <laughs> Which I'm looking forward to. But, uh, get up, have a stretch. It's going to be three minutes of ads. So, uh, don't sit at your computer. <laughs> do something else for a bit. Don't get advertised here. We'll be back real soon.
Hello. Hey, what's up? Hi. 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 We were petting the cat a lot. <laughs> she was so happy. She was very cute, and she was being very sweet. And when I went to go and look at her, she was so happy and sleepy to see me, and she got lots of pets. And then she saw me walk over to the bathroom, and she had this look on her face like, Where are you going? Can I come with you? Uh, because she's kind of a bathroom weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> she, she doesn't do it so much with Holly, but when it's just me, she will literally, like, race after me into the bathroom and, like, lay on the little, like, shower mat ne next to the tub and just fucking lay there and bunking my legs and purring so sweetly and having a little bath. Yeah, like, she hasn't done it to me once, but multiple times, Puzz has, like, gone to the bathroom and had to leave the door open because Kiki is just like, I'm running in. I'm running in after you. I'm gonna come in, okay? <laughs> and God forbid she she not notice and I get to shut the door, I will just be sitting there on the fucking toilet and just see under the door just... Why did you lock me out? I'm trying to open the door with my little Kiki paws. She will, like, stick both paws under, like, up to the elbow. What a coincidence you were also petting a cat. Let's go. Hell yeah. Let's go. It's good to do this. It's all right to do this. Something I noticed is that the final trial on the map is, like, it's near a bunch of mountains over, like, the body of water that he's landed near, which is which is cool. It, it, it does feel very final trial to go near the scary mountains with some pretty flowers. Yeah. Okay. We know the drill. 60. Truly, Jay, who are petting the cat? Pikmin 1 is the best of the series aside from the jank. It's perfect. I would agree with the jank. Sometimes because of the jank, it's really good. Um... I haven't played enough of the other ones to really say if it's my favorite. I remember liking Pikmin 2 a lot more as a young'un. So this whole series go through will be fun for that for that purpose. Hey, Peregrine. Hi, Peregrine. The jank is part of what makes it special, yeah. Yeah, Pikmin 4 does have a nice dog. to say it's Pikmin 4 does have a nice dog. We can get into opinions about Pikmin 2 when we're fucking playing Pikmin 2. I would like to play Pikmin 1 and talk about how I like Pikmin. <laughs> right now, we are Dandori. This is the Dandori ass level. This is the this is the ants doing multiple things level. Congratulations on your two wet dollars, I no 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 come on come on. They're okay. They're okay. This is awesome, actually. They had a swim. They're feeling healthy. Alright. If that's how you want to be, this is how I'm going to be, too. What is my best time on Pikmin 1? I've never beaten it. So whatever you see the time So I whatever I end up doing. Yeah. <laughs> I've said multiple times I've never beaten this game before. <laughs> two minutes ago. We, we did literally say it a couple minutes ago, yeah. <laughs> Don't think you've ever seen this level before? It's the last one. It's the... Here's a puzzle where you have to use all your guys. And then fight a boss. Whistling Pikmin across water. It can pass as wild. Mm-hmm. The the task is very fun because it involves a lot of like playing dead and like having people like Pikmin physics push things for you, including your own corpse sometimes. Yeah, it's like yell your voice so loud that they forget to die and play dead so they move things for you. Your best time is nine days, dude. Fuck yeah. Uh, I tend to play these games pretty fucking slowly, so I've never been terribly good at, like, doing them fast. Uh, but that's cool as hell. I know the task does it in, like, six days, and I have no idea how, like, human viable that is, but it's fun to think about. It's fun to watch it happen. Mm-hmm. You bitches, get out of there. Boys, boys. I was having such an easier time throwing them before, and I don't know why it's, like, struggling now. 
Well, now it's fine. Sure, whatever. Yellow Pikmin love water. That's their favorite activity. That's their favorite thing in the world. They just fucking love dying. They do kind of just love dying. All right. All bombed up and nowhere to go? Let's go. I know, hon, I know. Rip up, rip up, rip up. Thank you. There we go. Okay, let's put them off here. Wrong button again. <laughs> I swear to god, that scared the shit out of me for a second. Let's, real quick. Grab all you guys. You go here, out of the way. Other bridge is ready. Bomb squad! Now this is Dandori. Bomb squad! One bomb. I hadn't thought about that. What else is over here? Oh, right, we need some over on the. That's what the red ones are for. Yeah, so how do I get over there? Let's see. I can walk from over there. Okay. Can I get up there? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's do some putting away. Let's do some picking them. Picking them. some reds in. I, I want to say like through there, so let's do that. Let's get like 10 or 15. Wasn't there an extremely long gap between 2 and 3? There sure was! And then another between 3 and 4. I mean, the gap between 3 and 4 wasn't... Actually, no, it was quite long, wasn't it? You guys sit in the damn fire. Have fun. Let's have a Loxy. You two are just there. Is this a way up? Yes, it is. But I can't go up here. Hmm. Maybe I just threw them over the other side like that? No, because I have to do it from that side. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Damn, I must be a genius. Yes. Double demon fang. Wait, no. Hmm. hmm. No? No. It's just blue flowers. Maybe I try, like... Can I ask what is probably a stupid question? Probably? I don't know. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't have the red guys beat the fire each other. Like another no. Okay, I They're going in the water. Not what I wanted. What I wanted was this. They went through the... Wall? Why did they go through the wall? What? How? I think this is the. Ca camera? Camera. You guys want to get on this? This can't be it. But it's working. Kind of. But, like, only three of them. Oh. 
Nine of them now. Okay. Come on, come on. More so let's throw you guys over and. Wait, please get on the box? This was working before. Okay. Sure. Alright, well, I must be a genius. <laughs> Double demon fang. Unorthodox method of moving them? I mean, it worked, and I literally couldn't figure out what else to do. So, I'm a genius, actually. Because, like, there's the fire bit here. And imagine it's some degree of, like, putting them in there and leading them through this. Like, I could just toss them over there. I can't really see any other way to get to that specific bot. Bot? Spot. Yo, thank you, Candy, for the raid. Hope you had a wonderful stream today. I just did something really weird, Pikmin, and won, so... <laughs> I'm feeling awesome, actually. Hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. Let's see how well bum-rushing this thing goes, because I don't trust my ability to, like... properly aim... um... bombs at it. No, you fucking... You dickhead. You're fine. You went back in! You dickhead! Someone else died under the damn bridge! Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Remember to save... What are you fucking talking about? It's an autosave. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't say shit you don't know about! I know how to play a damn video game! <laughs> Remember the backseating rule! Okay, so this motherfucker. What a tool. And he's here. What if we open this door just in case, though? To get more bomb rocks. Hmm. Well, worst comes to worst. This is a wash, and we come back, like in a bit, or the next day, with, uh... Oh, right! This is like a fucking Mario Sunshine-ass track. And you do, like, a stomp attack. Right, right, right. Okay. Oh, dear. It's a bit of a wash. Yep. The face and the feet. And then he does, like, stomps and stuff. Hmm. Let's step away for a sec. We can't just walk out. Please. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, please not so loud. I'm sorry. Here it's my ears. I'm sorry. He does have good jowls. You guys were just here. What are you doing here? Why were you guys just here? Did you just decide you didn't want to? Now let's get a couple of these. Oh, you picked up one bomb right there. Yeah. I don't know how much I trust the bomb strats. I don't know how much I trust my ability to do the bomb strats. Mm So you gotta be a little careful about their positioning, otherwise he's gonna go for a damn gulp. I 
I need to stop trying to rush them down there. He's gonna stomp them. It's a fool's idea, but I keep going for it. Keep being brave, but this is not a fight about being brave. That's not a matter of being brave, it's a matter of being a damn fool, frankly. Maybe I do just bring all reds with me next time, next attempt. I can certainly get this dude down. Uh, next try. Yep. Yep. Oh no, dudes, get off his feet! Oh, <laughs> I wish I could lock the camera in place. Those brave little fools ran right towards his damn legs. I don't remember what this dude's got in. I hope it's just like a fucking pair of fuzzy dice or something. Oh, honey, get ready. <laughs> Exciting. It's really good. There we go. Do you want to... Please? Get the bomb? Okay. Let's just do practice run. Sorry, boys. You are, uh, you're gravy. Okay. Well... Okay, cool. That's really cool that you just, just dropped it on me, actually. <laughs> Why did you do that, bud? All right, well, it is the saddest, most tragic thing in the history of Pikmin, and we are going to go to sunset. Tomorrow, killing him. Maybe tomorrow more bombs. I'm feeling brave. I want to try the bombs. <laughs> so we got a few days to spare. Yeah. I don't necessarily have a few Pikmin to spare, but... Worst case, we go see our friend Mamuda with those, like, 20 Pikmin pellets. <laughs> yeah, we could spare a day if we need to restock a lot, but... We got time. 24 days since impact. Emperor Bulblax. My radar indicates that a gigantic member of the Bulborb species has swallowed the dolphin's final part. Yet how am I to attack this gargantuan beast? Testing the explosive power of the bomb rocks the yellow Pikmin unearth may prove valuable. They're, they're giving you the hint of, hey, hey, this guy's got a big fucking mouth. You want to try bombing him? You want to try bombing him? You want to try bombing him? You want you want to try using bombs? Maybe consider some bombs? You want We got plenty of bombs in the area. You want to use bombs on him? Would you like some bombs? You thought I was doing Iron Man 3 villain? I don't know what that is. There's two guys in that movie. Be more specific. You think I watch fucking Marvel shit? How, how low do you think of me? Most hateful thing anyone's ever said about me. All right. Alright, one single one of yous is gonna have to, uh, set this off. Oh my god, you're okay, too. Ah! Oh my god, we should've just left him! Well, no, then he would've eaten him. Uh, that one tripped and is probably dead now. Okay, no, you're okay. We will never forget 
the salacious slurper, and what he gave for the cause. <laughs> God, the lesson forever. All right, well, you got some of the bomb, guys. Oh, I should be doing bombs and then... And then rushing them. Okay, I didn't... Let's try that again. Now that we know... The tech. <laughs> That's gonna take, uh... Some fucking shuffling. I'm sorry, you send a log message while I'm talking. Thank you for the tip. <laughs> chucked into his mouth super casually. What triggered that? I don't know. Maybe just having them near the mouth, like, thrown out when he opens, like, chucks him in automatically kind of thing? Maybe. Okay, let's get... If that doesn't work, I do have an idea, and it may be dead, so I'll save it for now. Okay. All boys, group up. All boys, group up. We're going. This is a little funny to me because we've been using the blue bags so much and it turns out we were just saving literally everyone else for the final battle. Uh-huh. The blue boys are ammo for the candy pop buds. <laughs> Frankly. Let's get over here. It's a little funny that this area is apparently considered part of the regular stage and plays the nice quiet music. Uh huh. All right. Hey man, hey bro, hey bro. Gotta be mindful of that because eventually he gets up. Oh god, I didn't get far enough. Okay, okay. What are you all doing? No! You fucking. Ugh! The thing about this is it's also a little bit of final boss against the pigment. I know. Hey man, you wanna turn around? Look what I got. Look what I got. It's yummy, yummy for you. Did he? He didn't gulp it. Damn it. Hey, can I take a bite? Okay. This is basically the play. I just need to be doing this faster. So let's take her from the top. Now that I know what to do. Training mission. Now that I basically know what to do. All right. Let's get more reds back and try her again. Actually, before we do this, we have like, what? 29 reds? Okay, so let's get a whole bunch of blues out. 
There we go. 60 of them. Time to ascend to a higher plane, boys. Okay, that's all we're getting. Gotcha. It does eventually despawn. So let's put you away. Come on out. Picking them, picking them, picking them. And now I have an idea. Let me pluck my guys first. Take a bunch of yellows with us. Let's go. The McDonald's of boys is off to battle. What's the scariest thing anyone's ever said about Pikmin? <laughs> Just look at them. They're calling them the McDonald's of boys. <laughs> Please don't fall off the tiny ledges there. Thank you. Okay. Come on in. Come along now. And here's the idea. Okay, well a ton of you were getting bombs and I only really wanted a couple of you to get bombs, but fucking sure, okay, whatever, make my job harder, I don't care. <sighs> Someone was still in there, you fucking... Literally, I am laid low by Pikmin 1 being Pikmin 1. Okay, you guys go there. I- no. Yeah, one- whatever, three of you is fine. Did you get the bomb? You didn't get the bomb. Okay, this is frustrating. Maybe I just go for the manual route. Maybe I just do this the low and slow way, actually. Because I can do that consistently. And, like, lose less guys by doing this. As cool as bomb strats would be. I think I would like to actually also beat the video game instead of just trying to go for the funny bomb thing that I don't really know how to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, 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 get off there. Okay, they didn't get off there in time. I didn't call them back fast enough. Okay, sometimes there's just no tell for the jump. Or maybe the tell is he does the tongue and then he jumps kind of thing. Yeah, okay, so it's tongue and then he jumps. If there's Pikmin on him. I should have chucked the motor there, I'm a fool. This is like actually working, so I should have just been doing this, quite frankly. Just try something new. It's not 
even something new, it's just the mechanic for the boss. Alright. Big jump. Oh, you jump at me! Oh, God. Okay. Oh, you're shitting. Okay. Alright, well. Noted. Am I playing on an emulator? Yes, I've said that multiple times. Man, you wanna eat some damn bombs? So once he gets to half health, he does that. Okay. Okay, they chucked the bomb a little too... And if I whistle them back, then it goes down. Right, right, right. I'm just gonna do this again. Man, whatever. I'm just gonna ignore the bombs. I'm literally just gonna ignore the bombs. I'm trying to go for the bombs is a trick because I don't know how to do the bombs and I don't have enough days to learn how to use the bombs. So I'm just not gonna use the damn bombs. I would hope so, if they're going- no, there's another one after that, that'd be silly. And by the way, then the secret door opens and Louie is there. He's not in this one, hun. And he's biting you. He's not in this one. Day 17 of Infinite Final Trial begins. Ascend to a higher plane of existence, boys. Become a different guy. Please? Thank you. What's this boss guy called? He is the Emperor Bulblax. He's the Once you're dead for real. He's the big guy and he's so hungry. Literally just wants a bite. Maybe just a bite. Just a succulent bite is all he's asking for. What's the matter? Won't you give him a bite? That's all he wants. He looks like he wants to eat your tables and chairs. Very specific, but I can see it. He is, in fact, the size of a slider hamburger, I think, though. So I don't think you have to worry about your tables and chairs. Oh, hun, I think he's the size of a full-ass hamburger. Like a normal burger. Damn, for real? I think that's a Big Mac. Damn. I mean, your tables and chairs are still probably safe. You well... Know, you might gnaw on them a little bit, but I don't think you can eat them. Unless you give them, like, a lot of time. Well... Mmm... I don't know. I've seen, like, what some fucking gophers and gnats can do. Well, yeah, but you gotta give him the time to do it. Oh, he don't need time. He's hungry. Get across the bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Buddy. But the one in back. And we got, like, no flowers on these dudes, which is, uh... Oh, well. We take what we can get. Listen, flowers aren't gonna save me crushing damage is the thing. It's sure gonna make him attack faster, though, and get him down faster. The faster he dies, the less chances he has to attack me, you know? I didn't realize flowers affected his attack, no. I'm pretty sure they do. It makes sense, I just don't know. Alright. Buddy, you gotta poke it. You, you gotta, you gotta poke, poke the dragon, poke the dragon. Okay. Thank you, you brave warrior. I think that literally exploded him. No, 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 he's good. Okay, he Some of them keep tripping, though. Which is unfortunate, but that's Pikmin 1! Yeah, they like tripping in it! One. Out of the way, out of the way of the tongue. At least I'm good at using the C-Stick, so, uh... Don't have to worry so much about that causing issues. Probably. Uh, I'd probably try and take a bite out of your arm, though. 
bite very much. He don't got to eat. He could slurp you and maybe got to This thing would suck your whole arm down. <laughs> oh, I cannot talk and do this at the same time, hun. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> I am flubbing so much shit. Stop going on his legs! I'm gonna watch the chat. You kill him. Thank you! Okay, we can whistle them midair, which gets them off. Good choice of words. Hopefully those two don't get eaten. They did not get e They got eaten, eventually. Happens, happens. Pikmin space program. No, get off his damn feet, you fools. Okay, one got gulped. This is the final boss. This is the hungriest boss in the whole game. So starving, maybe just a bite. That's all he asks. All he needs. Okay, we got him down to a third. With, like, relatively good time. We can afford to take this long, so we got all day. Yeah, we can marinate this fucker. Yeah, so long as we outpace his healing, we are... I don't think he heals. I think that's just, like, the bard, like, you know, being weird about how it renders, like, pixels and stuff. I think it's just small numbers having trouble showing up on a big elf bar. I think. I know the guy earlier Hmm. I don't know if this is okay. Oh, damn, he ate some. Dang. Let's maybe not throw them right at his damn mouth. I say, as I throw them right at his damn mouth. I mean, there's not a lot else to throw at. Yeah. It's kind of the spot you gotta try and go for. Alright, you are close to half health, so... You're gonna start jumping at me, at me. Let's be careful. Distance will not save you anymore. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even really using distance, I was just like... Okay, there we go. Now he's jumping big ways like that. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of, you know, strafing around him. Okay, he's down to half health and we got good time. We still got okay numbers of Pikmin. Get some hits in. Get him off. Alright. Oh, buddies, get off those feet. Oh, I... Oh, well. I sent them to their death. Hate to see it. You know, this thing's design kind of reminds me of the final boss from Pikmin 4, visually. It's got that same sort of like. Yeah, that, that age, that moss, the yeah. jowls. Okay, you're going after me now. Fuck. Lost a couple. Oi, oi, we're losing a bunch. Yeah, they are kind of like just stopping directly at this I really wish they wouldn't. Okay. Get out of the way. Okay, you're just gonna sit there. You're fine. No, you're not fine. Never mind. Yep. Yep. Okay, sometimes he goes after the ones he just chucked off of him instead of going after me. Which is interesting. You... Why did you... I don't understand why they do the things they do sometimes. Again, this final boss is as much against the Pikmin Pathfinding as it is the final boss. <laughs> yep, that's that's the whole game, so... Thematically appropriate final boss. You're close. Please get off the feet. I know it's a weak spot, but... <laughs> Gotta take those guys out. 
I gotta go back for more. I gotta go back for more. You gotta grab some boys. Leave these ones here. I just need a shit ton. Strength in numbers now. Doesn't matter who. The real enemy is the Pikmin you control? Yeah, I get it. It's, it's literally just fucking Monster Hunter. The, the, Going back to the fridge for my boys. Part of the challenge of the game is, oh god, how do I play the game? It's fun. It's fun. I sound fucking miserable right now, but it's fun. <laughs> Believe me, Holly would stop if she wasn't having fun. Uh-huh. <laughs> Alright, boys. Brave, you can truly are the men. These are the men. Alright. Move in! Move left! <laughs> no second jump? Okay. Oh boy, scatter! It's a couple. Okay. Ugh, I have trouble aiming at the face when the feet are so close, the armored back. Okay, we're losing a bunch more. I should not be trying to look at the chat. I keep trying to look, at the, look at the chat. Don't look at the chat. Chat doesn't exist right now, except for me. I can look at the chat. Okay. Oh, right, because, like, when he goes for a lick, he, like, lunges forward, so I throws off my aim. I'm just realizing that that's part of why I've been missing a bunch of aim now. He lunges forward, and I gotta aim, like, more forward. Oi. We're, like, running out of time, too, which is frustrating. I know, I know. Get out of there. Oh. We got a bunch again. But I mean, if we can get him down and get him to drop the part, then at least we'll have an easy day after that. Okay, they literally all ran towards his feet. Why did they do that? These things are stressing me out! They're not real and I'm treating them like they're real fucking animals! Why are you doing that? Oh! Use your big beautiful animal brains! They don't got those, they're plants! We're so close, we're so close. Okay. Oh, oh, the fucking jump, dude! He's obsessed with it. He's obsessed with it. Okay, man. Nine left. Okay. Yes. He's down. By the way, it was a piggy bank. All this for a piggy bank, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All this for a piggy bank, by the way. I think that's actually funnier than if it was fuzzy dice. <laughs> At long last, I found the final part. My secret safe! And it's as full as ever! How glad I am that I've persisted in my search without losing hope. Now I can leave the planet without any regrets. Maybe I'll even stop and pick up some souvenirs from my wife and kids back on planet Hokotate. He doesn't know. Oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what is about to happen. And down it goes into the damn sand. Never to be seen again. Never to be seen again. Listen, this is a working man. He's got a family. I get why he would be like, well, I got a week and I'm missing my fucking wallet. I would like to bring home my fucking paycheck for my wife and kids.
I think we literally only have just enough Pikmin left over to pick this up. Let's fucking go. Because I think it's like... It's 80, right? Boys, I'm fucking begging you. Okay, well... Sure. Whatever, pick the moment. <laughs> One more for the road. Of course, right as I think we're fucking in the clear. Drops a bunch of pellets too, I just noticed. Let's see. I guess specifically four. If all your Oh, it's only forty. Out. Never mind. I thought it was more. Okay. Let's just go to sunset. Tomorrow we pick up our wallet and leave. Tomorrow we get our damn piggy bank. And we go home. Diddly, 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 diddly. <laughs> they're literally so happy that they won that they're gonna go for a swim. We had exactly as many Pikmin as we needed to finish the video game. It's 80 in the Japanese version. Ah, that's why I'm mixing it up. I always thought for some reason that it was 80 in the North American version and 100 in the Japanese version. Getting the, the memory wires crossed, as it were. 25 days since impact. No matter how many of their compatriots fall in battle, the Pikmin fight on. Would this have been a peaceful planet had I never come? No. Surely the Pikmin lived like this before my arrival. They must have. In any case, I must not waver if I hope to return home. My task now is to do whatever I can to recover all of the dolphin's missing parts. 100 in the evil version? Oh, that makes sense. This, this might be a stupid question. Was there actually a hard mode for Pikmin? I feel like there was, but now I can't remember. I don't think so. There's like a challenge mode that you get. Where you, the That's challenge is, the challenge is you have to make as many Pikmin as you can within like a time limit. Why is it different between locations? Many video games, when releasing into other, re in other regions, will, like, change balance things. Like, sometimes it's the perception of, oh, the people in this country, they like games that are easier or harder. Sometimes it's a matter of, like, well, we released this here and people fucking hated it or we realized it was too much. So now that we're, like, releasing it somewhere else later, we can change it. Multiple different reasons why it could happen. Or even, like, sometimes, like, they'll change the target demographic when they're, like, localizing something they like they might be thinking well we're gonna aim for like a younger set with this because it's got colorful guys so let's make it a little easier <laughs> off we go <laughs> one red guy our one single surviving red they'll be all right they'll be fine they will be strong they will be brave they've got mamuda they've got mamuda <laughs> <Ass out. laughs> Pick it on up, pick it on up! Help you bros, help you bros. It's going home. I like that it's like a weird splayed out laying on the ground pig too. That's cute. Uh-huh. That's so silly. He's a good fucking pig. That's a good pig right there. Carry me home, boys. dead in front of them so they would shove you home. Oh, I, I was worried they would get off the pig and carry me if I did. That's fair, that's fair. <laughs> Love that it's a normal pig and not a funny alien pig. There's a whole lot of things in this series that are like, huh, yeah, that's funny that they're straight up mentioning an Earth thing, huh? How much fun did I have with my men? Oh, I fucking love this game. <laughs> Delightful time out with the boys. That, that final boss is rough, but I still think it was fun. It maybe would have been easier if I had, you know, actually committed to using the bombs, but also, man, fuck that. No, I don't like the way they feel. <laughs> There's a reason that the bomb mechanic is completely different in future games. Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I have finally recovered every ship part. Now I can return home to Hokotate. even say Pikmin is frustrating as hell. I think there's some part of it that are hard, and I think there's some part of it that are janky. I would not call it super extremely frustrating, personally. 
It's a neat, weird, cool little game. See, look, the reds are fine. They're already better. They got better. We helped them. We spent the rest of the couple days on the planet f helping out their population. Salute these brave, beautiful boys. And look, they're dancing. Aww. Goodbye. Bye, beautiful boys. Oh, not a thought in those pretty little heads. And those a couple thoughts, mostly. Where are you going? It's just another night, right? We're just gonna go hang out in space for a while? This happens every night. Dad goes in the rocket, and then we get in our rockets, and then we all go up and then we hang out. All right, in we go. <laughs> we, we know the drill. Wait, never mind. Actually, we're smart now. We're killers. Actually, we know the taste of blood now. Father, you have made us brave and strong and beautiful. Now we will kill. Kill! 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 I want to kill! Kill! And look at all the onions! There's some onions we don't even know yet. Uh-huh. There's a lot of onions we don't even know yet. Mm-hmm. I always thought this, this ending was fun. Just the whole, like, yeah, there's so many different colors. That's weird. There's even colors you never met. What the? There's a whole rainbow of Pikmin out there. Just like there's all kinds of things about the world that we don't know. Yeah. That don't, that don't mean it's all bad. In fact, a lot of it's wonderful and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look, all Mars even got his rocks from his kitten's bag. Yeah. And his comfy seat and his paycheck. And he made some new friends. Goodbye, Pikmin. Goodbye, Goodbye Pikmin. Pikmin Planet. It's too bad we'll never see the Pikmin or this planet again. Well, at least Almar's gonna get to get home safely and see his family, and there'll be no troubles ever again for him. And he'll simply go back to trucking and seeing cool things in space. Final analysis. 30 parts in 26 days, 81 surviving Pikmin, 1,042 beautiful, brave Pikmin that we lost along the way. And may we never forget them. And may we never forget what they did for us. And uh, most of all, May we never forget Randall and Filth Randall. Randall and Filth Randall are still out there. I I firmly believe they are the ones leading that assault on that fucking bulb orb right at the end there and leading the rest of them back to friend Mamuda. Randall and Filth Randall, you are heroes of the world. Never forget them. There's like... There's a song that they use um, in Japan, I think for like a bunch of ads and stuff. Uh, I'm sure... Yeah, I'm sure folks in chat know I know Uda, but uh it's 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 such a sweet, sad little song that I think really sums up a lot of this series and like the perspective of the Pikmin in general, where like a lot of people will go like, Oh yeah, you're just like taking these weird guys and commanding them to their death, man, that's fucked. You're killing all these dudes, and it's like the the the, the song is very sweet, because it's the pick the from the perspective of the Pikmin basically going like, yeah, you know, we're we're we're, we're, we're sad and we're scared and we're little things and one day you showed up and you, you showed us we could all we could all group up together and do something big together and now we'll uh we'll gladly do anything for you we'll throw down our lives for you because you showed us that there was hope and it's I don't know it makes me sad yeah it makes me emotional <laughs> what sweet little things the Pikmin are uh huh what violent little things the Pikmin are uh huh the blaster the float the massage the UV lamp and the secret safe all optional. <laughs> if we hadn't have beaten that boss, we would have been okay. It wouldn't have been the best ending, but we would have been okay. Rocks from his kids and his comfy chair, though? No, no, no. We need those. <laughs> Not leaving the planet without those. We need those. We need those. Save. Do not touch the memory card. Never touch the memory card. Goodbye, strange planet of the Pikmin. Goodbye, PF-004. It's not called that yet. We don't know that. We don't know that. That's just planet. That's just planet. And that's Pikmin 1. That's Pikmin 1. Main system programming, Colin Reed. Remember that name. We're going to talk about him soon. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when a weird rock hit our boat? It was so sad. actually watch the credits to Pikmin 1 because I've never beaten it and most of the speedruns I've seen just you know end 
once the game is done, so... On account of being a speedrun? Uh-huh. Damn, one guy specifically for UFO design, that rules. You love to see it, you love to see it. The, nowadays, all these, like, different jobs and roles for, like, artistic things are getting consolidated into, like, one or two things. You don't even have a UFO designer anymore. You don't even have a UFO designer. More, more places need a UFO designer again. Damn, Leslie Swan, I recognize that name. That's a, that's a, that's an NOA old head, I think. Was was Leslie Swan the one that voiced Peach in Mario 64? Or am I remembering wrong? They don't even have a UFO designer. Carrying all the bits. Yes. Okay. Awesome. I was remembering right. Awesome. It's I I feel like it's gonna be a little bit funny. After having played this one, you know, gritting my teeth and getting through some of the cruft of it and being like, yeah, this is awesome. Getting to, like, later ones and <laughs> it's gonna feel like the fucking weighted training weights are coming off. Mm-hmm. The, the smoothest butter controls. Uh-huh. Suddenly it's gonna be like, oh, actually, angling the camera and stuff is super easy. <laughs> and you can lock onto a flying opponent to make it easier to hit a flying opponent. Right, there's fucking lock-on. That shit is gonna make... <laughs> That shit might make it too easy. <laughs> they, they do also give you more to deal with because of that, but still. True, true, true. It's like, okay, asshole, you got lock on. Can you split between three captains? All right, here we are. It's time for the bestiary. Armored Cannon Beetle. This migrant lithopod has developed a stronger carapace than its relatives. Interesting that he mentions, well, I guess there are other beetles and the like, so that makes sense. Big Stompy. Beady long legs. Waxy secretions form this creature's distinctive armored shell. Covered in wax. Breadbug useful. Breadbug useful. Breadbug useful. I I forgot that kills breadbug. Ah! This creature's thick hide protects it from most attackers. All that effort trying to kill breadbug, I could have just dragged it back home. Snagrits. Oh my god, there's so many. There's three of them. We only fought two of them. I snuck around one. <laughs> The bluish hue of its feathers distinguishes it from the burrowing snarrow. Burrowing snarrow was constantly mentioned and never shows up in, the, in any of the games. Awesome. It's so cute. Candy Pop Bud. Could this be the next step in Pikmin evolution? Like the Pikmin themselves, it has many mysteries. Remember that. Dwarf Bulbear. A bulbear at an early stage of development in its life cycle. This specimen appears to be nearly fully developed. Those plump, kissable lips. Dwarf Bulborb. Although similar in appearance to Bulborb, these belong to a totally different species. <laughs> uh huh. Hey, it's this guy. Do you remember this guy? Master of Life again. Who is this? That's he looks so weird. Emperor Bulblax. This massive grub dog buries itself when hunting. You get some fun little snippets that they elaborate on so much more in, like, 2 and 3 and 4. Fiery blow- that's a good fucking shot. <laughs> this creature expels a combustible phosphor that ignites at moderate temperatures. These are just kind of whizzing by and there's no pause. We can talk more about these when we get to our reading section of the stream. <laughs> there, there'll be time. Swoop and stew. This rare species uses, uses its antennae as wings. I never noticed that. Yeah. So- We didn't see this guy. This. This is Gulix. A watery gelatinous membrane protects this creature's nervous system. Classic Gulix. Classics of Gulix. Classics of Gulix. Oh, flock! Wow! Honeywisp. This creature collects nectar for the larvae waiting in its nest. Ah, that's why they do it. Ah, oh, that's cute. Cute. You. I never fought any of these dudes. They just drop a bunch of pellets. Iridescent flint beetle. This forager stores undigested pellets in its stomach for winter. Damn, fat motherfucker. Mamuda! Famous Mamuda, you know him, you love him. Mamuda. This creature seems fond of flowers, but only for their decorative properties. Maybe the markings, we can talk about this later. It's, it's moving to other things. Oh, I hate how it chews. It's the chewer, it's the chewer. Pearly clam clamp. Though beautiful, the smallest pearls are thin and fragile. That's a pellet. It's a damn pellet. Pellet posy. This sparsely growing plant is able to crystallize nectar into round pellets. 
They probably taste like candy then, don't they? There is information on that in four. Hey, bro. Puffstool. Many consider this walking fungus a delicacy. Many, huh? Smile. <laughs> Puffy Blowhog. Instead of breathing fire, this species uses its hydrogen to float. To float. Ah. These guys are sheer grubs going in for a bite. Males of this species are purple and have an armored head. Shearwigs. Because they fly. Shearwig. The males of this species are able to fly, but the females remain underground. Fine fellow. I wonder where you came from. Huh, you're weird looking. Smoky Prog. Thought to be a malformed larval mamuda. Oh, yeah, they just tried to mention it here. They just say it here. Huh? Yep, yep, yep. Spotty Bulbear. This rare subspecies of bulborb has certain indefatigability. What does that mean? I don't remember what that word means. Me either. Spotty Bulborb. Succulent bite. Feeds mostly on small animals returning to their nests at night. Great photo of it. Really good, yeah. All right, it's our water dumples. I should have probably thrown more at water dumples than just... I'd love the bum rush, though. This aquatic creature is a close relative of the bulborb. Right, they mentioned it here that they're related. I almost forget that. Me too. Wogpole. This creature appears to be a newborn yellow wally hop in tadpole form. I'm not gonna call them. They, the reason they changed them to wally hops in later ones is because, uh. It is literally a slur, yeah. It is a slur in the UK. Wally hop. This creature's coloration results from remaining sheltered in its cavernous dwelling. Is it? Yep. Yep, it's a racial slur. That's why they changed it. Yellow wally hop. After revolution led to the development of its specialized jumping ability, this amphibian actually lost much of its ability to swim. The end. Oh. Thank you, Noelvanius, for the raid. Hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. Happy! happy. The happy end! Happy! The happy end! Uh, the reason why they gave them the original name is because it's related to, like, an actual real-life species of frog, if I remember right. Yeah, But, yeah. uh, also it does read like that, unfortunately, so they changed it. <laughs> That's the danger of coming up with new silly-sounding words. It wasn't even necessarily a new silly-sounding word. It was taken, like, frog terminology that also, like, hey, if you don't know that, yeah, like, Polywog is a tadpole name, but, like... <laughs> but it's also a slur in... English-speaking countries. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit funny that the reason why I learned that was a slur is because um, multiple times people have come in my chat and typed in woo like they're excited, but they put a G at the end of it by accident or something, and then Automod caught it, and I was like, what? why is it catching that? And then I looked it up and I learned... It is important to look up words you are unfamiliar with. Or even some you think you might be familiar with, but aren't 100% sure. Mm-hmm. It, it's like that post that was going around, like, oh, don't make up, like, a fun new fantasy word without Googling first. And so I was like, oh, but if I made it up, it doesn't think it... No, it might exist. It might mean something reprehensible in a language you don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> Challenge mode. Challenge. Or you'll have a Star Wars jizz music in incident? What's what's the matter with that? That's good. You don't want jizz? You don't want some nice jizz in your... Hi, hon. <laughs> Hi, honey! How you doing? Bad! Uh-huh. <laughs> These streams are intended for mature audiences. <laughs> no! They didn't change it to Jats! Jats is a different thing. Jats is a different thing. This is misinformation. You all fell for it. They did not change it to Jats. You're all being fucking lied to when you fell for it. Jats is a different thing. Jizz Whalers is still real. This turn is fucking funky. Uh-huh. Oh, so this is the Dandori challenge. Yeah, this is how many Pikmin can you grow in a single day? That's that's the that's how the challenge mode works. Here's a funky song we can leave on for break. So Yeah, I love this song. We're gonna get up. 
we're gonna have a stretch. Uh, I'm gonna get more water. Do the same for yourself. When we come back, uh, we're gonna read over some logs and stuff that we missed. We're gonna look at some, uh, some, <laughs> some Pikmin biology of things in this game. And we're gonna read a developer interview that I thought was neat. Yeah. Um, so, uh, get up, have a stretch, get a drink or a snack. We're just playing ads for a bit, so you don't need to sit and watch that. We'll be back real soon. See you soon! Hello. Hello. I leaned over to give my darling wife a big ol' kiss, uh, and she just starts fucking laughing because she said I taste like peanuts. <laughs> you just ate a pickle, pickle nougat or whatever. I did just eat a peanut treat. I did just eat delicious peanuts. Like, to be fair. But also, it's pretty funny. <laughs> You're eating peanuts? That's awesome, Adrian. That's fucking great. Dude, I hope you're enjoying delicious peanuts. Uh. Hey, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Did we have, like, a raid or something when I stepped away? Yes, we did, from the shitpost calligrapher. Thank oh, you very shit. much for the raid. Hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, uh, this is gonna be the wind-down part of the stream. Um, I guess we can tab back into this and probably close the, the video game, frankly. Um. We've all enjoyed the awesome bumpin' music of Challenge Mode. Thank you, Gun Mulder, for the 21 month resub. But, uh, that's, uh, that's Pikmin 1. Damn.
That's Pikmin. That's Pikmin 1. Um, hey, if you just joined, uh, welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. Uh, if you've been sticking around for the whole stream, hey, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. I hope you've been enjoying the stream. I hope you've been enjoying the ride. Pikmin 1 is such a darling, darling little game to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so glad I got to play it again and actually beat it this time for the first time ever. Yeah. That, uh, that always feels good that that does. Uh, and with a few days to spare, even. Yippee! I did okay. I was a little bit sour with myself because I was like, man, I should be doing better at this. I used to be so good at Pikmin. But that was like, you know, what, fucking 10, 15, 20 years ago? However long. I don't remember when Pikmin 2 came out. <laughs> and it was a different game. It was all. Mechanics. It was also a different video game with different mechanics. And I was playing with an actual GameCube controller and not a Switch Pro. Mm -hmm. Me many factors, but also I did okay. I did all right. Yeah. P Pikmin, the game. I'm gonna put some music on. I'm gonna put the RuneScape music back on. Yeah. There we go. Pikmin, the game, in terms of its scale, um, is a very small game. So that's like I beat it. There was a lot of time spent pausing to chat and stuff, but I beat it in like what. A couple of hours. It's a it's a game that you if you're if you're kind of a sicko, you play it like multiple times and try and beat your time and stuff like that. So this game probably like birthed a generation of speedrunners. This game probably birthed a generation of fucking RTS perverts who didn't know <laughs> what genre of game was like Pikmin and were forever suffering because they didn't know that RTS games were just on the PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe they did know, and they got into RTS games, and that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 like a weird like arcadey, f like uh, arcadey RTS game, which I think is very fun. It's like you can you can you can do multiple tries at it, see how good you can do, see how fast you can do it, and so it's like it's a really small, concise package like that, where like you know all the levels are relatively small. There's only a couple of objectives, and you can you know do different things to try and get as many as you can in one go. Um, but also in the sense of like the world that it's like, you know, like building and crafting and presenting, it, it feels very small and zoomed out in a way that I don't really feel like any of the other Pikmin games necessarily do. Like Pikmin 2 is the game that's raining fire and brimstone down on you. So it's kind of busy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pikmin 1 is very like, quiet and empty, at least by com comparison, and like kind of melancholy in like an interesting way that doesn't necessarily hit the same notes uh, in the other Pikmin games, which is fine. They're trying to do different things. Yeah. But it's 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 neat. It's, it's, it's very neat what it goes for and how it does it. Yeah. I have two quick things to say. Yeah, what's up? One, Tugas Tugas, please stay tuned for Pikmin 4. There, there sure is a tower defense type of mode in Pikmin 4 that uh, seems pretty fun. Two, some, something interesting I noticed literally in like the, the end bestiary is mm -hmm. contrary to literally the way that it is best to play the actual game, they had everything zoomed very close in to essentially like over the shoulder mode. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I remember reading like vaguely. They very deliberately tried to do with Pikmin 4, bring it more like over the shoulder and have everything kind of looming over you ah. in a way versus like that very zoomed out you are so small in a very big world mm -hmm. instead of being like the, the same the same approach but from a very from a different way yeah. exactly like instead of look down see how small you are in this big giant scary world yeah, around yeah. you it's be there on the ground looking up at this very big beautiful scary world around you i don't know i i, I think that's interesting because like i do still feel that like being as zoomed out as the camera is in pikmin 1 still does make it feel like such this like large looming world around you because you've got like all the surrounding terrain and like the the different plants and like all the critters that are much bigger than you it still feels like they're looming over you it just feels much less personal than like oh there was a huge thing after me it's like oh you are a speck yeah. It's it's it it, it feels it, it feels it feels more detached, I yeah. suppose, just by the nature of like how it's framed. Is like, yeah, you're 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 this little speck with a bunch of even literal littler specks walking around in this world, and here's just like everything bigger than you, like right above you, and it feels less like it's you and more like you're you're observing this. Like, yeah, someone in chat described it as like a fucking like the the camera follows at the distance of a circling vulture. Yeah. I think that's really interesting that like. It's it's this it's this very personal sort of like 
journey and story that feels very detached mm-hmm. uh, from that perspective. Very much like, yeah, you're you're not supposed to be here. You're sticking out as like this this weird thing that everything is like eyeing and watching, skittering through the underbrush, and it's it's fascinating. It's cool. It's cool as fuck. Um, P- Pikmin is like. I talked about this a little bit on Tumblr, but I really like the sort of, like, the mood and the atmosphere of Pikmin that they cultivate, where it's like, yeah, you're- it's like you're fucking stranded somewhere, um, where things seem, like, slightly similar to what you know, but everything is still, like, weird, uh, and, like, foreign and alien and sometimes, like, hostile and dangerous just by the nature of, like, you- don't really understand it and don't know how to like engage with it uh and it's it's and like even in spite of that you still find things that like help you get through and things that you understand and things that help things and people that help you out it's like being stuck in an airport yeah it's like the airport wants you dead it's like being stuck in an airport because your flight got cancelled and you're in a foreign country where you don't speak the language except more violent. <laughs> so maybe not the perfect analogy, but like, it's kind of like that, you know? It's neat. It's neat. It's it's interesting. And like, the other games cultivate, I feel like, fairly different just emotional atmospheric experiences. And that, that's interesting to sort of like, think about and, and, and listen to and watch, uh, and then like watch and observe as like the series goes on, you know? Mm-hmm. Such a bizarre but correct way to re- to phrase it. Nah, I'm right. I'm right. It's not. It's not weird at all. <laughs> She's right. I'm right. I'm a genius. She's literally right. <laughs> like an airport for aliens run by dogs. You know, there's at least a, a slightly similar sort of undercurrent between Pikmin and one and an airport for aliens currently run by dogs. <laughs> I guess the the main like dividing factor is like the intentionality of you being there. Uh huh. Like. In airport for aliens, the world has changed around you, but it's your world that you live in. Olimar is not supposed to be in this world, and he doesn't want to stay in this world. Uh huh. That is, I'm genuinely so struck by that comparison because I actually feel like it's like a very interesting one. Thank you, Gorilla Radio Show, for the raid. Hope you had a wonderful stream today. We just finished Pikmin One, and so I'm just you know sitting around talking about what I thought about the game. Uh, we have. A developer interview I pulled up that I want to read because I, I'll, if you're if you're new to these streams, I like I like reading. <laughs> Welcome to reading, home of reading. We've also got like a bunch of optional like log stuff that I pulled up because there's a whole bunch of dialogue in this game that you definitely miss because you can only get like one at the end of each fucking day. Yeah, and, and then like, then they have a whole bunch in there. And it like depends on like how you're doing or like what you encounter. You right, know? like there there are some of them that are like, okay, you've encountered an enemy, but you haven't necessarily killed it. Here's like a blurb of info about it so that you can like learn and understand it. Uh, and there's a bunch that only appear like on certain days if nothing else is like noteworthy. There's some that appear like if a lot of Pikmin die. There's some that appear if you've caused a fucking extinction event. It's it's neat. I think it'll be fun to read through. So uh, I reckon we can we can we can give that a look now, why don't we? Yeah, let's read. On Mars Voyage Log. I literally just have like the fucking um the 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 wiki pulled up for this game. Uh and we will give it a look. Let me get my fucking browser view here. Let me peep that. It's on screen. I zoomed it in at least somewhat so y'all can see it better as we're reading along. Uh so they they talk about, you know, how there's logs that appear at the end of each day. They mentioned some of the context of, like, how and why it will appear. Uh, there are 71 messages in all, and you only see one per day, basically. And apparently a few of them are just straight up unused no matter what. Oh yeah, there's some unused ones as well. Thank you, Aqua Cure, for the 33-month reset. Much appreciated. So you've got, like, the day one and the day the final day one. So, like, you know, we, we, we saw it, but I guess for the sake of completion, I'll read it. Day one is... I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin. But I was surprised to see the onion lift off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface. Or have they merely decided to join me for other reasons? Either way, it seems they will help me again tomorrow. The dolphin is missing 29 parts. 
If I can't recover them all, I may never return home to my family on planet Hokotate. Analysis shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such a short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I name it the Forest of Hope. I explore it tomorrow. And then, uh, if you make it to day 29, you get the uh-oh message. <laughs> tomorrow is the day my life support system fails. If I do not recover all my parts, I have no choice but to try to blast off. Missing a few parts may not affect my attempts to return to Hokotate, but then again, it may. At any rate, I must try to recover the remaining parts tomorrow. So there's, there's, it's, it's interesting that they talk about like, oh yeah, you know, if you, if I'm missing a few parts, I might still be able to make it. But like, it's, it's very directly, there's a couple of parts that are man, like, that are mandatory, or there's a couple of parts that are optional. And then like the rest are all mandatory, if I, if I understand right. It was what, four or five parts that are optional? Yeah. And you don't know which parts are optional until you have recovered them and brought them back to your ship. Mm-hmm. So you are just gambling on, are the ones I got necessary? Hope for the best. Um, but like, he, even me playing as fucking rusty as I was, uh, like pace-wise, you're basically fine if you're getting like a part or two a day, which is pretty damn easy to do. It's uh, you, you can set small goals for yourself or you can try and get real big and ambitious, but uh, yeah, if, 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 if you can't make it, that's, that's the message you see. Then there's a uh, little info notes that you get for different gameplay bits. Thank you, Lee Jam in the Void, for that nine month reset. Much appreciated. Uh, so when you clear, I, I guess this is when you clear like a whole area and you get like all the bits in it. Hope has begun to well up within me for the dolphin's repair and my own chances of a reunion with my dear family. Tomorrow I shall go forth with a new attitude and continue my exploration in a different region. I hope that fortune will smile upon me. Actually, no, I think we got that for like not full clearing an area. I don't know, I wonder what makes that specifically come up then. It just says area clear here. Maybe just beating an area, there's nothing else for it to pull up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes there's, sense. Because I, I have no idea what this is like at a programmatical level, because I don't know how I would look at the fucking code for Pikmin 1. But um, it sounds like it's a bunch of like, okay, check for this condition. Is it is it valid? No? Check for this condition. Check for this condition. Check for this condition kind of thing, which is... Certainly makes it so that like a bunch of bits don't, or ra more rarely show up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We got the blue Pikmin one. Where it just talks about, yeah, they they got gills. They're so cute. I love them. Uh, this one we did see. Bomb rock incident. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh, this this page is cool because it also tells you like if there's differences between the original and the <gasps> excuse me and the 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 Wii port where they had new controls. Oh horrors! A bomb rock explosion engulfed my Pikmin. And then he's like, "All right, I gotta, I gotta reread the fucking notes. I gotta reread the notes I took about how to use fucking bombs. Uh, collecting pellets. Uh, ooh, yeah, right. Also, uh, new play control, if I remember right, had some like quality of life features that were in like Pikmin Two that they brought over to this one, which made it less crafty in some ways to deal with. Which, you know, fair. <laughs> I wanted the original experience, so I just played the GameCube original." The Pikmin always carry their prey back to the onions. Close observation indicates that taking food pellets to onions of the same color results in the release of larger numbers of Pikmin seeds. I've also found ways to group Pikmin by color. I can hold A to grab one for a moment, or I can press X to dismiss them all. Uh, and specifically, in New Play Control, which I think is a thing in Pikmin 2, you can hold A to grab one, and then you can press the B button to swap it to a different color of Pikmin. <laughs> Which, uh, is going to be very nice in the future Pikmin games, especially no. when they start adding more types of them to fiddle with. And more specific obstacles that require very specific types of Pikmin. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. They, in, in 2, I guess for folks that don't know, because the whole thing about 
yellow ones and this one is, oh, they can get thrown higher and they can throw bomb rocks. They changed how bomb rocks work and I think it's just like anyone can use them, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So they were like, well, what do we do for the yellow ones now? Electricity. And they introduced electricity. So if you would like to not get electrocuted, yellow guys. Uh-huh. They're made of rubber. Uh, fire. <laughs> Fire should be a natural enemy of the Pikmin, but on closer examination, I found red Pikmin to be impervious to it. It is fascinating. The reds continue through the flames, completely oblivious to any Pikmin burning around them. That's horrific. With new play control, couldn't you use the Wii pointer to direct Pikmin? I think you could just use the pointer to like aim where you were throwing, yeah, which made aiming and throwing much, much easier. <laughs> Which, hey, I reckon if that means more people get to try and play the game, that's a good thing. Oh, that's right. Uh, SC Lesson 3 points out, in 2, no Pikmin can use bomb rocks, and 3, all can. Ah, okay, so it's in 3 they rework it, and 2, is it just like they aren't there? I think I think it's like the captains can directly use bombs. Ah, okay, okay. I, they, they fucking change it every goddamn game, I feel like. Because I know in Pikmin 4, bombs are straight up just an item you can craft and build and use whenever. So, like, yeah. I'm I'm fully expecting Pikmin 5, bomb rocks are going to be a completely different thing altogether. Bomb rocks are a new type of Pikmin. <laughs> I think it would be a little grimly funny if there was just a bomb Pikmin. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I suppose we'll see if they ever make a new one. This message appears when there are five parts or less missing. If I can just find... Blank. More parts. The dolphin will be fully rebuilt. But time has grown short. I must not flag in my search. Even if I cannot recover every piece, I will not give up. Surely some of these parts aren't absolutely necessary. I can almost see my smiling family. We did get that one, yeah, I think. Yeah, we got it at four more parts, I think. Mm-hmm. This one we also definitely got, uh, the one mentioning optional parts. Orange Pikmin, they fucking explode. See, there are a lot of people that think orange Pikmin are whatever parasitoid Pikmin we get in two that make Bulbman a thing. But that's a whole ass conversation we can get into when we play Pikmin 2. Uh, and it is literally entirely based on, oh, look at the fucking GameCube-ass color gradient texture they use here. <laughs> Which is very funny. <laughs> that that's the entire justification. And it's largely more vindicated because basically every other color of onion we see at the end of Pikmin 1 has appeared as types of Pikmin in future Pikmin games. Yeah. Which is neat. Yeah. Uh, optional parts. There are now only however many parts I still need to retrieve. Will I be able to recover the remaining parts in however many more days? Surely there are some parts that are not absolutely necessary. If my ship is not complete by day 30, the only way I will find out is to try to lift off. I just recalled the day I took my son for a ride in this spaceship. He was so happy. I shall tell him of this journey when I return. And I shall return. I must! I can already see the look of wonder on his precious face as I describe my adventures with the Pikmin. Your plane landed? You feel like Olimar? Dude, how many people on the airplane were you, like, throwing at bears and stuff? How many? Because, like, I'm pretty sure it's maximum 100. But I gotta know. Yeah, maybe it's different on, like, current planes. Like, I don't know what, uh, country or, or state or province you're in. Maybe they got different laws there. Two or three? Damn. Challenge mode. Damn. I can respect the low numbers run. That's impressive. The idea of explosive Pikmin reminds you of volatile dweevils, which are not a thing anymore. <laughs> awesome. Ah, this one we didn't see because I never ended up dying. You were too strong for that. Olimar is down. I've been careless, sustaining damage beyond my spacesuit's limits. My crisis transport system saved me, but I lost all of the Pikmin I had with me. I must pay closer mind to my spacesuit damage meter in the bottom left corner of the screen. I can press A, or A, 
or A, by the dolphin to repair my suit. <laughs> it, it is funny that they have to do A for all the individual icons for all the different versions of the game, <laughs> but it's like A in all of them, dude. <laughs> it's just A. I appreciate the editorial standards here on Pikmin Wiki, but it's just A. <laughs> Partial extinction, which we didn't see. Uh, as close as we fucking got with one fucking red Pikmin left at the end of the game, we never experienced partial or complete extinction. These ones are a little harrowing. Yeah! <laughs> partial extinction. What exactly are these Pikmin? One could classify them as both plant and animal. They mature from leaf to bud and finally to blossom. When all of one color are lost, the onion instinctively puts out new seeds. How does it know to do this? What a mysterious life form. There's some interesting dialogue in a couple of the games, specifically about the onions and, like, what they are and what they're like. Um, they're alive. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, like... Mixing, mixing, like, plant life with other life, whether that's, like, biological or, like, I guess you could argue maybe machinery isn't necessarily a life, but in the sense of, like, it is a, it is a thing that is moving about. Yeah, biotech. Sure. But, like, plants, plants integrating with other things is a thing that, like, keeps happening uh, throughout the series, and it get, they, they ramp it up more and more um, in the other ones. And there's, there's... The, the, the thing that made people originally think, oh my god, Pikmin 4 is an alternate universe after the bad ending of Pikmin 1 is, uh, the bad ending of Pikmin 1 is your ship crash lands back on the planet and you're, you're dying, you're dying, and the Pikmin puts you in an onion. And then you sprout out of the ground with a little bulb on your head. Uh, which is what made people go, oh my god, that's, uh, that, that, that's, that, that means that Pikmin 4 takes place after Pikmin 1, but you lost. Um, but, I mean, one, it's not quite that, two, it's, it's sort of an interesting first little look at, like, hey, there's some fun stuff going on here with, like, you know, stuff getting broken down and turned into Pikmin-like when they go in the onion, huh? Mm -hmm. It's neat, it's neat. Anyways, Pikmin extinction! <laughs> the Pikmin have all perished because of my own carelessness. I am an utter disgrace as a leader. How can I continue to collect parts without them? Still, the onions join me in low orbit, as if this Pikmin extinction had never happened. I shan't sleep tonight. Well, good thing that never happened to us. <laughs> I think I would have been too sad to keep playing. Do they let you? Like, do they give you, like, pity Pikmin? Yeah, because uh, if all of one color is lost, the onion ah. instinctively puts out new seeds, and then you can very easily just go to like the first level and grab a bunch of uh, grab a bunch of capsules there, mm -hmm. or pellets, whatever. So like, there's 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 fail safes. the The only game over condition is thirty days have passed. Mm -hmm. You you can always start again, but man, just just like in that fucking final boss fight when I lost most of my Pikmin. Man, it fucking hurts, huh? <laughs> it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it's not great. It puts out one new seed. Right, yeah, like it's like it's like when you find the onions at the start of the game and they just pop out the one kind of thing. Repopulate, motherfucker. Uh-huh. Here's three. Good luck. Pikmin left behind. The Pikmin that I did not bring back to the onion all vanished overnight. It may well be that they have fallen prey to the planet's nocturnal creatures. An ugly thought. Perhaps that is why they follow me into the atmosphere. I am starting to grasp the cycles of life on this planet. The writing of Olimar's voice is so strong, even these little snippets. Yeah, even yeah. from like the start of Pikmin 1, where it was like, this is just the one game we're doing where we're you know, feeling things out. Olimar is a fun little character, and he gets fun little moments like that. He's, 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 he's a good fella, even if he's like, man, I'm fighting for my life out here so I can go home. He's like, man, these little dudes are giving their all so I can fucking leave them behind, and I fucking feel miserable if they all die because of me. The Brothers Randall are still out there. The Brothers Randall are still out there helping out anyone they can. Never forget. But some of them absolutely did die and get eaten. <laughs> 
Yeah, we saw a lot of that. <laughs> unfortunately. Listen, always believe in the Brothers Randall, but some of those we left behind, unfortunately, did absolutely die. <laughs> When you were a kid, when you got the bad end, you were so sad that Olimar was dead that you gave up? Oh no! Oh! That does seem like something that might have happened to me if I had played it more as a kid. I, I've talked about this. I couldn't play much of it as a youngin' just because, like, time limits in games just stressed me the fuck out way too much. Like, I could never deal with games that had them, even if they were, like, very manageable. I couldn't play Majora's Mask. I've never played Majora's Mask because of it. I want to go back to it one of these days. That's why I'm, I'm... I'm, like, much less bad about that nowadays, where it's like, I think a time limit in a game can be the fun kind of stressful. So, like, I can play games like that. Oh, I... I, I fucking bet that I dig Majora, friend out. Like, I... I have spent so much time, like, poring over Majora's Mask as, like, a work of art and thinking about, like, hey, what's all this stuff about? What does it mean? What is it representing? Because I'm so... You'll, you'll forgive me for getting up on my pedestal and being mad about nerds doing art analysis, but I am so <laughs> fucking fed up of people being like, Oh uh, yeah, Majora's Mask, it's a video game about the stages of grief, huh? No. Like... You can read into it that way, but there are so many more interesting ways to read into Majora's Mask as a work. <laughs> like, there is so much more to it than, oh yeah, it's about dealing with uh, d d dying and grieving, and it's like, no. <laughs> Bitches love when things are about the stages of grief because it means they can put numbers on it and then they sound deep. Bitches love to say that about things that aren't really necessarily about that. All, all of you bitches like that. Go play fucking go play fucking Spirit Fair. That's explicitly a game about the stages of grief. <laughs> Not even necessarily the stages of grief as much as just grief and but Jorah's Mask is a game about fucking the inevitable, the looming thing that's coming to get you. The moon is going to fall. The missiles are going to strike. The deadline is coming up. The game has to come out. That's what Majora's Mask is about. It's about many other things on top of that, but that's kind of the big, yeah. obvious thing that it's about. And it's about, you know how we get past the moon coming down to kill us all? We talk to each other and we help each other. Dude, the monster is going to be at the end of the book. <laughs> no matter what you do. So what do you do? You talk to people about the book so you can get to the end of it. <laughs> I haven't even fucking played it. We're, we're talking about fucking Pikmin. I I gotta stop or the rest of the stream is gonna be three hours of me ranting and raving about a game that I like that I literally have not ever played very much of. <laughs> oh, anyways. Majora's Mask is cool. Someday I'm gonna play that and I'm going to like fucking feast on it and my heart's gonna grow three sizes that day. Anyways. um, Pikmin. <laughs> yeah. Pikmin Maturity. Uh, there's some, like, difference between these, and I wonder what they are. I guess I'll just fucking read them and we'll find out. That's how reading works. Um, I drink water. I drink water. You gotta have a sippy, honey. Always think about Jacob Geller's Darkest Zelda video. I don't know who that is. I'll be real. <laughs> People in my chat room love to talk about video essay YouTuber guys, and like, that's not a knock against you if you watch them. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to watch them. I just, I don't. I want to read a damn essay. <laughs> I want to read a damn essay. <laughs> I would rather not watch one. Or or at the very least, just someone like fucking, I, it's, it's bold of me to say that when a lot of what I do is me just on my streams fucking talking about stuff like this, but like, that's... Most of this is, like, unorganized, off the cuff, and I prefer to try and write stuff down afterwards. I'm bad at finishing it when I do that, but I like to. Yeah. It's good, it's good, it's good. Anyways, what was I talking about? We were gonna read Pikmin. Because yeah. Because reading reveals information to you. Oh my god, that's true. I have seen that, at times, the leaf atop a Pikmin's head will grow into a bud, and then a flower. It appears that if I do not pick the Pikmin sprouts, they gradually bloom over time. Fascinating. This melding of plant and animal traits is surely unique in this natural world. Jacob Geller rules. He goes through every Zelda game making a case for them being the darkest and talks about why people focus so much on something being dark. Okay. Good good for him, I suppose. I'm probably still not going to watch his stuff, but yeah, that's neat. <laughs> 
It's like every time someone comes in here and mentions H Bomber Guy, I literally remember that name now because it has come up so much that I remember, oh, H Bomber Guy. That's the guy where I don't know who he is, but everyone keeps talking about him. <laughs> I now also remember that he's the Donkey Kong charity dude, but that's, that's all I remember. <laughs> Presumably another, he makes videos on YouTube and people like to watch the videos he makes and the things he says. Exactly that. I, I don't have the time to watch videos like that. I'm too busy making streams like that. <laughs> you know how it is. Those videos are for people like me who have to sit on my computer for 17 hours a day doing things and just need something to wash over my brain in the background. You love H-Bomb, but you don't need to ever watch he- You don't ever need to watch anything. You guys are missing the point of this conversation a little <laughs> Nothing bit. ever has to be watched or done in the world. <laughs> you guys are hearing, huh, that's neat. I don't really watch video essays though. Anyway, and going, oh my God, we need to tell her about the video essays. That's not what they're saying though. They're just going, oh yeah, he's cool, but you know, not necessary to watch or whatever, which is like, yeah, Nothing is. <laughs> uh, it reminds me, I saw someone talking about, I don't remember what game it was, but someone along the lines of like, yeah, you know, um, the, said like, the main problem with this game is that it isn't for everyone. <laughs> and I got very confused because that's anything. That's everything that's ever existed in the world. That, that's everything ever made in the world. I don't remember what that was about. Anyways. Um, I'm, I, whenever I see stuff like that, I'm always willing to, like, tell myself, I'm probably just misunderstanding what they're saying, or they didn't explain themselves well, or something like that, which, I've fucking been there before. I've certainly said some stuff and people go, what the fuck do you mean? And then I gotta spend 20 minutes pulling the car over to be like, I'm bad at explaining myself. Here it is. <laughs> uh, games don't have to be for everyone. Nothing has to be for everyone. Nothing is for everyone. Most things are not for everyone. <laughs> All right, here they talk about um, the differences between them. I have found the increased swiftness of the flower Pikmin to be of tremendous benefit. Also, my diligent observation has recorded instances in which, Pikmin, in which flower Pikmin lost in battle have left seeds behind. This is why on days after fierce battles, I occasionally find new sprouts growing. Uh, and then this one, the other version is... I have found flower Pikmin to possess increased swiftness. When in a rush, I found pressing and holding A, then calling the flower Pikmin forth with the D-pad to be quite an effective strategy. Oh, so you can specifically just call flower Pikmin. Hmm. Interesting. I've also learned that new sprouts found growing on days following fierce battles are results of sprouts being left behind. Route choosing! <laughs> I've made a new discovery. The Pikmin can choose their own routes. But does this indicate rational thought or just basic instinct? Unfortunately, I cannot determine this at this point. I will be vigilant in my studies, though. I had to sneeze. Excuse me. You. The funny thing is, by the end of your studies, you learn neither. This indicates neither rational thought or basic instinct. It indicates them walking into a drowning pit. The Pikmin can choose their own routes. This does not necessarily mean they are terribly good at it. <laughs> they can. Should they? That's a different question. No. <laughs> Half the video essays you've watched were you putting them on when playing games like City Skylines. So, you saying that is the single thing that has made me understand the appeal of video essays. That's literally what it's for. They're yeah. po no, it's not even, oh, it's the thing you put on in the background. It's that they're podcasts. Yeah. I don't know why I've literally not been thinking of the fact that they're just fucking podcasts until now. Like, I, I fucking love, like, putting up a fucking podcast and playing a certain type of game. This this whole time, I could have been listening to shit like this, and I was just like, eh, nah, I don't really want to dedicate that kind of time and focus when I'd rather just, like, read something at my yeah, own pace. Yeah, Asterisk Dragon puts it well. Podcast with a sideshow. Fuck, man. <laughs> Maybe I start looking into things like this at some point. <laughs> you, you've certainly got plenty of paint box buddies who are the video essay sickos. Oh, I know. <laughs> I literally, I think the majority of my friends are video essay perverts, so it's like, hey, I know who to hit up. It's literally everyone I know. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> yeah, they are good Picross accompaniment. <laughs> That's a good fucking idea. I literally bought a new Picross game made by Jupiter. It's on Steam and Early Access. I forgot what it's called. Um, it's like Logi something Grimoire, I want to say. 
Uh, so I've 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 been on a on a on a Picross kick again the past couple of days. So uh, hey, maybe some for me to uh think about doing when I'm back home on days where I'm have too much energy and I'm sad that I went home and had to say bye to my wife for a bit. <laughs> oh, I love you, honey. I love you. Let's be Picross together after you're home. Uh huh. Hey, by the way, if any of you have money and want to support the stream so that I can maybe more permanently think about moving out closer to my, my partner. <laughs> need your millions? Where's my millions? Need my millions. I need Costco to fucking sponsor my stream. <laughs> Costco, we're begging you. Costco, I want to be able to afford a membership so bad. Costco. Sponsor my wife. Costco, I literally love going to your stores in Canada and buying things there. You have such good selection of like produce and like food and stuff. Please sponsor me. <laughs> Hope if you hit up your friends, they recommend Betafied, the show where we take a look at unused and cut content. I literally just do that on my own time, is look up like stuff on TCRF and Forest Evolution and things like that. I don't need I don't need no damn videos to tell me about that. I do that already. <laughs> Holly, go into that that video like I know more than you. Not always, but I mean sometimes. Sometimes. I'm I'm not gonna go on the Did You Know Gaming rant because also I've heard that like their standards have much improved in the years recently, so uh <laughs> Hey, thank you for the tip. You're lying, you're not Costco, because you only gave me five dollars. If you actually wanted a sponsorship, you would have emailed me. So don't you can't trick me. I'm smarter than a, than an egg. People love coming into the tips and lying today. You guys literally love lying. You're <laughs> addicted to it. It's kinda of funny. <laughs> hey, you have a good night, Let Lettuce Vervain. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Uh, nice. Anyways, Pikmin can choose routes, but they're quite bad at it. Yellow Pikmin discovering bomb rocks. Uh, we they they blast rocks. We seen it. We seen it. They're breaking the squads. Yellow. There's one for Yellow Pikmin if you haven't discovered bomb rocks. Oh. I think we literally got the second one because we didn't just get bomb rocks the first day we got Yellow Pikmin. Ha. <laughs> Oh yeah, true! I, I think we did get this one. Yeah, because I remember the thing about the funny ears. Mm-hmm. That's cute that they account for, like, did you figure out what the yellow Pikmin can do? Mm-hmm. Am I studying for the Pikmin exam? What the fuck are you talking about? I, I, I'm i literally just doing this for fun, dude. <laughs> I said I had supplementary reading material. Here it goddamn is. <laughs> you guys are the one who's got to prepare for the Pikmin exam. You have an exam. You have a test. Don't fail. I'll know. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. <laughs> Message of. <laughs> and there are entries for each critter, which you only see I, if you don't kill the beast on the day of, I think. Armored Cannon Beetle. This creature spits out massive rocks and boasts an impenetrable shell that repels all Pikmin attacks. Just before spitting out a boulder, it sucks in large breaths of air. Perhaps its air hole will provide a clue to its weakness. I had multiple friends tell me they were addicted to the way I, the way I described it, where uh, I said something about the, like, you, you, you let it suck you and then you attack its asshole or something like that. <laughs> I mean, you do. People liked that one. <laughs> that, that's the function. That's the mechanic. It, it is funny that, like, the Beatles are in this game and then don't return for, like, two and three and then finally come back in four and people lost their damn minds. <laughs> they're, they're cute Beatles. I like this boss. It's a fun boss. Beady long legs. This creature is so large it would tower over the dolphin. All the Pikmin can do is cling to its feet and try to slow it down. Its large, round torso is its sole weak point. Since yellow Pikmin fly highest, they should be most effective against it. It's it's interesting in like the later games they add ways for you to go, okay, you can take this down without just yellow Pikmin. Like you can attack the legs and kinda like make it stumble kind of thing. Um But but it is kinda kind of funny in this game. There are a couple of cases where it's like, okay, here's a boss. Here's like the one way that you deal with it. You better have the one way to deal with it. And, like, they signpost it fairly well. Like, yeah, you go to the beady long legs arena and it's like, okay, here's a yellow candy pop bud. Pretty clearly visible. You're, you're, you're gonna want to use this. <laughs> but, but it is a little bit funny that it's like, okay, here's the one solution. So here's the things you can do for the one solution. Yeah, yeah. 
they, they kind of, they, there's, there's, there's a little bit less of that in the other games, but there's still some noteworthy exceptions. Like, there's the, there's the Water Wraith in 2, which is like, yeah, you gotta have purples for that. Mm-hmm. And then the whole dungeon is kind of built around that. Breadbug. Breadbug. Breadbug useful. Breadbug useful. Breadbug is literally my favorite. This pesky scavenger is truly annoying. It attempts to steal the spoils the Pikmin earn in battle. If the Pikmin chase it too far, they can be dragged into its lair along with their food. It may look weak, but its appearance is deceiving. Breadbug owns. Breadbug useful. Breadbug useful. Breadbug owns. Nothing more to say. Breadbug is awesome. Burrowing Snagret. This large subterranean life form suddenly erupts from underground to feast on nearby Pikmin. Its body is covered in thick scales, which render the Pikmin attacks ineffective. Surely it has a weak point somewhere. Snagrid is cute. Snagrid is fun. I love the awful sounds that it makes. Um, in the credits, they talk about how the Snagrid can be uh, visually, like, vi visually, like, tell... You, you can tell it apart visually from the burrowing snarrow, is what I'm trying to say. Um, the burrowing snarrow is not a thing. The burrowing snarrow is not a thing in Pikmin 1. It is not a thing in any Pikmin video game. They keep mentioning the burrowing snarrow as a thing that definitely exists. We all know about it. We all clearly know what the burrowing snarrow is. We've all seen it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the burrowing snarrow. We've all seen it. It's it's remarkably similar to the burrowing snagger, but it's different in a couple of ways. And we've all heard of it, and we've all seen it, and we all know what it is. And I'm so delighted by it. You, it's it's the sort of thing where you could easily write it off as like maybe they were talking about something that was like taken out of the game, or maybe this is like a translation weird thing, or it's like then then it's like no, they keep mentioning it. They keep mentioning it. They keep mentioning it. So you know there was like some some playground rumors like no no you have to go under the water to the secret area, and then you'll find a hundred free Pikmin and the Burrowing Snarrow. And I don't know what's funnier, is imagining it as like, um, as like a, no, we always just wanted this funny thing to be like a thing that doesn't actually exist. Or if it's a fucking Alan, please add details type of thing where it's like, <laughs> well, we made an uh-oh, but it was a funny uh-oh, so let's keep referencing it. <laughs> uh, drink water. Let me know if you want me to do some reading, too. You've been doing a lot of it. Nah, I don't mind. Okie dokie. Unless you want to do reading? Oh, I'm all good. Gotcha. I am good to keep going. I've I've missed a good long reading stream, quite frankly, so... Yay! <gasps> Kiki! You want to say yay, too? Hi, sweetie. Thank you. Oh, okay. She's squinting at us. Yeah. Well, she's so sleepy tonight. Oh, sleepy kitty. Yeah. Have a good rest, Kiki. Yeah. I love you. Bed not too long. Yeah, it's the rest of the stream is just reading and gabbing, so it shouldn't be too too long. Mm -hmm. You googled burrowing snarrow, and the first result is a child's wiki page where they have their link for Pikmin Power of Mr. B, which says made by me, and they say you fight the snarrow in it. That fucking rules. That's perfect. I I love that the hell of search engine optimization has made shit like Google think that like children's ideas wikis are like real facts info. It's it's how you get stuff like Peppa Pig is 10 feet tall and her, her rival is Lucina. <laughs> stuff like that rules. I genuinely love, like, children's idea wikis. Every now and then, I've thought about, like, perusing one of those and streaming it, but I always worry that, like, doing that could very easily veer into, like, being, like, leery and mean and laughing at a fucking child, you know? Which fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. Like and even if you don't approach it in that way, you know people are gonna come it, in. It, it would be very easy for people to not understand it and come in and be like, <laughs> yeah, man, fuck them kids. And it's like, no, that's not the point, man. <laughs> the point is kids are fucking funny in this rules. Love Pooh's Adventures of Me type stuff. Pooh's Adventures of Me isn't that. Pooh's Adventures of Me has is too coherent to be that. I'm almost certain that's just like a fucking teenager or an adult just doing a funny. Children's idea wikis aren't trying to be a joke on purpose, unless they're trying to make a comedy thing. Children's idea wikis are children going, man, wouldn't it be so fucking cool if my idea for a Bowser game was real and there was 10 sequels to it, and they're all related to all these other games that cool people on the internet came up with? 
It's different. Pooh's adventure of me is different. Pooh's adventures of me is funny, but not sincere. Children's idea wikis are funny and sincere. <laughs> you know? Hypnospace did channel children writing very well, yeah. Really well. See, the, the Road Trip Adventure 2 VOD is an example of that, and it's one that I was so fucking nervous about in the moment, because I was worried that people would be fucking weird about it, and that people would try and vandalize the page or whatever. But I'm glad it went over all right. Anyways, candy pop buds. When I throw Pikmin into this flower, they are popped right back out. I have named this very peculiar bloom the candy pop bud. It's strange. No matter what color Pikmin I throw in, the ones that pop out match the flower's color. There's a bunch of interesting stuff that you can kind of, like, reason based on the relations between, like, the Pikmin and the onions and the, the, the pellets and the, the candy pops and stuff like that that are interesting that they go into more detail about in the future games because this was just like, oh, huh, weird, weird thing to think about because it's just the one one-off thing we're making and then went, oh, we're making sequels? All right, let's uh, let's elaborate on some of this stuff, maybe. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's neat that they're, like, talking about how um, they're, like, related and maybe, like, direct sort of, like, life cycles of the same original thing in some way or another, you know? Dwarf bulborbs and spotty bulborbs. The most plentiful species on the planet. They are quite ferocious, despite their appearance, using their massive jaws to swallow Pikmin whole. Frontal assaults result in disaster. Attacks from behind are more successful. Attacking their legs is also effective. They mention it in the credits. Dwarf bulborbs are not bulborbs. They're bread bugs. <laughs> they're they're they're, fucking mimics. they're straight up bread bug mimics. They're like imitating other critters for the sake of like being protected while they grow up, which is so charming to me because it's like like a lot of the things of like oh here's a weird thing that an animal is doing in Pikmin. A lot of them are just things that real animals do in some way or another. Like there are many species in real life that uh, their defense mechanism is looking like another species. Breadbug useful. Breadbug intelligent. Breadbug genius. Breadbug genius, baby. Evolution is not a conscious, controlled process that a species goes through, but it was for Breadbug. Breadbug did that on purpose. Breadbug did this with intent. Breadbug got out his little tiny makeup palette and painted those spots on by hand so he could go and be protected by the big bulb orb. Breadbug uh, escaped Samsara. Breadbug achieved enlightenment uh, and left the wheel and looked down upon the world and said, I'm coming back, but I know what to do. And it was awesome. Emperor Bulblax. We did get to see this one. <laughs> On account of getting killed a little bit. The, the delicious power of the bomb rocks. Yada, yada, yada. I couldn't get him in. <laughs> oh, well, I did it the long way and the hard way and lost a lot of brave men because of it. But, uh... Hey, yeah, maybe if you're better than me, or if you practice more than I did, you can actually chuck bombs in that motherfucker and beat him more serenely. What I wanted to do was I wanted to, like, separate the non-bomb guys and the bomb guys. And I would run in with a bomb guy, chuck one at him so that he would eat the bomb, and then quickly grab all the others and bum rush his face and then whistle them off to do a bunch of damage on one chunk. And it ended up being, like... It was a good plan, but with the way Pikmin 1 controls and how fiddly it can be, it was too many moving parts for the poor old gal. <laughs> Especially with my know-how of how to play the game. Ah well. Can't win them all. Except you did win them. Mm-hmm. Just, just in a different way. I suppose I did. I suppose I did. So Holly can win them all, but you can't win them all. Yippee! Fiery Blowhog. I wonder just how this planet's life forms evolved. This creature belches fire of all things. Once the Pikmin get caught up in the Inferno, there is nothing that can be done. If only they had the power to face such flames without fear of burning. I watched an entire video recently, and I talked about this on stream from a... I literally forget what the channel is called, but maybe someone will remember again for me. It's the channel where, like, it's the dude talking about, like, 
uh, speculative biology. A natural history. Show. A natural history. Yeah. Um, specifically, a video about like you know critters and fiction that will like you know breathe fire or have breath attacks in some way or another, and how like some of it is based off of like you know critters what expel like venom and stuff, and how it's not necessarily realistic, and a lot of it really is just sort of like leaning into the whole fantastic element of like yeah, it's like a damn dragon, bud. It's a dragon. Um, which is funny, considering literally, uh, in later games, they give these critters, like, scientific names. Uh, and if I remember right, the one for Fiery Blowhog is basically just Dragon Pig, so... Sustraconus. <laughs> Sustraconus. Gulix. Also, if any one of you make Among Us jokes, I'm timing you out. Gulix. Oh, all right. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. <laughs> you walked right into the trap. You're, you're timed like, out. You're like the Pikmin walking directly to a river. <laughs> you're timed out. You're timed out. <laughs> I'm whacking all you motherfuckers. <laughs> Sick of this shit. Talk normal to me. <laughs> Learned there are baby bread bugs called crumb bugs? There sure are. They're yeah. hay pikmin enemies, I think. Crumb bug. Really liked when they started doing the Latin name thing. I think it's very charming, and it also has some interesting implications about the world. <laughs> Latin does exist on Hokotare. Fucking Mexican food exists on Hokotare. That's true. Louis makes fajitas. Louis makes fucking fajitas. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Gulix. Within the Within the transparent gel that envelops this organism, I, I forgot to do the Olimar voice for a moment. Sorry. I was someone else and it was really scary. I woke up from a weird dream. I thought I was a woman on a different planet reading a Wikipedia entry. It was weird. Within the transparent gel that envelops this organism are two nuclei that appear to make up its actual torso. And, most likely, its entire nerve center. The nuclei look like they're hard, but I believe that there must be some way to crack them. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Gulix is the thing that appears in the tutorial area on days where Mamuda isn't there. And it's, it's this funny little goo enemy where you gotta, like, bust up some of the, some of the nuclei bits to take it out. Which is funny, because in the, like, credit bestiary was in the, the, like, desert rock area. Uh-huh. Didn't think Gulix could actually kill Pikmin, and then you fought it in a different run and it killed all of them? Jesus oh, Christ! No. Maybe it's good that we only saw my friend Mamuda, gentle Mamuda, sweet Mamuda. Oh, Mamuda, my friend Mamuda. Friend to the children. Mamuda. Um, so Gulix literally only appears in this game, if I remember right, but... They, like, mention it by species name in 4, because there's something called a Fulix, which is a relative of it. I think they actually might have Gulix and Fulix, or at the very least they have two very Gulix-looking things. I don't think they have Gulix in any of the other games. I don't think so, at least. Maybe we'll see! We're gonna play the others eventually! <laughs> Yippee! It'd be really funny if it just shows up in fucking Hey Pikmin and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. We do we do want to play Hey Pikmin if I can get it to emulate, okay? Honeywisp. This timid creature flies around collecting nectar from flowers. It typically hides itself, but shaking flowers can reveal its presence. The nectar it collects appears to be the Pikmin's favorite food. They instantly bloom when they eat it. Honeywisp are cute. I like honeywisp. They changed them in later games so they got like eggs and stuff instead of the nectar. I think the nectar's cuter. I mean, the eggs got nectar in. Isn't Gulix a wraith relative? Not textually. You can choose to read into it that way if you want to. I don't think they are personally, but I can see why people would think that, considering the final boss of Pikmin 3, which we'll get to when we get to We'll get Pikmin to it 3. when we get to L it. Listen, I, I know a bunch of stuff about the Pikmin game, so I'm being a little glib about some of the spoiler things, but like also, you know, generally try and be mindful of uh, spoiler stuff, just for the sake of uh, folks what have not played the other ones. You know. We know things. Not everyone knows things. Ba basic currency for games what we plan on streaming relatively soon. Uh, but yeah, there's there's certainly similarities to be seen 
but uh, I, I don't think they're the same type of thing. I think I think it's different, but things that look similar enough. Uh, oh shit, it's break time. Oh shit, really? Yeah. Damn. All right, it's time for get up and stretch. We'll do some more reading when we get back. Uh, we got a couple more entries to go through, and then um, there's there's an interview with the devs that I want to read that I think is charming. So uh, let's uh let's all get up and do our stretches, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you very soon. Hello. Hello. I see a couple of folks dipping on out to go to bed. Hey, thanks for sticking around for so long. You have a wonderful rest of your night. You have a wonderful sleep. Uh, this is a late night, just kind of chill, hanging out thing, so I, I don't mind if folks got to dip out. There's a VOD if you want to listen to it. There's links to the stuff if you want to read it on your own, but uh, I think it's fun to read and talk about, you know? So mm -hmm. here we are. We're going to go at least a little bit longer. Yeah, it's like... Uh, 
almost 10 o'clock here. We gotta go to bed at a reasonable enough time, because Puzz has, you know, work and class and stuff tomorrow, but... I gotta be a member of society. Oh, honey, yes you do. We both do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can opt out if you want. You're on vacation. I am not. I came here to also work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just haven't really been up to doing it much because I wanted to spend wife time, wife <laughs> quite frankly. Time. Hi. Hi. You're I my love, wife. You're my wife. I love you. I love you. <laughs> you're a decent flint beetle, by the way. Oh yeah, you're a decent flint beetle. Let's fucking get back to it. Let's tab over. Speaking of reading, will there be another chapter of Dracula soonish? Yeah, when I get back to Canada, I want to pick those back up. Probably maybe do one or two of those a week so I can finish the damn book. Because there's another book I want to start reading soon for October. Honey, before you start back up. <gasps> oh, sweet darling Kiki is on the bed needing the big blanket. She loves me, the big blanket alert. Oh, so gentle. Aww. So gentle, her soft little paws. Mm -hmm. What a sweet cat. What a good girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff I want to get back to when I get back to Canada. Just because, like, I have my entire fucking computer set up there, which is where a lot of my stuff is. <laughs> so, uh, I will be able to get back to it. But also, I don't think anyone will fault me too much for going, hey, a bunch of stuff is on hold in September because I want to spend time with my fucking partner, you know? It turns out one month is not enough. No, I need, like, an entire rest of my life, quite frankly. But, uh, that's, uh... Wow, it's like you're gay for me or something. What? <laughs> no way. What gives you that impression? Oh, just a thing or two. <laughs> like, I don't know where you're getting that idea from. It's so, it's so strange. It's so out there. <laughs> How weird. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> Ooh, run back into your basket. Oh, Kiki going basket mode again. Hope you're having a wonderful time. I have been. Uh, it always feels too short, but man, you make the most of the time you got, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've had a wonderful time. Oh, me too. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I love you, hon. And by the way, Costco, please sponsor me. Um, Costco, we are begging you. Loblaws and Metro and IGA, please sponsor me. I will be the first official grocery store sponsored streamer. You will give me a lot of money and I'll talk about how much I love produce and cooking, because I already do. Um, and then I can move out closer to my partner. That would be awesome. And I can see my wife whenever I want. I do need to figure out, just because, like, the logistics of moving from Canada to the States, legal-wise, is definitely going to take some time and energy to figure out. But, like, mm -hmm. at the very least, uh, I would like to, in the next year or so, see the viability of, like, moving to the West Coast to at least be on the same time zone, and so that flights to visit will be cheaper and quicker. And so I can visit her. Yeah, that'd also be nice, <laughs> quite frankly. So, uh, you know, some some stuff to figure out, some uh, some some finances to tabulate, some uh, things to look into and people to talk to, but uh, I'm gonna do my damnedest to make it work soon, and I hope that folks will uh, continue to support me uh, in the streams, even if, like, there's a bit of a bumpy patch uh, related to, like, not being able to stream for a bit because I'm moving or whatever. But uh, we'll 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 cross that bridge when we get there, I suppose. Right now, we gotta read about iridescent flint beetle. Very important. This creature's hypnotic, reflective body is quite hard, giving it a good defense against Pikmin attacks. Why then do the Pikmin chase it in such a frenzy? I wonder if it'll undergo any change if I hit it directly with Pikmin. You know, I never put two and two together. I always thought, oh, they like chasing after it because it's got like a pretty shiny body. No. They're chasing after it because it's jammed fucking full of pellets. <laughs> it's its gullet is full of fucking pellets that it's storing for the wind. That's why they want it's that shit. Real. L literally, it stinks so bad of fucking pellets. They're just like, oh, I can get a whiff of that from a map away. Get them, boys! And they can't get through its carapace because you have to jump on top of it. <laughs> they're too small. They're they're too small and too silly. Uh, and then we've got Mamuda. Oh, famous Mamuda. This seems to be a gentle, flower-loving creature, but of anger it is fierce. It's mighty open-handed smack. It reminds me of the time back home when a mosquito landed on my head. 
and my wife tried to get it. Olimar's wife can kill. Never forget. Olimar's wife is basically stronger than a purple Pikmin. What do you mean, basically? Basically. <laughs> Maybe more. We haven't measured it. <laughs> we might never know for sure. Um, someone earlier mentioned that Mamuda have, like, little, like, markings on its, like, wrists and stuff that are very, very similar, if not identical, yeah. to, like, the onion markings. That and, like, this game. they they mentioned it talking about, you know, like, loving flowers and stuff, and it's it, like, doesn't kill Pikmin or nothing. I have to wonder, like, like, sh surely one can think as well, like, oh, this is, like, a naturally occurring pattern on it, it just got these... I also have to wonder if maybe they're like deliberately decorating themselves that way so they can attract like onions and Pikmin to them. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're living in an area that's like so dense with like pellets and like so easy for like Pikmin to re like, like regenerate there and stuff. Like, I think it's I think it's that they're trying to attract them, and then they can protect them. Yeah. Because they like the flowers. They like the flowers. Mm hmm. It's it's. It's an e-thought. I don't know if they ever elaborate on it in the future games. I guess we'll see that if we play the future games, which we plan to, so. Yeah, the, the one thing I remember off the top of my mind is not specifically about that, mm -hmm. but they specifically elaborate more on the relationship between Mamuda, Smoky Prague, and Pikmin. Oh, interesting. That, that, that'll be neat, because, like, the one little bit that we've had for fucking years has just been like, oh yeah, by the way, Smoky Prog is some sort of weirdly formed version of a Mamuda, and it's like, what do you mean, dude? What? Yeah, they, and that's they, all they gave us. <laughs> they basically, they don't give us a lot more, to be fair, but they do give us more information on, like, why that is the case, essentially, which is really interesting. I see, I see. That'll, that'll be fun to get to eventually. Pearly Clam Champ. Is this the Pikmin wiki? Yeah, I finished beating the game and I wanted to read through like all the logs that we didn't see because there's like 70 of these fucking things and, and at, 30 at, days. at most you can see 29 of them in game. So, I wanted to I wanted to read over them because it's fun. It's 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 fun to read about the game and learn about the game and see stuff about the game. Welcome to the chat, Mysterious Pig. Your username is really fucking good. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> I was so caught up in answering the question that I forgot. Oh my god, your fucking username, dude. That's great. Really good name. Anyways, post your pearly clam champs in chat. I should make that- a I don't have any emote slots. I should make that an emote all the same. S speaking of fucking emotes, hey, if you've been enjoying Wayne's <laughs> Sonic streams and you want to do something really fucking funny, you can give me a tier 3 sub and then you can post, um... The one fucking Sonic character that Wayne didn't have in his roster. You can have you can have Pink Dog. You can have Pink Dog if you give me a tier three sub. Oh my god, it's Pink Dog, everyone's favorite Sonic character. I wanna say tier three subs are like cheaper this month, maybe? I don't remember how that works, but hey, you can you can do it. You can, you could pay me money if you want. I'm getting that bigger sub split next month, so I'll get more out of it. <laughs> Dog? Yeah, were you not watching Wayne's Sonic streams? We ended up calling her a dog because she barks. She does bark and growl and yip and attack. She fucking barks like an animal when she moves- well, I guess she- they're all animals, but she barks like a fucking dog, specifically. <laughs> Anyways, you can- you can give me a tier 3 sub if you want. You don't gotta, but you can if you want. <laughs> I'm probably replacing that with something else next month. Uh, anyways, Pearly Clam Champ. One would expect this to be a one would expect this creature to be a mollusk of the sea, but the fact that it is also found in the forest is typical of this planet's oddities. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, huh? This is just straight up like a fucking sea critter, just in the middle of the woods, in like some little puddles. Yeah, huh? Huh? Who put that there? How'd that shit get there? The pearl that rests inside appears to be of great value but it is actually a trap. I mean, it's worth some Pikmin. <laughs> we only lost, like, one or two to them. By accident, yeah. It's it's a little bit of trap in the sense that I maybe could have focused on the fucking 20 pellets, and that would have given me a shit ton. But, oh well. Puffstool. This creature's cap is elastic, negating any Pikmin attacks. Attacking its lower torso works better, but the puffstool lets out spores that turn Pikmin into mushrooms, which then attack me. They return to normal when shaken off. 
We got fucking spores and fungus in this one, baby. Look forward to more of that in the future ones. We got more stuff going on with fungus, which is fun. Different fungus. Different fungus. More fungus. So we we didn't really get to see it or show it off because it, this guy shows up once. And because of how the game works and how you see the models and stuff, we don't really get to get a, get a good look at him. But when the, the the spores get on your Pikmin, they get this really cute model where they have like a little mushroom cap instead of their leaf, and they have like funny like half lidded eyes and like a sad face going on. It's 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 very cute and it's very charming. And they don't bring that mechanic back in yeah. future ones, if I remember right. And everyone is so upset about it. It's. I don't know. I get why they did it, because they're trying to make, to some degree, they're trying to make the games less harsh, less harsh in some regards. Um, but I, I miss the cute little guys. <laughs> they're, they're cute. They're, they're funny. Just little guys. Uh-huh. Um, I remember as a kid, I was, bless you. Thank you. I was obsessed with trying to find ways to make it so that I could keep the, the mushroom Pikmin, just because I liked the way they looked, but you couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't. Unless there's like a glitch that lets you do it. I don't know if there is. There might be. N knowing Pikmin 1, there very well might be. Thank you, Desk Sphinx, for the tier 3 resub. You especially can now post Pink Dog. Please post Pink Dog. <laughs> you live in Louisiana? There's a fucked up crawfish species that lives in mud mounds in your yard? Huh. Crawfish specifically do some weird shit like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I suppose I'm more willing to believe that, like, you know, um, something more crustacean-like is, like, they're more like a damn arthropod. Yeah, it makes sense that the critters like that might find ways to exist, like, uh, more terrestrial-like, but I don't know. For, so for some reason, a, a damn clam still feels weird to me that I can do that. Yes! Pink Dog posted! Yes! Yay! You have to promise me, you have to promise me, one, that you'll watch and support my friend Wayne when he gets back to his subathon, but two, most importantly, you have to promise me every time Amy is on screen that you will post Pink Dog emote. You have to promise me, you have to be my Amy warrior out here, because the fucking devs won't be. <laughs> oh god, they'll never be. Uh-huh. Man, someday they'll fucking figure out what they want to do with Amy. They figured it out in one of the Sonic Advance games. And she just has, like, cool fucking unique mechanics in a 2D platformer that are really cool. And they fucking bungle it everywhere else, because she doesn't have dialogue in that game, so. <laughs> Thank you, Sleepy... Uh, Sleepy PDNG for also supporting the channel with a tier 3 sub and also posting Pink Dog. You're a hero. <laughs> Anyways, Puffy Blowhog. This is a large-bodied flying organism, but it is possible that its interior is as empty as a blimp. If I can land a large number of Pikmin on it, they may be able to ground it. And then, once it's down, it will feel my sprout's rage. Cool. Cool. All of them are feeling so normal about this pig. Uh-huh. Feeling so normal about his fight to get back home. She's gonna be playable in Superstar, so fingers crossed. I mean, she was playable in fucking Origins or whatever, right? As like a DLC thing, question mark. The, the monetization of that game is fucking weird, and that's why I haven't bought it yet. Um, the one thing I saw of her in that, and this might be something specific to her, and it, or it might be just... A, a general glitch that you can accomplish with anyone, and they just happen to accomplish it with Amy. But I think it was end of like Sonic Two or something like that. She just shreds the final boss in like two seconds. It was really funny. I mean, doesn't she have like stronger attacks or like a bigger hitbox because she swings her hammer around or something like that? So that makes sense. That you'd be able to do some silly stuff with that. Yeah. That's what she should be. She should be the fucking brawler. She. She can do straight up fucking hammer jumps in Sonic, in Sonic Adventure. Why don't they let her do that in other games? Just it's cool. It's fun. Design fucking puzzles around the fact that she has like a fucking high jump and a long jump. She has a high jump. She has a long jump, and she can fucking big heavy big attack. Yeah, <laughs> give her that cool. shit. Just let her do that. There you go. There's your move. Literally, back. literally, fuck Sonic Unleashed. The Werehog level should have been Amy levels. Literally. She's in that game! She's like one of the few. She's like, in that game. Guys. She's in that game. The Werehog levels should have been Amy levels. <laughs> Thank you, Witchy Win, for the 37 month resub while I'm on my Amy the Hedgehog rant, I suppose. It, it, it should have been. <laughs> 
that should have been your party. You've got Sonic for the speed levels, you've got a few, like, plane levels with Tails, and you've got Amy as the fucking brawler. They're not brave enough to make Amy playable more often, I don't get why. Women. I mean, yeah, but aside from that, I don't get why. They don't need anything else. <sighs> I suppose. Sheer grub! Today I've learned something new about these creatures' behavioral patterns. They are very vexing bugs. They chew apart the bridges that the Pikmin build. All the effort the Pikmin went to. I must watch for these pests. So there's an interesting bug that happens in Pikmin 1. Well, there's a lot of bugs in Pikmin 1, because there's a lot of arthropods in that game. Smile. But, um, there's a glitch in Pikmin 1. There's a couple. But, specifically with the Shear Grub, if I remember right, it's like when they bite onto a Pikmin, they become immune. So, like, if you ever noticed a Shear Grub and suddenly it's like, it's not taking damage anymore, why? And then suddenly it starts taking damage again and it dies, I think they're just fucking immune. When they've got one in their mouth. They finally removed it for the Switch version? <laughs> wow! Uh, one one compelling reason to look into the Switch version. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. They finally managed to fix it. That's awesome. T Twenty years later, I it, it was still a bug in the in the Wii version, right? Wasn't it? I never played the new Play Controls version, so I don't know. Maybe they also fixed it there, but I do not know. Smoky Prog. Double checked, you can get friendly Puffman through a bug and you can kill enemies with them, but they cannot carry anything or be thrown. Ah, and when you put them into the onion, it removes the fungus. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So you basically get them for a day. Hmm. Smoky Prog. This hideous beast comes from a strange hard egg. Its mollusk like body is wrapped in an unpleasant gas that suffocates any Pikmin that inhales it. Attacking its head is successful, but it's best to eliminate in egg form. So, number one, for anyone who's stuck around this long, hi, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you didn't know what I meant by there's a free egg that gives you 100 free Pikmin, I'll, I'll just fucking tell you right now. Smile. Um, so, there's if you get to it before a certain day or something like that in the water area before the last level, you can find a big egg. And if you just break the egg, nothing happens. But if you let it hatch, it hatches into the smoky prog, which is just this horrible gaseous beast where basically if it touches you in any certain way, it just instantly kills your Pikmin. So it can very easily just cause like an entire party wipe. If you kill it, it gives you a pearl that gives you a hundred Pikmin. So if you let the egg hatch, you do get an item that gives you 100 free Pikmin. You do have to kill the horrible beast that easily murders all your party, though. <laughs> um, something I hadn't really realized. It talks about how its body is, like, engulfed in gas. I always assumed its body, like, was the gas. But no, I guess it's got, like, an actual physical body under there. Which is interesting. And it mentions it's a mollusk-like body. Huh. I don't actually remember ever reading or seeing this specific log, so I'm just kind of scratching my head about this, like, oh, I'm learning today. Hmm. It can also dig up Pikmin sprouting in the ground. Oh my god, can it? It really is a reverse Mamuda. It starts the battle by ignoring you and waltzing all the way up to the landing site to kill everything there. It sure does. I forgot to mention that part. That part I knew. The fact that it kills buried Pikmin, I kind of forgot about. <laughs> that is very interesting for reasons I can't talk about yet. Well, that's fun. That's fun. I can't wait to know what that means in a couple of months. Smile. <laughs> Whenever we get around to doing the other Pikmins. I don't remember how long two and three are. So maybe if we bum rush it a little after we finish up some other things, maybe we can get through them at a decent clip. Yeah, I know it depends on how much you do, because two is huge if you're trying to do, like, everything or even most of everything. Oh, honey. <laughs> I'm gonna try and do everything. So we might be on two for a little bit. We might. <laughs> Three seems like even if you try to, like, be, be a tryhard and do a bit of everything, it's more manageable. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like it's a relatively smaller scale. It has a lot of extra stuff as a thing, especially in, like, the newer version that has all the, like, DLCs and such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got, like, a bunch of optional missions and stuff that I probably also want to hit up, frankly. 
Yeah, because they're fun. Yeah. The fact that it's mollusk-like is fascinating when you consider the Mamuda relationship. Right, yeah, it's like, there's... There's pieces here that I'm trying to figure out when it's like, this is related to a Mamuda. Okay, yeah, it's a weird, hairy biped. By the way, it's like a mollusk. Huh? Hmm, <laughs> interesting. This will be fun to puzzle out once I've played Pikmin 4 and have more pieces to puzzle with. Anyways, Wally Hop. This is a troublesome creature by the water. It immediately tries to jump on and squish the Pikmin. So if I don't issue, quickly issue commands, the Pikmin get flattened. If they could use their strength to hold the beast down, could it still jump? Thank you, Stardust Wishes, for the 38-month resub. Is a Pikmin, a type of shrubbery? A Pikmin is like if a shrubbery was also a little bit meat. So... But they are also your friend. Well, I mean, I guess they're much smaller than a shrub. They're more like, you know, a flower that would bloom on a shrub more than anything. You know how it is with plant categorization. All right, so uh, these are the entries pertaining to the areas. We've read, all, we've seen all of these. You know, they talk about, um, there's a bunch of parts in the spring. Uh, if, if my calculations are correct, I should be able to get all of them, but not all of them. <laughs> Oops. Uh, the forest navel is cute. Um, there's a note here. A file for a second page exists, but is unused and untranslated. The translators probably didn't need the extra page necessary in the Japanese text. Interesting. 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 There's there's a couple cases of that where it's like, yeah, there are multiple pages in the original Japanese and not in uh, the localization. Wonder what the smoky prog grows up into? I don't know if it grows up. At all. I think it just kills as much as it can in the time it has. I think it becomes that because something went wrong and then it kind of rots away. Yeah. Is my understanding. It, with with the, like, Mamuda relationship, like, putting them side by side, you can kind of see how it is almost like an embryonic Mamuda mm -hmm. that just kind of came out early and started rotting. Mm -hmm. Which is fucking terrifying. Uh-huh, the poor thing. Like, no wonder it is just screaming and thrashing. Mm-hmm. See, people refer to the Smoky Prog as one of the hardest bosses in Pikmin, which makes you think about how people consider difficulty in Pikmin. It seems really easy to kill. It just wipes a lot of Pikmin out in the process. He here's the thing. A lot of Pikmin bosses are in one single area by themselves. And you can just, you can get the hell out if you want to or need to. And go regroup and get more things and come back. The Smoky Prog makes a beeline to your spawn. It is one of the few things that will just directly go into your safe zone and go, this isn't safe. Uh, and also, there's no like lock on or aiming properly in Pikmin 1. So if you're fighting that thing, you have to hope to God you're able to jostle the stick just right to aim at the head. Yeah, And if you don't, the rest of its body is an instant kill plane. Right. The rest of its body is you're getting choked out. You're dead. You can't breathe. You're, you're goodbye. And the only way you can attack is with Pikmin. Right. So if you run out of Pikmin, and this thing kills Pikmin that are buried and growing... Well, good luck! You have no attacks left! Mm hmm And then meanwhile, you have, like, you know, something like uh, the final boss, which is in the one area, which you can bug out of and go back to, but it's a long, long-ish crawl from your spawn back to it. It's a straight line, but it's still, it's still valuable time. Um... And like, dude can jump around and just takes out big clumps of them because it's got a big AoE. It's got it's got a lot of big slow AoE attacks that can, if you're not careful, take stuff out. But also, it's something that you can, you know, reposition around and do specific mechanics to take out. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the prog is just, here's the one thing you can do to it. It can do a lot of things to you. It can go after you. It has command of the whole map. Most of it can kill you. It actively seeks out and kills your ammunition. And you have Pikmin 1 controls. <laughs> With no lock-on, a wonky early GameCube game camera, mm -hmm. and guys who just decide to wander into their deaths sometimes for fun. Mm -hmm. So they talk about all the different areas here. Um, 
we I mean, we've seen all of these, so I feel like I don't gotta necessarily read them again. But it's 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 cute, you know, that he's like, oh yeah, you know, the forest navel. It kind of looks like a belly button. I'm gonna call it a dang belly button. Uh, the distant spring. It's all the way off in the distance. It's 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 so far away in the deepest parts of the forest, and I gotta I gotta I gotta fly high and fly far to get there. So it's the distant spring. <laughs> uh, and you know, this is the forest of hope because that's where his parts are, and it's giving him hope that he can rebuild and get and get away. Cute little bits like that. Mm. Then there's all the miscellaneous entries. These entries are written when Olimar has nothing else of importance to say. They are usually about memories from his life in Hokotate, or comments about the Pikmin's nature. To obtain them all, and in this order, one must go to sunset every day and never leave the impact site. This is the only way to see all of them, is to literally throw the game. <laughs> Which is very funny. This is kind of the big part of why I wanted to read this, is these. Number one. When I see the Pikmin engaged in fierce battle with other creatures of this world, I grow uneasy, wondering why they never attack me. Could it be that they view me as a parental figure? A strange, disturbing thought. I wonder if I shall ever be able to escape from this world. How much suffering must I endure before I can finally see my family back home again? Still, when my heart grows too heavy, I take comfort in my efforts. I will get home. Or I will expire trying. So we 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 seen these ones. They're they're uh, all of ours doing his damnedest. These Pikmin are weird, but they're they're being nice to me. Damn, I wanna go home so bad. I miss my kids. I miss my wife. The creatures of this planet breathe a deadly poisonous gas. Oxygen. At present, my spacesuit can filter the oxygen out, but if the batteries for my life support system should fail, I shudder to think about it. Can't breathe oxygen. What other... Someone mentioned it earlier um, in chat that there are, you know, still other elements in the air other than oxygen. Like, you know, there's nitrogen, there's, uh, there's carbon. There's fucking trace elements in neon, aren't there? Hokotade is the fucking weird-ass neon planet. We love breathing neon there. It's so fun for us. 97% nitrogen? Something like that, right? I think. If it's filtering it, then it still has to be something in the air. Right, yeah. Like, he's still breathing in the rest of the stuff. What's in the air? What ain't oxygen? It's, just, it's more than just oxygen in the air. That's, that's, that's how air works. That is how air works. No matter how many of their compatriots fall in battle, the Pikmin fight on. Would this have been a peaceful planet had I never come? No. Surely the Pikmin lived like this before my arrival. They must have. In any case, I must not waver if I hope to return home. My task now is to do whatever I can to recover all of the dolphin's missing parts. Wonder what he breathes out if he doesn't breathe in oxygen? Uh, some kind of carbon nitrate, I suppose? P pure... Pure, unfiltered neon is the only waste material of the average Hokotade citizen. You let that man just sit there and breathe out, he start glowing in the dark. R remarkably efficient. They just suck all that shit in and it's there forever until they expel it uh, some other way. They shit out all of it. I, I said that and I was like, this is nothing. I'm making a damn fart joke. <laughs> I wonder if these Pikmin were waiting for me to arrive. No, not necessarily me, but an alien being like me who could fight alongside them. On this planet, they are a weak species, but maybe they see that they can use the power of an alien brain to climb to the top of the natural order. Such ideas make me wonder if it isn't I who is being used by them. It's... This is an interesting idea that they kind of delve more into, which is something I keep saying with this game, because that's kind of how it works with, hey, this is the first one that was originally only planned as its own original thing and not like a series, um, where they're like, yeah, here's, here, here's some interesting establishing material for the world. Huh, I wonder what that means. And then a couple of games later, oh, huh, <laughs> I see, they're doing more here. 
Uh, but it's 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 interesting the idea of this sort of like social species that has struggled on its own without like anything to really sort of lead it along. I wonder if like in their history they've ever had something like that. Or if they really were just like scrabbling all this time, desperately trying to find like ways to survive and get away from the planet to like not have to worry about nocturnal critters getting them. Mm -hmm. uh, and like almost getting wiped out until uh, Olimar showed up and was like, all right, all right, there's three of you and I'm going to make more than three of you now. <laughs> yeah. We'll get more into this as we play more. There does seem to be the natural inclination of Pikmin to like, need some sort of like separate leader figure. Right, they 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 need something to like command them around in the same way that, you know, like a hive of something needs like some kind of like queen thing in some degree or another. N not necessarily in the sense of like, oh, they need this to have orders and survive, but like still. It, it is part of their ecosystem. It is yeah. part of how they are built to like live and propagate and survive. Yeah. People joke about Olimar being the Pikmin's dad, but you do like to think he treats him with the respect and dignity an animal deserves. He literally does, textually. Like, yeah, he's a biologist. He, he's fucking horrified in any of the entries that are like, oh shit, I got a bunch of Pikmin killed. I'm a fucking monster. What have I done to these poor little things? Yeah. Olimar is very much like, he, well, well again, we'll see more of this. Like, he's, he's a dad. He's like a middle manager. He's, he's, he's a guy who like takes very seriously being any sort of like, position of authority. Uh-huh. He likes going out in space. He likes seeing weird, cool stuff in space. He likes his family. He likes people. He likes talking about the stuff he likes. He likes looking out for people. Yeah. Uh, good news, Snoid, especially in the later games. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff that will make you go, oh shit, that's like a real animal. Mm -hmm. so they please... start leaning heavy on the like, hey, we made a biology, didn't we? We, we made a damn biology video game. All right, let's do more biology stuff. All right, number six. It has been blank days since I crashed on this planet. My reflection in the mirror is looking a little gaunt. And to think my wife warned me not to gain too much weight on this vacation. <laughs> oh, the thought makes me chortle. She would surely be surprised to see me now. It feels as if it has been many years since I saw her last. Fuck, was Oliver like on a break on his way back? Maybe. May maybe he was straight up just like on break and he wasn't like coming back from like a fucking job or nothing, which makes this especially sad that he's like, all right, back from vacation. Olimar, we fucked up big time, go back! <laughs> and like, especially if he's out there without the value, it might have been like, yeah, you know, I have to, I have to go like drop some stuff off. I'm gonna take a few days to myself, like just. Just enjoy some alone time, it'll be it, and then I get to go back and see my beautiful family and get back to work. Oh god, the meteor! Ghost of Christmas Future, I am like almost 90% certain that there absolutely are people out there who theorize that after the events of this game, the Pikmin started purposefully trying to get people to land on the planet to, to lead them. There? Not specifically that... But given the amount of fucking car crashes in Pikmin 4... <laughs> Man, it sure makes a gal wonder, doesn't it? This message is programmed to display one day singular if only a single day has passed, but that is impossible as the message can never show up on the first day. That's funny. That's really cute. This is an ever surprising ecosystem. What has caused this planet's vegetation to grow to such gigantic proportions? In comparison to the Pikmin and the other creatures of this planet, the scale of the plant life here seems inexplicable. Perhaps, long ago, creatures of incomprehensible size walked the surface of this planet. Just imagine. There's, like, there, we see, like, the skulls of bigger critters, and we see, like, you know, the cans and the boxes and stuff lying around, and there's the the, the little bits of pipe, and there's that one level that's just straight up a Ramune bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, e even from the start, they're very much like, hey, are you are you looking around, player? Do you see? You, you, you got your damn eyes on? What do you think? What do you think this is? What does it remind you of? <laughs> it's so damn big. <laughs> what do you? What do you think? What do you think? They they definitely lean into that way more, and I'm told some interesting ways in two, three, and four. Oh yeah. 
Uh, I, I remember when they put out the fucking trailers for 4, I was like, heaping my goddamn gourd, because it was like, what do you mean? That's just straight up a house! That's just straight up the outside and inside of a people's house! Mm -hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> okay! <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's very obvious in that sense in 4, and I keep teasing it, and I'll keep doing it until we get to it. There's something absolutely batshit that they, like, just very casually reveal in there. Mm hmm This is an ever-surprising ecosystem. What has caused this- oh, we just read that one, never mind. Occasionally, when I look behind me, I make some very amusing discoveries. The Pikmin all seem to follow me in the same fashion. But there are always individual specimens that end up performing the wrong actions. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that just the way? I suppose if there are agile, capable Pikmin, there must also be clumsy, dim Pikmin as well. That is the natural way of things. <laughs> Ain't that just the way? You always end up with some dummies. <laughs> uh huh. If an animal figured out something fucking awesome happened when they got something loose and it crashed and hit some nice treat or extremely useful beast, they would start fucking around with stuff like that a lot. Right, yeah, like, you you mentioned birds. There's a fucking tweet I love thinking about that's just like an old fucking beer bottle from, uh, like, a brewery that had been closed for, like, uh, decades. But it's just there in the woods on top of, like, a fucking heap of broken snail shells and corpses because the birds had learned how to pick it up and drop it on snails to crack them open and eat them. <laughs> it's it's cool, it's fun, it's neat. They're, so, yeah, it certainly would make sense that the Pikmin to some degree would go, hey, that guy was really cool and nice and he helped us survive when he appeared. What if we figure out other ways to make other people appear? Not, not even necessarily out of, like, s some people love to go, Oh, the Pikmin are fucking evil. They're doing this on purpose to torture people. And it's like, no, I just don't think they have a concept of, like, you know, society or people who need to go back to their home planets. They're just like, man, those people were cool when they helped us out. What if we could find more? <laughs> not to mention, I don't know if they literally understand, like, death in the way it happens to, like, Olimar. Probably not, especially given how in the bad ending they just go and put him in and he's fine. He's a Pikmin now. Yeah. He's a Pikmin thing. Literally, he's a hybrid. As far as they know, there are no downsides. This guy comes to their awesome planet and hangs out with them. And if he stops moving, they just do what they always do with things that stop moving. And they put them him in the onion and then he comes out and he's fine. Yeah. And then he keeps leading them around. They're, it's awesome. They're coming out of their own onions. Maybe we can put them in our onions if something happens to theirs. That's simple. And, like, I I have to wonder if there's some sort of, like, selective process to the onion where, like, they put in the other critters, those things just get, like, digested in the fucking biomatter and come out as Pikmin. But, like, between stuff in Pikmin 4 and the bad ending of Pikmin 1, it's like, is this specifically just happening to a certain type of a live thing? Or is there a process by which they go, okay, this one we don't melt down. This one we turn into a new guy. I have to wonder. I... Hmm. In the perfect good ending, don't the Pikmin ambush an enemy without Olimar to guide them? They sure do, but but they still, as the series goes on, have many cases where they show themselves wanting a leader. Mm -hmm. Even if they can handle themselves a little better. Yeah, like, that that very much remains because like, they will fight on their own, they will do some stuff on their own. They are also very little guys who are kind of just fucking around and doing their own thing without someone to very specifically direct them. The, and the when that happens... A lot of them die. The AI is still better, but they still want a player character to play the video game. It's very... I'm having a thought about specifically, like, the, the conversion. Uh-huh. Like, can, can, I'm, I'm sorry, can you make this a little fast? Because we have I more to read and it's getting later, honey. I can definitely make it fast. <laughs> sorry to rush you a little. Everything that goes in does turn into Pikmin. It's just, does it turn into a Pikmin shape like Olimar, or does it turn into a Pikmin? Hmm. Right, but but I wonder how that differentiates that if it knows yeah. to do that or if it just happens to do that. It's 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 neat to think about. Kind of makes a fellow wonder. Makes a gal think. Now this one is weird because this one we definitely saw. It is very strange. The scenery of this planet, which I once found hostile, now sometimes strikes me as surprisingly serene. Perhaps the Pikmin have opened my heart to the beauty of this world. I even started thinking there were some parts I do not need. A daydream. I wonder if there's more criteria that makes that one play, because we definitely saw that one in the playthrough. Yeah, maybe that one, it's like, 
Oh, we're gonna pull this up if, like, you've hit X number. Maybe it, like, pulls up if you get, like, your first optional part. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Now, here's one that I have had some fucking obsessive thoughts about for years. My people were born out of the Sea of Stars to come down to Hokotate. And when we complete our lives, we return to the great ocean of stars. But since these Pikmin come from the depths of the soil, surely to the soil they shall return. How very poetic. While it is all alien to me, the basic premise is universally beautiful. This specifically, combined with the fact that, like, some dialogue they have in, like, the other... In, like, hell, even in this game, they talk about, like, fucking zirconium and, like, ionium and things like that. Like... They're, they're talking about, like, real-ass things that we know about in our world that they just use as their own, like, technology and culture and stuff. My people were born out of the Sea of Stars to come down to Hokotare. Hmm. I'm sitting here and smiling so widely. I have some ideas based on some things I've heard about, uh... <laughs> Pikmin 4, and some, like, dialogue I've read offhand from Pikmin 4. Um, <laughs> I, I do genuinely have to wonder. There's, like, one bit of dialogue that had me thinking, like, man, the fucking... I'll put it at this and move on, just because, like, well, we can talk about this more in depth in other video games, but, um... Have y'all ever heard of the... I think it's called the, the Starseed, uh proposal or something like that where it's like hey here's like an idea of how life started on earth it was brought here in like microbial bacterial form on like an asteroid or a meteor from some other celestial body and then from there then you know grew in the the conditions that were on this planet which is 99 percent sure yeah very much a disproved uh a theory of like you know evolution and propagation but uh Fun to think about as just an idea of a thing, huh? Well, moving on. <laughs> I'm smiling so big right now. You literally know more about, like, Pikmin 3 and 4 than I do. So, like, there's there's probably something there that I'm putting the pieces together for that I'm, like, maybe missing some bits about that'll be fun to get to eventually. It's even crazier and funnier than you're probably thinking right now. That's... scary. <laughs> At times, these seemingly emotionless Pikmin act with a blind urgency. For instance, the Pikmin who so tirelessly dig up grass. What could be driving them to do so? Is it merely the promise of a sweet taste of nectar? Or is it some base instinct that is beyond my capacity to understand? Will I ever know? I like to think it's some mix between uh, the Pikmin love Olimar and trust Olimar and want to do everything they can to be stronger and better for him, and... Oh, fuck. Let me get a sip. Oh, fuck. Yeah, baby! Juice! 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 I want my juice. Let me crack open a Modelo! <laughs> Pikmin are famous for cracking up a cold one with the boys every night. Every night. What do you think they're doing in them onions? Hey. <laughs> At first glance, the Pikmin have such innocent faces, but this is misleading. They can actually be surprisingly whimsical. After leaving the group, they dig up plants on their own and frolic about, sometimes never returning to the onion. When I find none following me, I begin to worry. I must pay careful mind to their movements. They sure do love frolicking. Damn, them bitches do love them frolics. <laughs> I, I do love the little animations they do where, like, sometimes you'll just see them, like, lounging, like, painting, like, one of your French girls' ass lounge. Yeah. Like, that one that we saw doing a weird fucking stretchy wiggle? Yeah, what the fuck was that? There's there's a very cute one that I think I've only seen in 3 and 4. I can't remember seeing it in 2, which makes sense. It's more built on the Pippin 1, like, everything. Mm -hmm. But they'll actually just, like, reach up and, like, grab their leaves and, like, pull it down to groom it in a way yeah, that's very cute. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> Pikmin animations is very good. Mm -hmm. Gradually, my repairs to the dolphin continue. This ship is like a part of me. One could even say it is tied to my very essence. Yes, it was a long, one might say epic journey, going from mere repairman to captain of my own ship. But now I'm rambling. He used to be a repairman. 
That makes a lot of sense. He he used to be a repairman, and yet he's still getting fleeced by salesmen, which is so fucking funny to me. Oh, Alamar. I think maybe it's good you don't do that job no more. Uh-huh. I That explains a lot of his shit being, like, custom parts that he was like, I designed this, I built this, I had this, like, specially commissioned kind of thing. And why he's so particular about the way that his ship is built and put together and stuff. Mm-hmm. And the fact that he is able to put together something as complicated as a spaceship at all uh -huh. to escape the planet. Yeah. And then specifically, he's like, yeah, I have the special repair bolt that's like a repair robot, but mostly he's like, yeah, I just use this for like a lot of the software shit that I don't like dealing with. I use this for the small glitches and stuff that are a pain. That's cool. And also he loves his fucking truck and he loves trucking. He loves it. And so he went from just repairing stuff to going, all right, and now I can make my own damn boat and go out boating anywhere I want and go boating forever and seeing cool things out there in space because I got my damn space boat. Olimar's fun. Olimar's fun. I love Olimar. Uh huh. I love this dad. Olimar is one of the most well rounded and deep characters Nintendo has ever done. I feel like that's entirely on the basis of him just being like a fucking 40 to 50 year old dad with a job. <laughs> <laughs> So they have things to write about about him as a person other than just, here are the circumstances of the video game. He can also talk about, hey, here's my job, here's my interests, here's my wife and fucking kids and my home and, you know, my mortgage and what we do for fun and how I met my family and things like that. It's, it's, it's Thinking cool. Thinking about my damn dog. Thinking about my damn weird dog that I got. It's awesome. Looking from this planet into the skies above, I see the pale white moon floating overhead. It brings to mind memories of the moon from back home. I bet that even now, my wife and children are sitting at home, gazing up at our pale red moon. Hang on, dear ones. Your Olimar will return someday. Red moon? They got a damn red moon. I don't know enough about, like, atmosphere to know what would cause the moon to appear red. Would that be specifically an atmospheric thing, or would that be like the makeup of the, the stone of the moon kind of thing? It could be either. It could be both. Maybe both? Could be both. A <laughs> blood moon rises. Because like certainly to some degree, like the fucking sun and stuff is what, and the atmosphere as well, yeah, you're right, is what causes the colors of the moon to be the way they are. Yeah, But it could also be dependent on like the actual surface of the moon, dependent on what's, what's making it up. Mm-hmm. When I am surrounded by legions of Pikmin, I always picture the face of my boss, the head of the pilot union. Thank you, Cleaver Bacon, for the 39 months. Pinkman Happy Pinkman January at September. <laughs> he was always so sharp-tongued with his orders, but I imagine he must have felt much the way I do now. It's funny how a change in perspective can bring with it a deeper understanding of others. Olimar's Union. Olimar's a Union man. We, we weren't just fucking joking about that. Olimar's Union. <laughs> I feel like that also means that, like, fucking Sacho in the next game must not be his, like, boss boss. That's either a middle manager or, like, a client for the pilot union. I... I wonder. Cause I because Sancho is not a union man. Right, because, like, specifically, <laughs> he talks about the pilot union in this... And then in 2, he talks about Hokotare Freight, specifically. Yeah. And it's it's easy to just think, oh, maybe they just, like, you know, it was an optional bit of dialogue. They had a different idea. They changed it. They retconned it. That's entirely possible. You could also say that Hokotare Freight is a member of the pilot union. Yeah, or is, like, hiring pilots from the pilot union. Or something or something to that degree. It's, it's neat to think about. It's neat to think about. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's these bits of the world, and sometimes they're talked about in different ways in future ones. That doesn't necessarily mean the old stuff is uh, done and dusted. Yeah. It could still be. Sometimes, even if you're like, oh yeah, this was probably just retcon, it's fun to consider it like in the context of like, yeah. let's pretend that this is all intentional. Uh -huh. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Can it mean? Does it still fit with like what is being worked on right now? Yeah, like it would fit for Hogatari Fight to be like, we need some pilots for our space truck. Go, let's go down to the pilot union and like hire some guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or something like that. Maybe Olimar is technically just like part-timer at Hokitate and is technically, you know, being licensed out from the union to other yeah. places kind of thing. I can't help but hear a slow hissing sound inside my head. It seems that the stress is causing the last of my hair to fall out. My wife always warned me not to let the little things bother me to prepare for the bigger things instead. Very well. 
I shall heed her sage words. This shall be the last time I count my precious, precious strands. One, two, two. Aww, <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Man had tinnitus. Hey, did you know that to some degree, uh, tinnitus can be like a fucking stress response rather than like a hearing damage thing? Yep. I, I know that because a friend of mine went for a fucking, was it an MRI or a CAT scan? Uh, MRI. An MRI. Because he's had uh, a fucking tinnitus and hearing issues. And they were like, oh yeah, by the way, like to some degree your hearing is fine. It is like a stress response from your brain. Which is, uh, huh. Brains is weird, huh? You would be surprised the things that like stress can do to you. I would not be surprised given how stress has caused me so much problem all my life. <laughs> Oh, my darling. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You know how it is, unfortunately. Yeah. No more counting your hairs, honey. I have too many fucking hairs to count right now. <laughs> Fuck it. If if I start losing hairs, I'm just going bald the rest of my life. I could rock the bald. Literally do it. Go full butch. I, I could rock the fucking bald shaved look. I could do it. It'd be hot. It would be hot. But I, I like my hair too much to shave it right now. Oh, it is nice. <laughs> Maybe someday. I feel like someday I'm just going to go like, nah, I don't want the hair right now. Shave it all off and it'll be cool. But not at the moment. Unironically, I recommend shaving at least part of your head at least once in your life. I it, probably it, will. It's good for you. Mm -hmm. Today's dinner is instant space noodles once again. It feels as if I've been eating it forever. And I never liked it much to begin with. Certainly, I did not want to drain my savings, but perhaps I should not have budgeted so tightly. How I long for my wife's home cooking. Aww. Dude, dude is out here buying the cheapo garbo so that he can have more money at home. And also in his piggy bank. The piggy bank comes up again in Pikmin 2, which is funny. <laughs> I cannot seem to sleep. At night I am overcome with uneasiness. I am the only one to have ever stood on this planet. The Pikmin follow my orders, but frankly I have no idea what they could be thinking. Ah, yes. It brings the faces of my children to mind. May I have courage. Oral shit is weird. Sometimes when you get lightheaded, it is accompanied by a distinctive hiss that sounds like air leaking out of your head. Mm. Yep. Uh, ears and stuff are very strange and are linked very closely to uh, nose and throat and eye and brain stuff because it's all in your damn head. Yeah, all that head stuff is just like one funny tunnel in a bunch of knots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's it, it it is sweet though that he's like thinking of his damn kids looking at the the, the Pikmin is like I have to protect these things. I gotta protect these damn things. That's a damn dad. Uh -huh. I've been preoccupied with my own problems, but I am certain that my worries pale beside my family's fear for my safety. I am always amazed at how much my children have changed when I return from a lengthy trip. Even with their father gone, the children grow. When I return I shall load up my family and take them with me for a change. Oh, buddy. Oh. He still hasn't gotten to do that, poor thing. One must imagine all of them are happy. I swear to God. Pikmin 4 DLC. Family outing. Four player mode or whatever. <laughs> Please, it'd be so cute. Come on. Come on. Let the kids throw Pikmin around. They'd like it. Let them all ride on the dog. They, they bring the fucking grub dog. Bring their damn dog right on him. <laughs> I had a horrific dream last night. I was home. My wife was cooking the Pick Pick brand of carrots I love so much, and I was eating them. Again, reminder, Pick Pick carrots are a brand of carrots, not a type. It's, it's marketing. Although, sometimes the marketing is a specific type of plant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's probably some wiggle room there. Who knows? Still, it is funny that it's specifically like, yeah, this is a damn brand I like. A specific brand of carrot that I am into. <laughs> Though I had eaten my fill, she kept bringing more fresh carrots until my mouth was full. I awoke gasping for breath. I am certain it is because these Pikmin remind me of the carrots that I had such a dream. You ever have the carrot dream? Yeah, sometimes. I am always intrigued as to whether or not such vast numbers of Pikmin can truly sleep inside such a small onion. What sort of vessel is it inside? Does it somehow transcend the laws of physics? Just once. I would like to have the chance to see it for myself. 
good and or bad news. Well, that's a little funny considering Pikmin 4. <laughs> um, I'm also led to believe that the way it works is uh, End of Evangelion. They all become the slop together. They're all in the slop together. And then they can come out. It's like a chrysalis. You know, I guess it kind of is, huh? The bug do kind of become a weird gunk in there, don't they? They yeah. become a goo. They become a goo, and then they turn into a new bug. A gross, disgusting goo, and then they're a new guy. It's beautiful. Nature is amazing. My daughter, who was always so sweet in her youth, has become so precocious lately. I can only imagine how many headaches she's caused her mother in my absence. <laughs> With her parentage, I'm certain she will grow into a beautiful woman. Still, as a father, a daughter's beauty is a seed that blooms nothing but worry. I don't All know. Right, <laughs> I mean, I kind of get that. That, like, damn, yeah, people are going to be fucking weird women, unfortunately. But, like, I don't know. You, you got to have some trust and faith in your kid. This is why you teach her the fucking roundhouse. Uh huh. This is this is extremely middle-aged dad worries ass post. <laughs> teach her your famous rocket punch that you have literally been doing for twenty days. <laughs> it's that easy. It's that easy. Some amount of days have passed since I began my search with the Pikmin. They are an ever mysterious life form. They grow like plants do, but they're also mobile and active like animals are. Individually, they seem weak, but in truth. I am beginning to believe they could be an exceptionally mighty species if properly organized. I certainly hope so. The message is program again. It, it can say one day, but there's no condition under which it will say one day. Which is funny. Hey, I mean, you know, uh, account for every possibility, even if the possibility you think is technically impossible. That way, uh, if something fucking weird happens, you can still keep going with the program execution. I get it, but it is funny. I have been stranded on this planet for some time, and I have grown used to my life here. At times, I even find it quite bearable. I know that as soon as I return, I'll once again be subjected to daily ridicule by my despicable boss. Ah, there you go. The boss sucks. <laughs> we know that guy. <sighs> if only I could be a Pikmin. No! I must not think such thoughts. I have a family. I will not give up. Ever. <laughs> the thoughts are creeping in. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. That oxygen poisoning, huh? Uh-huh. At this point, I no longer care what happens. Surely not even a last-minute push can guarantee my success. Now that I think about it, my wife always said that I gave up too easily. What does she know, anyway? When did she become a licensed psychiatrist? <sighs> now I am upset. I guess I will just go to sleep early tonight. Oh, the stress is starting to get to him, poor oh, guy. Buddy. This is, this is, you are a couple days away from dying and it is starting to settle in, poor thing. Mm -hmm. And you have been working tirelessly for all of those days in a strange and violent world. No, Zobagoo, he has no reason to believe that. And I also have, I don't think he would have any reason to believe that he would still be alive if they put him in there. Given that they, he put whole ass animals in there, they turned into Pikmin. Yeah. The only thing he has seen them put in there are things that are dead that become Pikmin. The only thing that is certain is the batteries will run out and picking them. I suppose I have done well to get by without much motivation. I have made it this far without any hope. I must do all that I can with what time I have remaining. Vigilance, Olimar. Vigilance! And then the final one is very fun. I don't have much to write today. When I inspected the onion's legs, I saw that they were covered by tiny little hairs. It was kind of disturbing. The onion is also a plant animal. The onion also is alive. <laughs> Didn't know the hairy onion legs reveal was this early in the series? It sure is! Yeah, it's funny, because, uh, no spoilers, we did see that discussed literally last night. Yeah, I, I was watching Bugs and Frankie last night, because they were going through a bunch of the Pikmin 4 logs, uh, and that's uh, always a fun time listening to the reading of some of that stuff. Uh, and they also mentioned there, in one of the logs, that the onion has little hairs on its legs. And it's funny, just thinking like, ah, this is new to them, because they did not go through 
Pikmin 1, and also even if they did go through Pikmin 1, a bunch of this dialogue is very, very hard to trigger. Yep. Again, you only get this guaranteed ones in this guaranteed order if you do nothing and then die. If you throw, if you throw on purpose just to read the logs. Sensory filament so it can perceive touch even through its tough armor plating? Probably. Probably. What did they think the onion was they didn't think it was alive? No, my friends definitely thought it was alive. They just didn't know it had hair. They just didn't know it had hair. <laughs> Looking at the in-game models, even the new fancy shiny ones, you would not assume that's covered in a fine layer of hair. Also, they do get like more and more organic as, as the games go on. You mean Olimar? I mean, he probably has some damn thoughts about what the onion is in relation to the Pikmin. He just ain't writing it down here. Others. These messages? This messages? That's wrong. You gotta correct that. Come on. These messages were found within the game's ROM, but do not seem to show up in-game. Unused number one. This particular message is not shown because once the player has collected all 30 ship parts, a cutscene plays. After that, the game shows the final analysis screen, never to have Olimar write in his log again in that saved game. The text was apparently supposed to be seen after all ship parts have been collected. I have finally recovered all 30 parts of my ship and succeeded in escaping this strange world. Hang on, message in chat. To be fair, the concept of organic machinery does come up in Pikmin 4. It comes up in Pikmin 2. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> I have finally recovered all 30 parts of my ship and succeeded in escaping this strange world. To think all the times I almost gave up hope. On the now distant surface, the brave Pikmin that aided me in my perilous quest are running about as if I had never come. Will our paths ever cross again? At any rate, I can finally return to my home world. I feel relief, of course, but also a certain sadness. I can't exactly say. Perhaps I am just thinking of the long journey through space that still lies before me. This time, I shall set my ship's navigation system so that I encounter no more meteors, and I shall enjoy a long, relaxing sleep. I shan't forget you, Pikmin. Aw, sweet. Very cute. Maybe this time I'll use the fucking gun I have on my ship to shoot down any fucking meteorites that come towards my damn ship, and then I can go to damn bed. Unknown number one. This message doesn't seem to appear, seeing that there's already a similar one. And there's like a little route choosing thing that explains more how it goes on the technical level choosing different bits. Once this is confirmed, the message will be properly organized. How do these Pikmin choose a route to return to their onions? Uh, oh, no, this is route choosing as in like the one that was talking about how Pikmin choose routes. Okay, never mind, I'm a fool. Uh, interesting that there's like a similar one that doesn't ever come up. How do these Pikmin choose a route to return to their onions? If an obstacle blocks their path, they just seem to carry their load in a tight circle. It is obvious their intelligence is limits. It seems I must order them to tear down the walls to open the way. Here's this one, which is a little haggard, a little, a little harrowing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unknown number two. Being so short, this message seems to never appear in game. This is probably an unused message similar to the above, except for the circumstances where the player fails to make it off the planet. It would eventually be repurposed as Entry 73 of Olimar's voyage log in Pikmin 4. I am so very tired. In the Japanese version, if the player continuously ends the day without doing anything, for Day 28, Olimar will write, Ah, uh, Tsukarita. Literally, I am so very tired. Interesting that this works in the Japanese version, but not the, the localized one. Hmm. They only wanted to terrify the American children a little bit. They terrorized the American children a whole lot. <laughs> Internally, each page has its own file. They're found inside this. Blah, 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 blah. The file name starts with RE, they, and then an underscore. They have an ID. Uh, and optionally have an underscore followed by the page number. This is a list of all the IDs if you want to if you want to look at them. There's uh, all the different ones. There's Japanese text with two pages referring to the HUD. Japanese text with two pages referring to the controls. 
Japanese text referring to the Pikmin's paleness when they're idle. Oh, right, yeah, they do explicitly mention that, like, the Pikmin are, like, pale when they're just on their own and they have, like, a bioluminescence to them when, when you call them out. Mm -hmm. They have a bioluminescence to, like, their, their, like, upper bits when they're just kind of hanging out there. And that's, like, that's textual. That's not just, like, a gameplay thing. Yeah, yeah. Japanese text referring to the blue Pikmin's ability, referring to the end of a day, referring to the oxygen, referring to the remaining days. We got our couple of unknowns. They're all stored in a weird order, which is interesting. I suppose that makes sense since they're not necessarily like called out in a specific order in most mm -hmm. cases. To sum up, there are three messages with unknown triggers and are presumed to be unused on the section titled Others. There are some files with their text in Japanese that talk about stuff not found in regular voyage logs. Uh, there are also some second pages for some entries, those marked with note 1, that are unused and untranslated. Finally, some of the logs, those marked with note 3, are programmed to display one day, despite that never happening in-game. And here is an entire little sheet of all the different drawings that you can see. We've got uh, the GameCube controller, different buttons, the HUD, Pikmin glowing, different Pikmin, the life cycle, carrying the pellet, again, the life cycle, uh, fire, <laughs> burning, swimming, oh god, the bombs, your spacesuit, a cute little picture of the family. I reckon they probably use this for like multiple entries about the family. I suppose that would make sense. Mm -hmm. um, building bridges, bub orbs, the flint beetle, candy pop pods, etc., etc. All the little critters down here. Bread bug useful. Bread bug useful. Bread bug useful. I do like this hog having like a buck and bronco ass picture. That's a fun ass. <laughs> That's hog. good. That's good. Oh, Mamuda, sweet gentle Mamuda. Oh, Mamuda famous. Oh, wonderful Mamuda. Hey, the egg that gets you 100 free Pikmin. That's the smoky prog. They're showing the head as, like, a solid bit with, like, arms, and then the rest is, like, gas just emanating from it rather than, like, a lower torso. Mm -hmm. it, hmm. it looks more explicitly like that in another game in which it appears. I see. Okay. So to some degree, the way it looks in one is just, like, a, a, a graphical limitation, I suppose. Which makes sense. Fucking GameCube. Uh-huh. Uh, there's some trivia here, which is immediately disputed, so <laughs> whatever. Wiki moments. Uh-huh. Uh, we got, we got through all the different logs. Um, and so, there's one last bit I'd like to do for stream, which I suppose we'll do after a break, because it's, it's break time coming on up, and Damn, that'll probably be, yeah. We, this was a hell of a long stream, which is about what I was expecting, given how we play and talk about things, hun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll finish it up, and then we get to go to bed. And yeah. you get to go to bed. Yippee! Oh, you can go to bed now if you want. You can, you can fucking go to bed whenever. You can watch the bot of this if you're interested. Or you can look at this stuff on your own, you know? It's, it's, it's cool. I get it. We we went through the meat and potatoes of the game. I figured this is just extra for any late night sickos who want to hang out. But, this uh, is delicious dessert. Hey, the VOD's always there for you if you want to check that out later. It's certainly a long one, so uh, don't blame me if you gotta hop off. But if you're sticking around for the rest of it, uh, we're getting up for a stretch right now. I need to get more water. I'm fucking thirsty. I ran out of water a bit ago. <laughs> oh no, you should have told me I would have gotten you some. I could have. I didn't think to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting up. I'm having a stretch. Do the same for yourself. We've been doing this for like six hours and a bit, so take care of your body. Uh, maybe get a drink or a snack if it's uh, been a while and you need some of that. We're just going to be running ads for three minutes, so get away from your computer for a bit. We'll be back real soon. See you soon.
Hi. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, to all of y'all sticking around for this last leg of the stream, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking around. You're up way late from what I normally do for my streams, so uh, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I hope you're having a good time. I hope you're enjoying some reading and idle chatting about Pikmin. It's uh, it's a game I like a whole lot. It's a series I like a whole lot. It's been uh, it's been real fun to share that with folks, and I'm very excited for eventually getting to the rest of it with Puzz. We uh, yeah. realistically, when I get back home for when we can manage to have stream time together, because you're gonna have to go a little bit more nose to the grindstone on like project work and yeah, work I've, work. And... I have like a couple weeks right after Holly leaves that is just okay. I need to just fucking get some because I have like at least two maybe three big projects do mm -hmm. and uh -huh. another thing i won't like announce this because this isn't mine to announce but uh, please stay tuned for a really cool stream i'm going to be doing with friend of the stream jake oh yeah i'm probably going to try and be there for some of that schedule permitting yeah keep, keep an ear out for that you're australian so the stream has been awesome absolutely perfect for your time zone <laughs> let's go finally one for the australians out there finally what once I'm able to move out, like, more permanent, like, West Coast, it'll be a little bit easier to do later streams like that, because it'll be less late than I normally do. Mm-hmm. Just given how time zones work. And especially for the ones with me, uh, there's a good chance I'm going to have a day job. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so if I'm going to join in for streams like this, it will be after dinner. Yep. And that's... I'm, I mean, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm I'm sure I'll have some days where I do streams where you're out and about, and then some days where it's like, all right, I'm waiting for my wife to get home so we can play a game together. And that'll be fun. That'll be fun. That'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, hang on. First exposure to the series at all in any capacity, and it rules. Fuck yeah, Hell I fucking yeah. adore Pikmin. So, so I'm glad to be able to share that. Anyways, um, so so we're gonna have some limited time to do streams together when I get home just because like Puzz is gonna be pretty damn busy and then also has to worry about like midterms and finals and stuff because in grad school um uh, honey be brave I believe in you thank you so you know we're going to have to figure out what limited time we have to do streams together so we're probably gonna want to finish the stuff we've already started like uh Layton and uh Ghost Trick Maybe getting back maybe getting back to Yakuza is a bit of a tall yeah. order, but maybe. Our first priority is Splatoon 3, because we have like Oh one my god, we have one stream left of Splatoon 3 and that that's over. I fucking forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Are me and Puzz moving in? Not we yet. Wish. Not yet. I fucking wish. Uh, I this I'm literally going back home to the East Coast this weekend. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm a little sad about it, but you know, it is what it is. We made the most of the time we had and I'm very yeah, happy about that. Yeah, and we've that. made more serious plans about someday but, making it happen. <laughs> but literally we both kind of had the epiphany of like, okay, shit, fuck. We need to figure out 
when and how we actually move in more permanent like together and like where and so mm -hmm. and um, then, like talk more seriously about where do we want that to be yeah how do we want that to be and like it sounds like for a lot of reasons being west coast ways maybe actually being m me in california permanently might be good for a lot of reasons and so like then it's a matter of like figuring out the fucking logistics of that moving through a different damn country is a whole goddamn mm -hmm. thing i've never done it before and like flip side me keeping an eye out like okay since i am going to have a day job where are my day job right. opportunities are there opportunities for me in Canada. Haha. Uh -huh. So, like, you know, both of us trying to be flexible depending on what happens in the next couple of months to a year kind of thing. But, like, at, at the very least, it just has me, like, okay, I definitely want to move out ASAP to be in the same fucking time zone as my partner. <laughs> and that would certainly make, like, returning trips and visits easier. So, yeah. uh... It has not helped that... Again, not gonna fucking dox myself, but the area I'm in now has been very good for both of us for a lot of reasons. It's very nice here. It's very nice. It is also a kind of smallish town with expensive and limited real estate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's not impossible, but if we want it to happen, it's going to <laughs> require a lot of serious work. Uh-huh. Uh, no, uh, Blue Graves... Duke's issues that he's been having are kind of different from what we would have to go through. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, I'm glad that things fucking worked out for him in the end. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Shouts the fuck out to Duke and Sophie. Lovely, lovely folks. So anyways, uh, when I get home, I'm gonna have to fucking figure out what my, fan and my bleh, finances are looking like and how viable a move would be and, like, when I could do it. <laughs> so, uh, I don't... I don't want to have to fucking be like, and by the way, I'm doing a move, so please help give me more money so I can do that. And like, hopefully I got enough in savings, but also like, I suppose if something like that happens, uh, that's, that's why. Mm -hmm. Literally moving on Thursday, Godspeed. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, I suppose the fact that I have a laptop now would mean that like doing stuff on the go stream-wise would be more viable, but also I do very much miss my desktop setup. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have a desktop set. I it haven't is. had it. Once I am more like permanent in where I'm going to be longer term than mm -hmm. I am now, I would like to have a desktop set up for like a lot of reasons. Hell yeah. Desktop nice. Desktop nice. Desktop useful. Desktop useful. Redbug useful. Redbug useful. Should we read that developer interview? <laughs> yeah, let's get to the last thing that I wanted to um, read today on our Picking Them stream. Picking Them. So. There was, I found one of those like Nintendo developer interview things for Pikmin 4. And very specifically, I was interested in it because this part one delves into a ton about Pikmin 1 and a little bit about Pikmin 2 and like, you know, the development of it and the whole process behind that and like, you know, how the success of it ended up making them want to like make more in the series type of thing. And it's, I read a little bit of it and it was a very interesting read and I figure, hey, forcing myself to do it on stream is going to get me to actually fucking read the best, the rest of it. So, and it's interesting to, like, look at it and discuss. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to be reading the other parts where they talk more about Pikmin 4, just because we would be here for years. <laughs> and and I gotta... also we haven't played Pikmin 4 yet. And also we haven't played it yet. So I thought at least this would be interesting context for stuff that we did see in the streams. So let's give it a look. Uh, in this 10th volume of Asset Direct Developer, an interview series in which Nintendo developers convey in their own words Nintendo's thoughts about creating products and the specific points they are particular about, we're talking to the developers behind the Pikmin 4 game for the Nintendo Switch system, which launches on Friday, July... T July 21st! Is that when it came out? I guess so. It simultaneously feels like it came out so much earlier than that and so much later than that. Yeah, like, I... I thought for sure it was late, but no. No, that tracks. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I I can't tell time by honey, tradition. Honey, what year is it? I, I can't answer that for you, honey. <laughs> I, I can't tell time by traditional means, so I have to do it in, like, events in relation to each other. So I'm like, right, that's right. I remember Frankie saying that he was going to celebrate the Welcome Home stuff going live by playing Pikmin 4 with bugs. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. So it was like right after that launch, which was like mid-end of July. Mm-hmm. All right, part one. Yo, thank you Mix Mixed Up. That 40-month resub, hell yeah. Pikmin for 
Pikmin, Pikmin for, for well, no, this was Pikmin for GameCube. Now we're reading about Pikmin for GameCube. Pikmin for the <laughs> Nintendo GameCube. Ah, uh, thank you for the 40-month reset. You've been around a hell of a long time, and I appreciate the continued support. Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Stop saying that! It scares me! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm I don't sorry. know why you're saying it like that. It gives me the fucking willies, but it goddamn does. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's the whitest thing I've said all day is willies. <laughs> Oh. I love you, hon. I love you, too. <laughs> Let's read about Pikmin. My awesome, sexy, scary wife. <laughs> Who talks about that game that no one played. Hey, Pikmin? <laughs> no, the other one. Only one I got, boss. That's okay. Part one. <laughs> Pikmin 1 people versus Pikmin 2 people. Before we start, in addition to the developers behind the Pikmin 4 game, this time we've also invited developers from the first Pikmin game as special guests. I would like to start by asking about the origin of the Pikmin series. Did the series start with Miyamoto-san proposing the concept? And so Miyamoto goes, uh, As I recall, Hino-san and Abe-san were initially coming up with a lot of ideas as directors, right? Shigefumi Hino, referred to as Hino from this point on. That's right, Abe-san and I were directors at the time. Our discussion on this project started during the transition from Super NES to Nintendo 64, so we had a strong aspiration to utilize its ability to display a large number of characters on screen. Super NES and N64, yada yada, you know what they are. It was the first home console from Nintendo with the ability to display large through scale 3D game environments. The controller was equipped with a 3D control stick that enabled player characters to move around freely in a 3D space. That's a least important context. Mm -hmm. if, if, if it's obvious context, but important all the same. Listen, some of the people in Shadow Babies. <laughs> true, true. These streams are intended for mature audiences. By the way. <laughs> If you're if you're like if you're a damn baby, you gotta go to bed. Yeah. You, got you gotta school be tomorrow. At least sixteen. Come on. <laughs> I don't really put a hard age on it. I just you gotta act a certain way. Mm -hmm. And also, these streams are fucking you know tagged the way they are. So like, I don't know if Twitch catches you being a damn kid, they're gonna ban you or whatever. That's not much I can do about it. <laughs> Masamichi Abe, referred to as Abe from this point on. Kino-san originally came from an artist background, so he was handling character design and world creation, while I was in charge of game mechanics and stage design. I think, hang on, actually, at the start, they showed, like, yeah, um, Shigeru Miyamoto, representative director, <laughs> representative director fellow. Funny way to phrase it. Yuji Kondo, entertainment planning and development department of production group 10. Uh, Shigafumi Hino, entertainment planning and development department production group number 10. Uh, Masamichi Abe, same. I, I thought they would say more about, like, what their specific roles are and were. Uh, damn, I was kind of hoping for more, like, yeah, you know, director, artist, uh, scenario programmer, systems programmer, etc., etc. Oh well, oh well. This project wasn't initially an action game, was it? So Hino goes, yes, that's right. Back then, we envisioned a game that would control a lot of characters with AI. The game we had in mind included creatures with AI chips in their heads to make them think a certain way, and you f and you would control them by swapping their chips. So players would control them by assigning thought chips such as combat, heal, or help friends to each of them. As they explored the map and gained more experience, their chip capacity would increase. In other words, they'd become smarter. At the same time, we added personalities such as grumpy and cowardly via emotion chips, and depending on which emotion chip the character had, the response such as attack or defend would change. And so we were experimenting with these kinds of prototypes with Kondo-san. Thank you, Rivets Health, for that brand new sub. Much appreciated. Thanks for stopping on by. Yuji Kondo, referred to as Kondo from this point on. Ignore the giant male-female you just saw. We'll get there in a sec. <laughs> <laughs> I was still a newbie programmer in my first year around that time. After joining Nintendo, I was assigned to this team and got a mysterious specification document from Hino-san, completely out of the blue. <laughs> I devoted myself to experimenting with what kind of actions I could apply to a large number of characters with AI. Junji Mori, referred to as Mori from this point on. I joined the team as a designer about a year after Kondo-san. By then, the game was already bustling with little creatures. And Hino says, at the time, our vision was to have a top-down view of the game on screen, so we made the gender and personality of each character identifiable from what's on their head. And you can already kind of see the sort of, like, early days of, like, yeah, you know, we, we want a little guy, they have, like, a little glowing thing on their head to identify them in some way or another. Uh, they, they got arms and feet. Uh, they're, they're some kind of little thing. Um... They are, like, explicitly gendering them in this, like, original early idea, which is kind of funny. <laughs> 
I wonder if they would have made, like, any sort of weird fucking mechanics, like, yeah, you know, men and women act a certain way with each other, and women act a certain way in between themselves and men, and, like, stuff like that. I... Kind of glad they didn't in the end, quite frankly. Of all the things that were removed in this prototyping phase, I'm glad gender was one of them. Uh huh. As someone currently in a move, hope this bit helps. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, considering that Twitch is giving me a higher sub split next month, uh, it's certainly gonna help more. So, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Genuinely, right now is the time to sub, if, yep. you, if you got the means yep. and the desire. S -s Subscribing is now going to actually be somewhat better for me. So, like, hey, it's actually a thing that I can feel more justified in, like, pushing. <laughs> but, you know, there's always tipping directly if you want to go that route as well. But also, subscribe subscription money is nice because it's a fucking number I can look at on the monthly and be like, okay, I can estimate how much money I'm getting from this on, like, a monthly basis. I can budget using this. And then, like, extra tips or stuff and savings and stuff for when I need it now and stuff for next month. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's di di different systems. It works out good for the most part. Yeah. When, when they actually pay me my money instead of taking half of it. Oh, the dream. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wow, that's worlds apart from the Pikmin we all know. And so Hino goes, It looks a bit Yoshi-like, don't you think? But we felt it lacked impact as a character. Like, yeah, it's, it's cute, but it feels very... It's very generic, and it doesn't really say or sell much. It doesn't really say, like, yeah, these are little artificial intelligence creatures. This is just, nah, there's a damn blob. This is a Mario enemy you forgot about. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> This is a guy that shows up in Paper Mario in, like, a deleted scene. Yeah. This is a guy you see on the Supper Paper Mario blog and go, Ah, oh, shit, what was that guy's name again? Ah, Supper Mario broth talking about an unused sprite. Marvelous. I'll take another sip of my chanterelle. <laughs> chanterelle is a mushroom. I was trying to think of a name of a fucking alcohol. No, no, take a sip of your mushroom, honey. Oh, I will take a sip of my chanterelle. This is a Smash Bros. trophy you go huh about? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> These are fucking... What's the math game for children? Do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? Blue balls. <laughs> Blue balls math game for children. That's a good sentence, huh? Zumbinis. Zumbinis. That's it. Thank they you. are Zumbinis. They're Zumbinis. They're Zumbinis. Wasn't something extremely like this in the Thousand Year Door? That seems vaguely familiar, but I'd have to play that game again to see. Look forward to that eventually, I suppose. Yay! <laughs> so Miyamoto goes, There was also conversations about making a character that girls around the age of high school would find cute, right? Yes, so then Morisan drew a pile of sketches. And this design was selected by unanimous decision. Haunted-ass fucking Pikmin. So, so they went through a stage of like, all right, these designs are kind of nothing. Let's go and try and think of some, like, visual designs that will, like, actually work and be good. Um, and so we came up with a couple. We don't get to see what the other ones are, because everyone unanimously went, nah, this one's great, let's do this one. Oh my one. god, this one's still got gender, look. Uh huh. sure does! It's got a damn beard! This one's got eyelashes and a bow! <laughs> um... And it, it, it is funny, they, they, they talk more about this later, but, but it is funny when they're like, yeah, we were thinking of something that would appeal to, like, high school age girls and stuff, and they're like, yeah, all right, maximum hot topic. And they were right. <laughs> they were right. They, they, they talk more about them in specifics in just a little bit, and so that'll be fun. But, like, it's, it's so interesting to see them, like, basically so close to the fucking start get, like, the Pikmin design that they ended up going with in the end. And then, like, you know, there's some there's some minor differences and stuff. There's variations. Here's this weird little thing, this he-who peanut-looking thing. He-who <laughs> peanut. And these, like, cool, weird environments. You know, we see, like, different flower ideas on them. Maybe the idea was, like, there'd be different flower types that do different things. Uh, certainly there's the idea here of, like, the little, the little bit at the top being for, like, grabbing and fucking stabbing. It's a knife. <laughs> they can hold things with it. They can pierce stuff on it. Uh, different, like, bulbs having different sort of elements to them. Like, you got, like, a weird fire one here. You've it, It's interesting to see how, like, similar these are in the end to, like, actual things we got. Like, this is a fire one. This is, like, a, a, a rock one. You could argue maybe this is, like, a bomb rock one or, like, a stone one that use in Pikmin 3. They've got this weird dead poisony looking one. They've got this water drop looking one. 
it's interesting, like, it's always interesting to see whenever, like, a series has, like, so many ideas right from the start that in some way or another end up finding their way in, you know? Yeah, it's cool. That's why I love to see concept stuff like this. Yeah, it's neat seeing, like, okay, you use this but in a different way, or, like, I can see where you're going with this, and then I see, like, the exact point where you swivel and turn into something different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Suddenly it looks more like the Pikmin we're familiar with. I noticed that having a mark on its head is aligned with the initial concept. And Mori goes, I can't recall why we put a leaf on its head. But since the character's tiny, maybe I thought that it needed something to help it visually stand out. So Miyamoto goes, I was strangely attracted to this design. I liked the idea of plants walking. We were saying things like, it'd be cute if it sucked up water from the leaf on its head. <laughs> yeah, this is the face I make when it'd be cute if they sucked up water. <laughs> <laughs> I do like his old Pikmin lapel pin, that's cute. I, the, the, the outfit is cute. I am obsessed with the shit-eating grin for, <laughs> Yeah, these guys were gonna suck up water, it was gonna be awesome. <laughs> A simple suck of water and they would be off to the races. Was there a particular inspiration that led to this design? Back then, I really liked the works of Tim Burton. Not the works, the world. Oh, I really liked the world of Tim Burton. Tim Burton's famous world. His, his awesome world that he made and he lived in. And it's like, it's so fucking obvious to see in these initial sketches. Like, it's it's so, it's so, yeah, it's so clearly there. That's very much like a Tim, like, if you've seen, like, the actual drawings that, like, Tim Burton, like, specifically Tim Burton as, like, a visual artist does, not like a Tim Burton movie or whatever, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, multiple artists work on things like movies. Yeah. But like his ink sketches from back in the day, that's very Tim Burton. Yeah, and like, you look at how Pikmin 1 especially is from like a thematic sense and how it's this like, you know, weird, foreboding, dark, uh, like creepy world that still has this like kind of sense of like whimsy and delight to it. It's like, yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense and that yeah, was an inspiration. Yeah. Back then, I really liked the world of Tim Burton, so I wanted the designs to not just be cute, but also give a sense of eeriness or some emotional weight. That's why I was drawing the sketches like this with the style that layers scribbling lines, and so we get to see more, more, more cool looking concept art of them standing on a cool big old tree. Tim Burton is an American film director and film producer, specializes in drawing eerie but comically designed worlds. And so Hino goes, Nintendo games up to that point were strongly associated with the bright and vibrant designs of the Super Mario and Legend of Zelda series. That's why I wanted to take a bold step and just picked a somber, mature, and mysterious world. So we said, eh, let's watch a movie together for inspiration. And the choice was an animated movie called Gumby the Movie. We all had puzzled looks on our faces while watching it. We sure did. <laughs> Fantastic Planet is an animated movie released in France in 1973 using a production form called Cutout Animation. The original title in French is called La Planète Sauvage. I don't actually know anything about Fantastic Planet. I literally, like, googled it when I was first reading this little interview, and I was like, oh, huh, I've never heard of it. And I showed some pictures to Puzz and was like, hey, you know stuff about animation. Have you ever heard of this? And she was like, it looks familiar, but I don't really know. Yeah, like, I've definitely not watched it. I don't think I've heard of it, but some of the stills we looked up look familiar. <laughs> I, I gotta be real, I kinda wanna watch the French art house animation that inspired me. I kinda Pikmin do, now. yeah. <laughs> can we bring that to good movie night? I don't know if it's good. <laughs> we can bring it to interesting movie night. We sure can bring it to interesting movie night. We should we should hit we should hit Paintbox up about another yeah, movie they, night soonish. They'd be into it, I'm sure. Oh, they probably would. They probably would. The movie you mentioned seems memorable in many ways. The kind that gives you nightmares. So this was an inspiration for Pikmin? Since we were creating a game that deals with living creatures, we also read a book by Richard Dawkins called The Selfish Gene. <laughs> Fucking Dick Dorkins over here inspiring their work. <laughs> not Miyamoto, though. Oh, I'm not sure I've read that. <laughs> well, it had lots of information about the weird ecology of living things, so I read it to fuel my imagination. It was too difficult for me to understand. <laughs> I I love that they were like, maybe we should read some biology books. And they pick up a fucking Dick Dorkins book and are like, ah, this is too much. I'm going to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> we watched all kinds of films for inspiration, like indie films from Europe or artistic films you wouldn't find in regular video stores. It was an interesting time with lots of experimental footage coming out with innovative modes of expression, like ones that deliberately layered, deliberately layered the same images repeatedly. So Kondo goes, speaking of on-screen expression, 
When we were first developing the game for N64, we expressed the idea of many characters being there by combining flat boards called billboards to create characters, thereby lightening the processing workload. Um, if you want examples of billboarding in N64 games, I mean, the Paper Mario stuff is the obvious one. They're all just like, you know, a bunch of flat sprites always facing the screen. What if you made a whole game that was just about using billboarding? Right, but if you want more, Mario 64, if there is any enemy that, like, has, like, a big sprite of a circle in it, like, you know, a bob -omb or a scuttlebug, that's an example of billboarding. Here's just right, a straight, flat object that is always facing towards the screen to give the illusion of an actual, like, 3D object with depth. It's cool. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the original idea was that they would all just be a bunch of billboards that you would control and, like, move around. Yo, thank you, Melody Burst, for the raid. Yo! Hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. This is the maximum coolin' hour. We're chillin'. We have beat Pikmin 1. Uh, I am reading an interview from the developers about the, the development of Pikmin 1. So, uh, hey, it's it's late. If you gotta head off, uh, you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you're a fucking pervert like me and you love reading developers talk about how they make their video games. Hello. Welcome. We're just a little bit around halfway through this one, so, uh, maybe more like a third. <laughs> There's some pictures. Uh -huh. When the platform changed to the Nintendo GameCube, we were finally able to express each individual character as a 3D model. Nintendo GameCube, a home game console released in 2001. Etc, <laughs> etc. Et it is mainly categorized by being a cube for games and the adoption of 8 centimeter optical discs for software. And so Miyamoto goes, In the early days of the Nintendo GameCube, I also worked with a different team doing various experiments on what's called Mario 128 to see what would happen if over 100 instan- if it- if it had over 100 instances of the- the player's character. And so there's this, like, quick little video of it. This was, like, one of the earliest tech demos that they showed off publicly for the GameCube. Mm-hmm. Yippee! Could this be too many Marios? Is it possible this is far too many Marios at once? はい、7、8、はい、出ました。はい、え、地形をちょっと動かしましょうか。we can deform the landscape. Mario's all over the damn place. Mario's all over the shop. You'll be a Mario too. Let's make them fall down. Uh, they don't show it in the rest of this video clip, but they also make the world of pizza, which is funny and cute. Uh, and we're about to get into this, but uh, for so many years, people just assumed, oh yeah, Mario 128, and that was like a tech demo and direct inspiration for like what they did on Pikmin, right? 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 <laughs> Please look forward to the rest of me reading, which I'm going to do right now, I guess. <laughs> Look forward to the next sentence. Oh, honey, you got a mouthful of damn Oreos. I do. I love you. I love you. Mario 128 is the tech demo from the Nintendo GameCube announcement, right? And so Kondo, who at the time was working on what would become Pikmin, says, We didn't know about the existence of Mario 128. So it's not like Pikmin was influenced by Mario 128 in terms of planning or technology. <laughs> Completely independent evolution of ideas for, like, game ideas and tech demos and stuff. The GameCube just sort of broadly loved to show off how many things it could show you. Yeah, it was an exciting time in like fucking video game computing where it was like, damn, look at all these graphics we can render. Look at how many different independent things that we can show off to you. And it was before people really understood like tech demos on a very broad societal scale. So it was just I like mean, a lot of people did, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of like, oh my God, why didn't we get 100% realistic Zelda Gandor sword fight! Oh, yeah, there was also that, too. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> There's a lot of, like, so they're showing us this because this is what they're making, right? Right. But many new ideas came out of Nintendo GameCube's ability to move a large number of characters, which wasn't possible back in the days of Nintendo 64. Another one this immediately makes me think of is all the fucking scenes in Mario Thousand Year Door, where they have so many of the little guys on screen at once and you have to like move through them or lead them around or smack mm -hmm. them out of the way. Damn, they really did just love going, look at all the shit we can render all at once on the GameCube. 
Look at all of our guys. Don't you love all of our guys? Uh-huh. Look at how many different guys we can have all at once. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I suppose it's not as, like, in your face, but there's some of that even in, like, Mario Sunshine, where it's like, look, we got a whole town of, like, 3D NPCs who all are, like, kind of milling about and doing their own thing, and a bunch of strolling stews. <laughs> it, that's definitely to a lesser degree, but yeah, to some degree, it's it's certainly related. Mm -hmm. uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, we're at Abe here. Once the design had been decided, the game design team experimented with ideas one after another as they came up to understand how to make it fun and interesting to control these creatures. We tried things like forming a squad and making them throw balls or battle. Damn, balls. Ball. But we couldn't quite get to the point where we knew how to make it interesting as a game. At the time, when we were creating gameplay in which you throw these characters at the enemy like missiles, Miyamoto-san asked us, what happens after you throw them? So I answered that they'd surround the enemy and start hitting it. Then he goes, can't they stick to the enemy after you throw them? I mean, what would happen if they were stuck to the enemy's back or its weak points or something? Yeah, I remember. So the team experimented with attacking them, or attaching them to the enemies, and then everyone got all excited, like, ooh, I threw them and they stuck! <laughs> also, after defeating an enemy, we thought it would be satisfying if you could carry it back home. So we actually had the creatures carry the enemy, and they looked just like ants carrying a cicada. Once again, a big hit with everyone! <laughs> Everybody loved this. S someone earlier mentioned when we were reading some of the, like, uh, the Olimar logs, the one where they just kind of like spin around in a circle and don't know where to go. Like, oh yeah, that's like ants. There's like multiple bits in here where they compare Pikmin to ants, which is interesting. Yeah, it, it makes sense once you start getting into the like, a lot of little guys who work together and carry things. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like at, if you hit that point, you start naturally thinking like, damn, ants do that. It's like let's, ants. It's like bees. Let's look at ants and bees some more and get some ideas. Mm-hmm. So Hino goes, lots of ideas were added. Like if a creature sticks to an enemy's back, it can attack, but if it sticks to its mouth, it'll get eaten. Even when a creature gets eaten by an enemy, there was also ideas like not letting it get swallowed whole, but instead of having the enemy drag it into its mouth to munch on. <laughs> and so we eventually added screaming sounds and ghost effects to depict its dying moments to the bitter end. We decided to just really fuck up them kids. Bye! <laughs> Off he goes. In the end, we sailed on a gameplay loop in which the creatures would increase in number as they brought their enemies they defeated back. But right before we had a final product, even Miyamoto-san seemed a bit hesitant and said, I don't know. I wonder if it's really a good idea to have the number of creatures grow with each dead enemy. Is it too much? But we pushed for it in the end and said, we've come this far, let's just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> for a brief moment, I wondered, are we dead set on doing this? But I guess that's how the food chain works in nature. And so Hino-san goes, Creating a real-life ecosystem wasn't our primary plan, but we did intend to convey a touch of somberness, not just cuteness. Like looking down on a lifelike world from a bird's eye view. Yep, there you go. They're there talking go. about specifically the bird's eye view to make it seem so small and kind of like, yeah, you know, it's the circle of life. And it can be kind of grim sometimes, but that's, that's living. Mm -hmm. It's still beautiful. And when you look at the enemies, many have mysterious designs that seem like they'd exist somewhere in nature. Frog! It is like Frog! You know Frog! This reminds me of Frog! Frog, you know him! It's- That's not a frog! What the fuck that? Help! What in the goddamn hell? Help! Oh, it's gone. Never mind. And thank God for it. We're all okay. <laughs> so Miyamoto goes... It's full of unique characters, right? I think the design played an active role in this game. That's not to say we took an art-first approach. Rather, the game's design was based on what actions Pikmin would perform. So that approach is Nintendo-like. Although the character and world design, as well as actions like stick, throw, and carry had been decided, it took us a while to finalize the gameplay loop. There were various elements floating around, and we couldn't quite fit them together and figure out exactly what the characters should do and what would constitute completing the game. In Miyamoto-san's mind, though, there was a plan to announce Pikmin at E3 in 2001, where games for the Nintendo GameCube were going to be revealed. We, we, we all know what E3 is, even though it's fucking dead, we know it. <laughs> With that in mind, it's interesting that 4 switched to a lower camera angle. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Um, I see you were in the raid, so you missed that. Uh, but it was like... The, the, the talk about how, like, they're... Pikmin 1 and 4 are both going for different senses of, like, yeah, you're fucking tiny in this, like, massive, looming world that's like, kind of out to get you. And they 
in four, they kind of go more towards for that with like the more zoomed in over the shoulder camera look, like more intentionally. And then Pikmin 1 is very much like a zoomed out bird's eye, like there's a fucking vulture swarming above you waiting for you to get picked off. <laughs> I, do, do, do you get it picked off? Be, because picking them? You can laugh. You can laugh anytime now. I'll wait. Start laughing for my wife! Oh, come on now. <laughs> so as the producer of this game, I pleaded to Abe-san, I'll join as director, so please give me three months. I'll step down if it fails. <laughs> Miyamoto just like, dude, I'm literally so fucking desperate for this to be a launch title. Please let me fucking help out on the project so this can happen. <laughs> Please give me and my little plant boys a chance. I, I guess the fact that they were like, yeah, we want this to be as early to launch as possible is part of why, like, the scope of Pikmin is probably as small as it is. Mm -hmm. Let's let's make something that is, like, you know, replayable for the sake of getting a high score, and that is, you know, a relatively confined thing with, like, limited things to get and, like, limited small levels that you can go to. Yeah. It's... This is something you and I kind of talked about. Mm -hmm. It's very similar with... Luigi's Mansion, which is another yeah. that was on the GameCube at launch. Yeah. Like, I think people were saying it even beat Mario Sunshine to launch. Like, Mario mm -hmm. Sunshine came a little bit later, so yep. that was yep. the Mario game yeah. at launch. And it's this weird, experimental, very limited in scale thing, and it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's cool. They they were able to make cool things, because they were like, all right, we, we want to try and get this out at launch, so we have limited time to work on this. What's a very solid, small idea that we could work on and put out that it would be, like, worth the money, because people would want to keep playing it for some reason or another? How about Luigi sucking them adventure? How about Luigi sucking them and businessman picking them? <laughs> Luigi's Mansion was also supposed to have a time limit, apparently? Huh. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I think, I think that's been somewhat debated. Like, there's some ah. evidence that you could interpret as it having a time limit, okay. but they've never found, like, you know, like, a timer in the code or anything of that sort. One of those, one of those arguable things, like, who invented French tacos? Mm -hmm. There's, like, there's, like, a unused cutscene that you can see in some, like, test footage, and they don't know if it was, like, oh, this was a time limit, or, like, mm -hmm. this was for, like, a demo or something, where, like, essentially... Luigi, like, gets thrown out of the mansion and, like, stands up looking all fucking super depressed. Mm -hmm. And so people assume, like, oh, that's because there was a time limit, and that's the cutscene you saw if you didn't rescue Mario in time. Mis Miserable, depressed, useless, worse-than-shit Luigi render is one of my favorite Luigi renders of all time. <laughs> and I'm so sad that it's unused content. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Kondo says, That's when Miyamoto-san put together all our scattered ideas, hardly leaving any behind, and do a single game flow diagram. By the way, Pikmin were called Peaky or Picky back then, so that's what you see on this document. Uh, and I'm so sad that it's fucking blurred out and also untranslated, because I wish I could read all this. I know! I want to see, like, what what was, like, the core loop in this, like, revision. I mean, it's almost certainly just, like, stuff they talk about later and also very close to, like, what is the final. So, like, we can, we can, we can pause it what it says, but also, like, you know, there's, like, a traditional UFO-ass UFO drawing here. There's a weird fucking biped here. There's like some kind of critter here, colors here. You can see a flower over here. It's like, uh, uh, there's, there's the moon here. See, so they got the day night thing already, but like, I don't know. I, I always, I always wonder. Yeah, I always even wonder. if it's just, oh, this is the stuff in the final game. It's interesting to like, see them like refining towards that and chew on it. And like the fucking heart and the dagger here is the narrator just being like, wow, this is really interesting. Like, thanks man. <laughs> It begins with throwing these characters from the squad to give them orders. The goal is to carry the object home. So the goal isn't to bring a certain number of Pikmin to the end point, but how it works is you'll need to gather enough of them to be able to carry the objects. On top of that, he shared with us the purposes that enemies and plants serve, how a day passes, Pikmin biology, and the mechanisms by which Pikmin grow in number. Miyamoto came out here and was like, all right, I got this. I'm a biologist now. This is how they work. <laughs> he became Olimar. Uh-huh. He's a salary man who decided to get into really into biology one day. At first, the goal was to lead Picky all the way to the exit. That would have been so much worse as a game. <laughs> uh -huh. But I didn't like aiming for a goal set by someone else, like, you'll complete the game if you bring 50 Picky to the endpoint. I mean, who decided it has to be 50, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, X numbers required to carry an object made more sense to me. If you want to carry something that looks heavy, you need more Pikmin. Everyone can understand this concept intuitively. That's why I started to think about this game in terms of how efficiently players fight enemies, transport objects, and grow their squads. This is... Sorry, go ahead. Already, at like, this early bit, there's, like, you know, the thoughts of, like, doing things efficiently with, like, limited mm -hmm. time and resources, which is cool. Yeah. 
But like, get to the end with Fifty is interesting to me because like, they didn't exactly do this. Mm -hmm. It's more complicated than this. Yeah. But they kind of leaned more towards that in two, where it's like, okay, if you want the reward at the end of the dungeon, you need to make sure that fifty Pikmin survive to the end. I mean, yeah, but that's 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 kind of a combination of both. Yeah. Because you still gotta Again, drag the thing home. It's not that simple. It's yeah. Not, but it is interesting that they kind of pulled some of that back in mm -hmm. that sense. And, and even then, they have like they have like me mechanisms so that like if you do lose some dudes, you can still get through. Like exactly. What, like you can re you can still replenish. That's what Bulbmen are there for. Yeah. It's cool. Our favorite guys. My friend Bulbmen. Uh, so this diagram shows you where each element is located in the game. Right, I read all this? Yeah, it's like, yeah, okay, I read, yeah, all, yeah, that. You okay. read all that. So back to Miyamoto. At first glance, this diagram just looks like a bunch of cryptic sentences strung together. I mean, flow diagrams for programs tend to. But if you follow each sentence one by one, you can understand the program's flow with a single sheet. In other words, nothing other than what's written here will happen. It always happens with game development. We want to do this, we want to do that, and we end up with lots of new elements. Then the director says, well, I guess we'll have to figure out how to fit them all together and flees the scene. <laughs> all laugh. <laughs> laugh now. All laugh. But this diagram is also a declaration that we won't do anything more than what's written here. Unless we set those boundaries, we can't develop with so many people involved. I figured I'd better draft them myself before bossing others around, so I wrote it all down while discussing with Kondo-san things like how AI works in the system, whether the processing will be able to keep up, and if not, whether it could be replaced with other mechanics. Only after seeing this diagram was I finally convinced that it would work as a game. By the way, Pikmin were originally called Piki, as it says here, right? <laughs> and so this is fun. Remember that one name from the credits I told you to remember? So Abe goes, during development, we were using the word ipiki to count these characters. In Japanese, ipiki means one small animal. And so you, that, that's something you know linguistically about, like, Japanese, right? Is they yeah. have, like, different sort of, like... Japanese and Chinese, and I would assume probably, like, a lot of other Asiatic languages, Korean, etc. I, I only know Chinese and Japanese, and mm -hmm. both very limited. Mm -hmm. But they have a lot of very specific counting suffixes. Right. So, like... And, like, counting words. Yeah, so, like... Depending on what kind of thing you are counting, you will use a specific, like, suffix. So, like, there's one for, like, if you're counting specifically human people, there's one if you're counting, like, I think there was one that's, like, small, thin objects. So, like, <laughs> straws or, like, grains of rice or something mm -hmm. like that. And there's something for small animal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they're just referring to them with the word that you use to refer to a small type of critter. Colin san who is working with us on the program, heard us counting these creatures and mistakenly thought we were calling them picky. And they start laughing. Colin Reed. Remember from the credits. A programmer who is a member of the former Entertainment Analysis and Development Department at Nintendo, involved in the development of titles such as Star Fox for Super Famicom and Metroid Prime Hunters for Nintendo DS. Literally, a funny mistranslation amongst the team had him think, Oh, you're calling them this? Okay. The, the guy who was presumably speaking Japanese as a second language heard people using a term he didn't know and went, Oh, that's their name, huh? I think it's less that he didn't know, or, or I'm assuming. I, I'm assuming it's less that he didn't know and more that he maybe just misheard at some point yeah, or another. Yeah, exactly. One of the two. And then maybe just, both. And then you just, you know, filled it in. I've certainly done that with English and French before. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, can confirm there's different categories in Korean. That's cool. Learning about language stuff. Yeah. This sounds a thousand percent like early game dev, just stuff being in jokes. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I see. So he thought the counter Picky was their name. In some cases, I see that it's written Picky. That's right. Picky eventually evolved to Picky, and when deciding its official name, we settled on Pikmin. We thought it sounded a bit like Pick Me. So it all ended up working out in the end, <laughs> because it ended up sounding like something thematically appropriate. And then Miyamoto goes, it kind of sounded like Vitamin 2. So we thought that was good. <laughs> I see. So after this diagram had been made, it all came together well. About two months after that, we announced it at E3. But we were actually making edits to the announcement trailer at the 11th hour. Miyamoto-san would ask us to revise the game footage, saying, I want to fix this part of the script, and we'd quickly make adjustments, and so it went on and on. <laughs> Miyamoto-san then took what we'd completed at the last minute and hand-carried it on the plane to LA. That's... 
That sounds like every like creative project I've either tangentially heard about or been a part of, but also horrifying for the same reason. <laughs> oh, no, it's super scary and also unfortunately very common in so <laughs> many fucking creative practices, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of things that are very common in video games, at E3, I spoke as if the game was finished. <laughs> I thought it was amazing. <laughs> When Pikmin was announced, I was under the impression that the development was close to being done. And so Mori goes, But at that point, there was just one stage, as I recall. Plus, it was a layout made exclusively for that show. <laughs> That's, like, something that I've heard come up a lot, like... Oh, no, this is extremely common practice for a video game. It's like, mm -hmm. you have your, like, basic systems and like mechanical stuff that you want to show off and you're like all right we've got the foundation here we haven't really had like you know the time and the resources yet to put together all the individual levels or whatever because that's just kind of how the process goes for a lot of dev teams and so what you do is you make a vertical slice which is you take all the stuff that you have and then you specifically make a sandbox for it to show it off mm -hmm. and then there's this bit of like okay are we going to do that with the intention of like this is something that is never going to escape the demo. This is just so people can, like, see what we're up to. Or we are going to make, like, the fucking tutorial stage or, like, something that we will repurpose in some way in the actual game. Uh-huh. Because, like, I think it was fucking, of course, Cyberpunk, I heard, that, like, they... Their already bad, like, development in Crunch got worse when they basically had to stop what they were doing and- And make, work on a demo kind yeah, of thing? a demo that would have no place in the final game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I think people get, like, weirdly up in arms about it, about how they think it's, like, super disingenuous of developers to do stuff like I, that. I care less about that and more about, like, oh my god, you have an already stressed dev team and it's like, okay, make something for one show. Yeah, I know, but I'm talking <laughs> about something else. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> like- I, I think some, like, game-playing people get, like, weirdly up in arms about how they think it's, like, super disingenuous of developers to, like, do a thing like that, which I, I mean, yeah, in the sense that it's like, hey, here is a demonstration of, like, the system stuff, and, you know, things can still change during development, and mm -hmm. they put together a stage specifically to show off what they have worked on rather than to show, yes, and this is the final product or whatever, and so, like, yeah. In that sense, yeah, it's going to be different because that's how showing off early stuff works is that, hey, this is what we're working on right now. There's going to be more and different later. That's how working on something works. That's, that's, it changes when you work on it. That's how the creative process goes is things change over time. Mm, yeah, I think that's silly. Mm -hmm. It's it's and it's a whole fucking thing. Yeah, that I've never really super understood like this. I don't know. To some degree, there's stuff like this. Not quite to the same scale, but stuff like this, like in just like straight up software dev, where they're like, yeah, here's like our application. Here's a demonstration of like this part of it working. And it's like, yeah, you know, we have a bunch of the back end logic working and stuff, but also we don't have like our fucking servers and databases. And we don't have like all the proper UI stuff done. So here's like a quick fucking scratch mock up that we made look pretty. And it does these couple of things that we want to show off specifically. Here's this function doesn't work. This function doesn't work. Don't worry about this. This isn't done yet, kind of thing. Here's your one fucking test user you get to use for a very specific case that we want to show. Show off. I hope you enjoy playing with Albert Test Case. He's the one human we have in the system, and he's not real. <sighs> in my defense, I made that announcement because I believed we could pull it off. <laughs> I was confident that we'd finish the game. Going back a little to our discussion about the gameplay loop, I believe the term Dandori is used in Pikmin 4. Dandori is a Japanese word that means to think about planning and efficiency in advance to get things done smoothly. Was this gameplay loop referred to as Dandori already established during the development of the first Pikmin? So Miyamoto goes, simply put, the idea was something that I came up with while observing ants in my garden. But the reality ants again. Ants. But the reality was a bit more complicated. Even before the Pikmin game came into the world, there was, all, there was all manner of PC simulations where you would have to, for instance, choose whether to eat grains of rice or plant them to grow more. I've always wanted to create this kind of gameplay where you manage things. For example, as a manager in your workplace, you think about who should be given what task to get things done. You have a small project here and a large resource-heavy project there, and it's this sense of accomplishment when you're able to streamline and manage all that efficiently. I thought it would be interesting if we could play with this concept in a rich world with many AI-controlled characters. And so Abe says, during Pikmin and Pikmin 2's development, We were calling it a task management game internally, weren't we? Yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of RTS. Mm -hmm. Good morning, uh... Le 
Lepom? Lepomi? I'm probably butchering your name, and I'm very sorry, but good morning all the same. Uh, we're about to wrap up the stream because it's getting a little bit later in this time zone, but uh, we're, we're having a little reading adventure after finishing our video game. Close enough? I'll fucking take it. You can feel free to tell me how it's actually pronounced. <laughs> and I'll, no promises, but I'll try and remember. <laughs> but I got memory problems. So Hino goes, We couldn't find the right description of game genre that could accurately represent the product, so we referred to it as an AI action game. Genres, huh? <laughs> Games are fun because of the continual trial and error. Pikmin seems to be often associated with his characters and world, but it does possess fundamental fun as a video game. As you repeat the same gameplay, you develop your own technique, which improves efficiency and results in higher scores. I love all these guys in their matching jumpsuits. They are just straight up like wearing like some work-ass work clothes, and then Miyamoto's out here with his funny little Pikmin shirt and his little lapel pin. <laughs> The fun of playing repeatedly and outdoing your past self, right? There was even some players in the original Pikmin game who went for a perfect game without letting a single Pikmin die. <laughs> Yo, fucking shoutouts to Sebmall. <laughs> right now, Sebmall straight up did an entire playthrough of Pikmin original where uh, no one died, and it sounded like a fucking nightmare. I could never, but man is braver than God for it. <laughs> man also really fucking loves Pikmin, so hell yeah. That's a 10 out of 10 playstyle. Wait, really? Yes. Yes, he actually beat the game with no Pikmin dying. Even I wouldn't want to try it. It's too hard. <laughs> On the other hand, the first game had a time limit where players had to complete the task within 30 in-game days. If they missed, they'd have to start all over again, which felt too long for some people. So we eliminated the time limits in Pikmin 2 and introduced more Pikmin types and treasures. We also created a catalog and made it a game about collecting things little by little. That playstyle changed from time management to type management. Ha! Huh, that's, that's a cute yeah. way of looking at it's it. It's interesting because, like, it's definitely de-emphasized, but I feel like time limit is definitely still mm -hmm. relevant in terms of, like, every single day. You yeah. have a limited amount of time in the day to do things. There's, there's only so much you can do in a day, but now it's not you have limited days. It's... Uh, you have as many days as you need, but you gotta you gotta go out there and manage your resources and get more things. The longer you take, the more chances there are for all your dudes to die horribly. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I'm assuming it probably works similarly to one. Like, eventually things are gonna start respawning. All that hard work you did, that big guy is back again. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it's kind of interesting then how Pikmin 3 ends up being both a time management and a resource management thing, where it's yeah. like the the amount of time you have left is directly correlated to the amount of goodies you're able to get while you go. It's, yeah. it's neat. That's why I've always been so interested in playing Pikmin 3, specifically because it's that sort of like blend of the two, like Pikmin 1's time limit and Pikmin 2's like going out and getting treasures type of thing. Yeah, and it's, I don't know, I know there's like, um, and not entirely unearned, but like a reputation of like oh three and four are so easy now they're easier they're certainly easier yeah. in some ways but like at the same time the consequences for fucking up are <laughs> debatably greater i mean it's always kind of been that way in pikmin yeah. you know i i suppose i'll have to play it for myself to really see but like it seems very much like the way pikmin's always been you 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 have one major enough slip or enough like you know million little cuts and it's like mm, damn we're fucking bleeding out what the fuck do we do now we're running out of time mm-hmm which is, which is fun. I enjoy that type of stress. Yeah, it just, I don't know, there's something to me about, like, not only are you running out of time, but, like, if you have a bad day, it's like, I'm running out of time, and I'm running out of resources. Yeah, I mean, that's what Pikmin 1 was like. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's true, just the resources are three Pikmin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how Pikmin 2 ended up, but we had multiple discussions on what direction to take with Pikmin 3. The first game provides a deeper challenge, while the second game is broader in terms of content. One could argue that a bunch of things in Pikmin 2 are harder. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess they mean harder in the sense that, like, you have a limited amount of time with which to beat it. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's maybe what they're like. Moving on. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, honey. We're, we're, we have to go to bed soon. <laughs> it is almost midnight. You have work tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry for being like, we gotta go, but also... <laughs> Uh, actually, no. What were you going to say? I changed my mind. Oh, God. Can I remember? I'm sorry. I Okay, I remember. I guess it's like... Because in... Pikmin 2 is harder. Pikmin 2 is so much harder. But in theory, 
you can just keep trying until you get it. Mm -hmm. Like, you can go back up and restock your Pikmin. Keep on believing. Yeah. And you can go back and try as many times as you want. Right. If you have a wipe on, like, day 20 of (laughs) Pikmin 1, you dead. That's an entire day gone, and you have to spend another day just dedicated to getting more dudes back instead of doing any progress. Yeah, and then hope that the next, once you fill up again and go back to the guy that wiped you, you can get it this time, because otherwise Uh that's another two, three days. Uh Uh-huh. Or you can just restart. Or you can just restart. You can just restart the day. (laughs) Kiki. Players were divided as to which game they preferred, and some people even talked in terms of being either a Pikmin 1 person or a Pikmin 2 person. In the early development phase of the third game, we were competing with several programmers to see how many spaceship parts we could recover in the Forest of Hope from the first game, within the one-day time limit. In the end, we agreed that having that deeper challenge was still more interesting than having a broad range of content, so for Pikmin 3, we went back down the route of the first game. That That is interesting. In a lot of ways, you can very much see that Pikmin 3 mm-hmm. is very much a Pikmin 1-inspired Pikmin. Yeah, I have literally heard people say, like, okay, so Pikmin 3 is Pikmin 1-2, and Pikmin 4 is Pikmin 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pikmin 3 is, hey, here's, here's a gentler Pikmin 1 if you want to dip your toes in, kind of thing. And Pikmin 4 is... Here's Pikmin 2 that doesn't hate you as much. Here's a dog. No, doesn't hate you quite as much. <laughs> it's, Have a doggy. It's certainly kinder in some ways. Yeah. By the way, tower defense. Get fucked. Also, there's a tower defense <laughs> mode. Uh, we added a mission mode on top of the main game and designed it so that players could train up their skills to be able to complete the main game more efficiently. I think that's when we started to use the term Dandori to describe the gameplay, right? And so Kondo goes, that's right. We realize that task management games give a sense of accomplishment that even people who don't play games can relate to. It's like when you're doing housework or cooking. Once you get used to it, you start to think about Dandori, and then you get things done more efficiently. I think that process is fun. So that's how you came to describe it as a Dandori game. I can see that each title in the series has been through has been thought through so that the fun of management stands out. And it's interesting how they talk about how they, they very much intentionally made each game feel different from each other kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Looking back at it now, I think there was always this sense among the developers that we should return to the direction of the first game. But ultimately, once the third game was released following the direction of the first game, there were some people who said they preferred the second one. <laughs> mm-hmm. So as a result of numerous considerations over a long period of time, the fourth game welcomes people with various different tastes. There were completely different takes on how Pikmin games should be between those who liked the style of Pikmin 1 and those who preferred that of Pikmin 2. So maybe Pikmin 4 can finally bring the debate of Pikmin 1 people versus Pikmin 2 people to an end. (laughs) Oh, a very long period of time. That's a, that's a neat little interview with some insight into how uh, Pikmin 1 and some bits about how 2 were put together. Yeah, it's neat seeing, again, the, the, the very, like, intentional way in which these things were approached and thought through and designed. <laughs> so we uh, have some fan art. We have a little bit of fan art. We have some damn fan art. We've also got fucking fan art for my damn birthday that I forgot to show off. So let's show that shit off, because it was way fucking cute. And I love it, and I want to show it off. So let's do that now. Oh, a birthday! And then we wrap up the dang stream and go to bed. Yeah. Open that shit up. Here we go. Starting up with this one from Sign, my friend Sign. This one's adorable. No. <laughs> you can't tell I am standing on a stool in this image. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you. I love this one. I literally almost cried when I saw it when you first posted it, Sign. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here's a good egg. That's a damn good egg. Let this egg hatch for one single free holly. Thank you to H. I'm sorry, your name is being oh, cut off by streamer that. mode. Oh yeah, you can check. Yeah, I can do that. Who's that? I have powers. Who's that? Uh, let me see. That's the wrong... I clicked on our server instead of your server. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is... Healing Mind. Thank you, Healing Mind. Very cute. Uh, this one here from Butch Wario. Good Great. fucking name. Can't watch the stream, but that is okay. Hope the birthday's been treating you well. Have a drawing. Very cute. Thank you. Very sweet. I love this one a whole hell of a lot. Thank you. Uh, Who's this next one from? From Ed Dragon Catman. Happy birthday. Have the first thing that popped into my head. You straight up made me look like a fucking hermit crab, and that rules. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Thank you. Now, this one is a fucking personal favorite of mine. Oh. This this, this is HRAB, right? Yep. 
<laughs> Thank you for giving me my own personalized death is certain. I am li I'm literally going to treasure this forever. The instant I get home, I'm fucking downloading this on my hard drive so I have it forever. <laughs> Thank you. I adore this. It's so fucking good. I want to, like, get this printed on crushed velvet and hang it in our future <laughs> home. Yeah! I mean, the original is a t-shirt. <laughs> so, hi! Little Kiki is standing on her funny pink square and looking. She wants us to go to bed. I know, honey, soon. We we'll be there soon, sweetie. Uh, who's this next Awesome Birds from? Awesome Birds is from Rockysaurus. Fuck yeah. Big fan of the birds. I I like this one because the, the, the little me looks very peanuts. And then you've yeah. got like the fucking very beautifully like rendered hair of the puppet bird motherfuckers. Yeah, very good use of textures in this. This fucking rules. I adore this. Thank you so much. I'm glad the beasts were fun to render. Don't worry, the only references is fucking We Sing and Sillyville. <laughs> and I guess Xenoblade Chronicles the Hedgehog. And, well, that's We Sing and Sillyville too. Oh! My sweet Kiki! We'll be done soon, don't worry. Oh, she's flopped on the floor. She's so cute animal. She wants to lay in bed with us. Yeah, I know, honey, very soon. Here's this very cute one by Finny, which I adore. Really cute. Very cute. Thank you very much. I, 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 I do have to say, this is something I've got more into the habit of saying more often is like, hey, yeah, by the way, I'm large, I'm fat, I'm a big woman. And people drawing me more like that instead of like being super rail thin does make me happier to see, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for that. That's my hot fat gay wife. Yippee! Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Uh, this fucking good one from Eddie Cubes. Aww. Very cute. Very I love the idea of this fat fucking bird. Wearing a hat and being in a hat, it's good. It's really good. It's good. <laughs> this is very cute. Thank you. Uh, this one here from Unofficially Jam. Yeah. Birthday. Birthday. You love to see it. Thank That's you very how much. Holly looked waiting for her cake on birthday. It. Maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> You're also fat, so it's nice to see more people like you. Let's go. I have I've seen a trend lately of like fat people like being much more obvious and like redesigning their sodas and being much more like yeah i'm fat draw me fat and uh -huh. it fucking rules it's Do good that. it's good it's race the way you look you're it's, beautiful you're wonderful yeah that it's body is yours it's nice to feel more comfortable about my body and it's nice to go hey no this is what my body is like please actually <laughs> these one th th these one this one from laser phaser based on the famous image of olimar and pikmin <laughs> hell yeah it's picking know, them Maybe a little. <laughs> no one can see the foul face I'm doing, but... <laughs> it's beautiful. I just noticed I've got a top hat antenna. That's really it's good. It's so cute! <laughs> I am obsessed with all the different... Po you have done so many goddamn poses really for these little guys. Pitmans. I love the one in the dead center looking up at God. I love the one in the upper right, just arms out, just like, Nobody move, I'm here! <laughs> and the blue guy behind him just like, What are you doing? <laughs> This rules! Thank you so much! Really fucking good. This one from Ogrish. Since the Pikmin streams, I can't stop thinking about picking them, so I had to get it out of my system. Picking them. Picking them. Literally, I'm obsessed with picking them. As soon as the stream is over, I'm going through the archive of my of my Tumblr so I can reblog picking them. Because it's one of the best posts ever made and I'm obsessed with it. Picking them. I'm glad other people enjoy picking them as much as I do. Thank you so much. This is awesome. And this one from Died by 10,000 Hogs. I drew this two days ago, but I feel like no time is better than now. It's my sister's cat. <laughs> oh, that really captures something about Lana. Yeah, this is extremely a Lana picture. That's her, that's her, that's her. She's huge and she has no thoughts in her head until she's getting food. And then her thoughts are, I'm getting food. <laughs> What a great fucking Lana picture. I'm gonna have to show that to my sister if she doesn't see it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just, <laughs> that's just creature. Thank you so much, this is adorable. Really fucking good. And that uh, is gonna be our stream for the night. Uh, it was a long fucking stream and I had a real good time. Thank you all for tuning in for this one. Thank y'all so very much. I don't think I'm going to have the time or the energy for other streams in September. Uh, you'll probably see me hanging around like Wayne Subathon and stuff, but I think this is probably the last stream for the month. We didn't 
quite have as much time as I would have liked to get in streams, but also the reason for that is because I was spending time relaxing with my wife, so I can't be too mad at myself for that. It turns out, when I have job in school, and we want to, in between that, spend time together, go out on walks, go to local restaurants... Yeah, make... it makes it harder to do another job on top of that. Yeah, it turns <laughs> out. Oh, well, it is what it is. Uh, I plan to go at least a little harder in October. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff I want to do that's thematically appropriate for the month. And also, I just want to get back to streaming. So that'll that'll be a, that'll be a fun month stream-wise, I think. So please look forward to... Um, and probably not October 1st, but maybe the 2nd of the earliest. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, but, uh, hey. Thanks for all the support today and through the month and through all these years. Thanks for tuning in. Especially to all y'all that tuned in for, like, the entire goddamn stream. My god. Power. Thanks. Power and abilities. Thanks for sticking around for 7 hours and 44 Jesus minutes. Jesus Christ. Uh, we're heading off. We're going to bed. The cat wants us to curl up with her. Yeah. Literally, as soon as Holly hits that end stream... I am going to toilet and I'm brushing my teeth and I am passing face out down on the Aww. bed. Going to draw so much Halloween art of you gals. Aww. Please do. <laughs> I would love that. I love Halloween and I love seeing drawings of me with my wife. Uh huh. Well, uh, Twitch is threatening to play an ad, so I'm going to cut the ending short. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves and take care of the folks around you. And I hope we see you again real soon. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Picking them! Picking them!